Okay, so I, I think that uh, uh, we can we can still um, uh, uh, talk about some some introduction to our uh, conference and, um, and workshop. So I, I think that this is my pleasure to uh, to co-organize this uh, uh, this workshop together with uh, with uh, Piotr Wolszczak and also Abdesetar Abdelkafi uh, from New Mexico. Uh, so he he is probably joining us later because it, it is very late. Uh, it is very early in uh, in uh, United States. Uh, however, uh, we work together on um, on the program, uh, and uh, there are also uh, great uh, uh, you know help of uh, of some uh, session organizers. Uh, so we have several session organizers and few uh, keynote speakers. Uh, so. So uh, it is. Uh, uh, I, I hope that you you uh, you will find some interesting uh, uh, material for you, and uh, I hope that we could uh, make some some stronger collaboration uh, in future uh, between uh, different groups. Um, uh, and uh, uh, I would like also to tell about our project uh, because we. We use some uh, finance um, to uh, to support um, the, the the workshop uh, from uh, from the dialogue project, and this dialogue project is uh, is oriented for uh, contacts. It is difficult uh, in the in the time of pandemic, but but in fact uh, uh, we are doing some progress. Uh, we uh, we organized. Uh, some some months ago, uh, a conference in India together with uh, uh, Pradeep Malaji, and uh, and now uh, I hope that we we can uh, we can start with this um, uh, with this workshop, and uh, I, I would tell that uh, we would have also some uh, uh, some uh, uh, keynote speakers. The keynote speakers. Um, uh, uh, from different countries, uh, from United States, uh, also from uh, from UK and uh, uh, and uh, China. Yeah. So so I I hope that uh, uh, you can enjoy our uh, our program and you you could uh, contribute uh, to the to the workshop with some questions and uh, uh, I think that we can we can um, we can start. The, uh, the workshop. Maybe, maybe, Piotr, you can, uh, you, you, you want to add something, yeah? No, no. Uh, okay. So I think it's so time for, for beginning. Okay, we can, we can. Uh, I can pass this, uh, uh, this uh, time uh, to, uh, to, uh, or voice to, uh, to Krzysztof and Marek. So they are organizers of the first session. Thank you very much. Please start. Just talk. Okay. Hello, everyone. I would like to introduce you. It's nice to hear. To, to, nice to see you at our session. Our, in our session, we've got four presenters. The session is titled "Is Energy Harvesting and Vibration Control in Mechanical Systems." We've got presenter from the first presenters is from Silesia University. The second from our university, our colleagues uh, Andrzej Mitura, and next from Brno University of Technology, and final. Uh, instead of Bartłomiej Abruszkiewicz, the presence gives uh, Professor Grzegorz Litak. So I think we can start the first presentation. So you know, I, I give the voice uh, to Professor Jerzy Margielewicz and Damian Gonska. OK, so let's start. Go ahead. I hope you can share your screen if you are. Uh, thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Hello. Uh, let me start my presentation. Yes, share your screen. Uh, okay. I hope you can see it. It's going on, but uh, it's, it's not we can visible. see black screen. But I hope 
Black screen, only black screen, sorry. Only black, yeah. in my, sc in my uh, screen is black, but maybe repeat the share. So once more. Once more, yeah. Is it better now? <laughs> I hope. It's similar like previous. Okay. You Maybe now. Now I can see. Okay, now it's fine. We ah. can see everything. Great. So. Okay. <clears throat> So let's start. My name is Damian Gonska. I represent uh, Silesian University of Technology. Uh, I would like to introduce you a little bit of uh, our research uh, made together with uh, Professor Margielewicz uh, from our university, Silesian University of Technology. And uh, our co-investigators are uh, Grzegorz Litag and Piotr Wolszczak from L Lublin University of Technology and Daniel Jurczenko from Heriot Watt University. Uh, the title of the presentation, because I have here uh, some uh, mm, some of our research regarding uh, quasi zero stiffness energy harvester. Uh, the title is nonlinear dynamics of a new energy harvesting system with quasi zero stiffness. So the um, energy harvesting systems um, with uh, local potential barriers. Uh, are uh, characterized uh, um, by certain limitations, which uh, are mainly caused uh, by the required specific energy level of the um, external dynamic excitation. The vibration level of the external source should be large enough to overcome the local potential barriers, because uh, then the trajectories recorded on the phase plane reach the um, greatest possible displacement amplitudes. Uh, according to uh, us, uh, these limitations may be, may be devoid of a design solution in which the energy potential is characterized, characterized by a flat or almost flat energy well. And such a, a potential barrier is characterized by a system with uh, quasi zero stiffness. And uh, um, the original, the original purpose of which of such a system was uh, vibrating isola vibration isolation in the range of low vibration uh, frequencies, and uh, I'm sorry, uh, low so low for low vibrations. Such system uh, um, have not been of wide interest so far in the context of uh, energy harvesting and uh, the, the, such a significant feature of, uh, um, of, the, of such a system of quasi zero energy harvester, we call it quasi zero energy harvester, such a system be, uh, um, a, a, this significant, significant feature uh, um, is uh, um, that uh, the uh, research is possibility of modifying the mechanical properties to adjust it to the conditions in which the energy is uh, to be harvested. Uh, such a system is also a subject of uh, Polish patent application. Uh, this is uh, the potential barrier. Uh, it's uh, defined by the by, by those springs uh, in the um, quasi zero system uh, the main spring and compensation springs uh, and here in the bottom you can see the mechanical characteristic describing uh, the relationship between the deflection and the external load and this uh, relation uh, this characteristic is only true for uh, a zero uh, more than zero uh, the, the, the value of A0 more than zero, uh, because otherwise we have uh, um, a linear uh, um, harmonic oscillator. Uh, this is the model. The model uh, the, the, uh, at the bottom uh, is with uh, dimensionless time, 
and dimensionless displacement, uh, the parameter B, B models uh, both the losses energy dissipation in the cantilever beam and the system with uh, quasi zero stiffness. We have also the R0 parameter to, uh, is used to reproduce a system powered by uh, electricity harvested from the mechanical vibrations. Um, these are, are some sample um, uh, research. Um, technically, the mechanical uh, properties uh, of the Kuzak system are uh, determined by the equivalent stiffness and the mass M um, applied at the end of the flexible beam. The exemplary less results illustrating the influence of uh, me mechanical quantities on the distribution map of the largest Lyapunov exponent are presented here. Um, these are the, the all the multicolored maps of the uh, Lyapunov distribution uh, were plotted for zero initial conditions. So we have 500 intervals, so uh, there is 250,000 um, simulations in each. And the P and Omega are the parameters of, of this, uh, of our model. Uh, uh, D, for D, uh, uh, is uh, the, 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 uh, um, the stiffness is 144. This is, a, um, I hope you can see that the, 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 there is a film, uh, it's changing. Here we can see uh, the influence of the parameter mi. Uh, this uh, parameter mi defines uh, the uh, um, relationship between the frequencies of uh, um, harmonic components of the distribution of the Lyapunov exponent. Uh, so now we are using another type uh, of uh, excitation. Mm, these are also some sample uh, mm, research, sample model research that we made uh, in the range of uh, range of uh, large values of p. Mm, we have direct uh, direct uh, uh, translation into amplitude because a zero is constant uh, for the energy effectivity diagrams. Mm, the uh, Lyapunov exponent and uh, root mean square uh, value of uh, uh, as a is, is here is shown here as a function of the frequency. Um, the presented uh, results are examples, um, and for each type of structure excitation parameters, the appropriate form should be selected. Uh, so the parameters of the fuzzy zero stiffness, as you can see here, the uh, when we are um, uh, going into the um, chaotic, uh, chaotic zones, uh, then the effectivity of the energy um, drops down. Uh, here uh, we can see the, the maps of the output voltage and the Lyapunov exponent as a function of uh, this meso relationship between uh, uh, these uh, um, frequencies of excitation, omega 1 and omega 2, and uh, uh, omega obtained for zero, in, uh, zero initial conditions. Uh, mm, considering uh, such qua uh, quantitative and qualitative assessment of the impact of this coefficient mi, uh, mm, we can say that uh, the, the, let's say the almost the best uh, energy uh, when, uh, efficiency is uh, by the omega equals to one um, because then uh, we have the uh, maximal value of um, this uh, uh, root mean square root mean square values. Another type of simulations. Uh, are shown here. Uh, these are uh, sample graphic images of phase trajectories and uh, basins of uh, of basins of attraction here. But also uh, you can see here uh, some diagrams that we introduce. Uh, 
these are the diagrams of uh, solution here uh, in uh, in this blue colors. Uh, diagrams of solutions show us uh, the number of solutions and periodicity, and then we have we, we are comparing it uh, with uh, the uh, values of the URMS. Uh, here are also some passings of uh, of uh, attraction uh, because one of the characteristic properties of nonlinear systems is. Uh, related to the coexistence of several solutions. From the numerical point of view, this problem comes down to study many steady state trajectories. Um, uh, here, the, the diagram of solutions is our proposal, uh, and uh, it's calculated through a numerical procedure developed in uh, Wolfram Mathematica software. Uh, through which it is possible to estimate the number and uh, and periodicity of of each solution. Here another um, type of simulation, uh, a little bit different. Um, here we can see also proposed by us uh, a diagram of impulse excitation. Uh, these are the colors here. We can see the different uh, different solutions, and uh, we wanted to check if uh, impulse disturbance on, uh, on the ability uh, to harvest energy. Of course, it is only a solution. The the impulse is rectangular, um, and it shows the diagram of impulse excitation. Um, the results are uh, only sample results. The assessment of the impact of impulse disturbing the nature of the solution and to the efficiency of energy harvesting. So we want mm, of, of such a system with quasi zero stiffness, uh, the efficiency uh, we want to make it better be when uh, we have a solution with bad efficiency, let's say bad efficiency, we have better solution then this is a possibility how to make it of course in practice we didn't check it uh, we didn't check it we only wanted to make uh, some uh, some simulations uh, and uh, check if it is uh, possible and how to uh, make it by such a impulse uh, to change the solution and uh, the the solution can be expected after the expiration of the transient processes assuming that the impulse is initiated at the moment uh, tau zero and uh, here you can see some sample examples of this uh, tau in, in this tau zero uh, initiation of of such a uh, such an impulse and the background colors of the mechanical vibration signal aff uh, affecting the energy harvesting system show uh, correlate with the colors of the basins of attraction. Uh, when creating the, um, because we have also here uh, some trajectories, uh, um, the um, creating of visualization of the individual solution, the red color is used to represent a stable phase trajectory that is influenced uh, by the impulse. When the trajectory is excited by an impulse, um, the state of the system becomes transient and the trajectory is outlined in gray. And on the other hand, when the target uh, trajectory is stable after the um, expiration of the transient processes, it is plotted in blue. Okay. And uh, last, what we did um, was comparison of the efficiency of uh, this uh, energy harvesting system with quasi zero stiffness uh, with um, uh, in relation uh, to the uh, three stable energy harvesting system the three stable energy harvesting system is um, uh, the, the, the characteristic of it and uh, a model is shown uh, down uh, below in this uh, in this slide. Uh, of course, uh, bearing in mind the objective, uh, uh, because we have different uh, different geometrical structure, 
uh, it was assumed that all systems are characterized by the same geometric and material uh, parameters of uh, this flexible beam. This is uh, a comparison um, in, 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 uh, in such a way of multicolored maps uh, of the um, energy harvesting effectivity by this quasi zero energy harvester and um, this uh, TEH system, so three stable, showing the influence uh, of P parameter. It, the P parameter is uh, um, almost the same as amplitude. And uh, you, uh, uh, the me, uh, the, uh, for, for the me uh, equals to zero and me parameter for uh, P uh, equals to uh, 0 0.4. And we have random initial conditions. The areas uh, highlighted in uh, red represent better efficiency in energy harvesting from uh, vibrating mechanical systems by structure with three stable uh, potential. And uh, blue indicates more efficiency uh, when we have a system with uh, quasi zero uh, potential. Faded shades uh, of yellow, blue, um, and a little bit white, let's say, um, on these maps indicate comparable efficiency of energy harvesting of both systems. Um, such uh, maps could be, let's say, uh, colored maps could be uh, an, uh, or are an important hint on the selection of uh, the appropriate design solution for harvesting system in order to, to use it. Uh, the, we limited the, 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 um, the, the, the values uh, arbitrary on the legend between minus 10 and 10. This is uh, also such a comparison between those two systems, uh, blue uh, quasi zero and uh, red uh, three stable. Um, these are diagrams of difference in um, this uh, voltage uh, root mean square induced on piezoelectric electrodes by those two systems. Uh, here we have variability of uh, the P parameter, uh, me is equal to zero. Mm. And the obtained results confirm that with the increase of P values, of this P parameter values, um, the quasi zero energy harvesting system is characterized by better efficiency in energy harvesting from mechanical vibrations. So let's say, uh, more amplitude, uh, the, the quasi-zero system is better um, in relation, of course, to three stable energy harvester. Uh, in uh, the low frequency range, let's say omega less than 0 0.8, it is also uh, advisable to use a system with an almost fat uh, potential well. Uh, this is the same uh, comparison, but now uh, mm, the, 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 the P is uh, mm, the same, 0 0.25, but we are changing the uh, me values. Uh, the me is, uh, like I said, the relation between, uh, between these uh, two um, frequencies. Uh, in, in, in this excitation, and these are also the, the same, let's say, the same diagrams, by, but for different, for different uh, parameters. In case of uh, this, uh, mm, let's say, source of vibration mapped with uh, a superposition of two harmonic components, the quasi-zero energy harvester can be used in a wide range of uh, this value of me. Um, in dimensionless frequency, uh, more than uh, 0.9. For higher frequencies, um, let's say more than 2.4, it is advisable to use a system with this uh, three stable potential well. And concluding, uh, 
First of all, the, the, the simulations, the, the, the research is still in progress, of course, and uh, uh, conclusions from this, what I have shown, could be um, that a correlation of this correlation, we showed the correlation um, between the, the, the multicolored maps of distribution of the larger Lapin of exponent and the diagram of effective value of voltage in, uh, um, induced on the piezoelectric electrodes. Um, the numerical experiments show that uh, to efficiently harvest energy from um, vibrating mechanical systems, the operating point of the system, of our system with this quasi zero stiffness, should be located outside the zone of chaotic solution. This is, uh, this is important. Um, when the dimensionless frequency of the excitation passes through the fault, the number of coexisting solutions is reduced, and two, the efficiency of the energy harvesting is also reduced. This is also sh also shown from from uh, from this research from this comparison. Uh, energy harvesting system um, have the best efficiency of uh, um, harvesting energy uh, when the frequency of mechanical vibration affecting the system is in the range uh, 0 0.6 to 1. A diagram of impulse excitation is useful as the basis for design of an external impulse excitation initia initiation system that will directly that could directly improve the efficiency of an energy harvesting system. But this is only, uh, of course, simulation. We doesn't have something like this. For most values of the um, dimensionless excitation um, amplitude, the um, quasi-zero energy harvester is more efficient at harvesting energy than the three-stable energy harvesting system. And uh, Mm, the limiting the, the, the zones of chaotic solutions uh, is possible by increasing the energy dissipation coefficient. Uh, so we are changing the uh, mm, in the in the model we can change uh, characteristic of the of the, the of those springs. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, but, uh, Professor uh, Krzysztof Kęcik, uh, I don't, I don't hear you well now because I hear there is very, very big noise. Sorry. Oh, Piotr, I hear you better, a lot of better. Okay, so maybe you can start the questions. I also can hear Krzysztof quite well. I've, I've got a very general question. Uh, let me know how long time you work on this problem. <laughs> uh, uh, <in> true? <laughs> true? <laughs> um, more than half a year or, or even even more. Even more, yeah, I expect. Even more. It is a lot of job made. I hope it was interesting and it... it, it of. Because the the the, uh, uh, mm, the reason of making uh, so much simulations mm -hmm. is that uh, we want to probably we want to build such a, such an energy harvester and uh, try to compare it uh, yeah in normal conditions maybe not in normal conditions in laboratory first then then in normal conditions and uh, so. The, the 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 work is still in progress so so more than half a year and who knows uh, how long uh, yeah, more it take more okay thank you but uh, we are trying of course and there will be some uh, uh, of course some uh, some uh, ex mm, this uh, now the simulation experiments will be shown in uh, future in our uh, not only presentations uh, conferation presenta pre presentations but also uh, um, publications in journal yeah good okay thank you i don't know if you've got if you've got more time for, for, for conversation there are some more questions okay thank you very much again and i think the
Thank you, professors. I will now uh, leave the meeting. I'm very yes. sorry because uh, I have classes with students, but I, after the classes, I will join you again. Yes. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, classes in Simbiculosi, I'm here. Okay, thank you very much for your presentation and have a nice day. We can go to the next presentation. Uh, the next presentation is uh, will be given by Andrzej Mitura, who is co-author with Professor Krzysztof Kenching. So I'll give the voice to Andrzej Mitura. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, for your short introduction. Uh, my name is Andrzej Mitura. Uh, I work at Lubin University of Technology in the Department of Applied Mechanics. Uh, today, uh, I would like to show presentation on the topic energy recovery from system with two pseudo levitating magnets. Second graph for is Professor Krzysztof uh, Kencik. It is plan of my presentation. Uh, first, I would like to show uh, important information about uh, uh, tested system. Uh, I present uh, mathematical model and uh, description of uh, magnetic and damping forces. Uh, secondly, I would try to show selected numerical results and finally conclusions will be presented. Uh, this side present uh, of tested system uh, we can see uh, four uh, magnets, uh, two larger and two uh, smaller. Uh, magnets A1, A2 uh, uh, are larger movable magnets and uh, two fixed magnets B1 and B2. Uh, we can see also uh, two uh, harvester subsystems. Uh, both consist of uh, coil and resistor. <coughs> uh, mathematical model uh, in motion of the system are described using presented uh, differential equations and in these uh, equations uh, force F uh, are magnetic or damping and uh, both forces are described on the next slides. Okay, uh, first uh, we uh, determine uh, magnetic forces between magnets and uh, we can see it, uh, results from two uh, experiments. Uh, first case it is uh, forces between uh, one uh, small and one larger magnets and uh, second uh, case we measure forces between Excuse two me. larger. The same, the same first slide. The first slide is here. On the, on the first one, yeah. You share the oh, edit uh, uh, window, not presentation window. Please try to share again and choose oh. presentation window. There should be, oh, now is magnetic forces. Of course, you can you, you can use this, this view this view. Thank you. Okay. Okay, maybe. Okay, it is uh, this side present uh, system, uh, both uh, larger and both uh, small magnets. And uh, now it is magnetic uh, forces between uh, one small and one larger magnets and second case, uh, magnetic forces between two uh, larger magnets. And uh, experiment results we uh, fitted using uh, five other polynomials. We can see form of both polynomials. And next, we find... Uh, uh. Uh, 
uh, we find a value of polynomial coefficients. And in next step, uh, we write that, uh, okay, because uh, experiments uh, present a magnetic force versus distance between uh, magnets. And in model, uh, we uh, must find relation between uh, magnet's distance and uh, coordinates. And for example, in this case, uh, we observe uh, this, uh, it is rational distance between two larger magnets and form of magnetic force. Uh, two force uh, uh, isn't, uh, aren't uh, included uh, because distance uh, or larger and uh, finally uh, for uh, our system uh, we find properties for linear model and we can see equilibrium position uh, both magnets versus distance between fixed magnets and for larger uh, distance we observed larger equilibrium positions and uh, second picture present uh, natural frequencies but for linear vibration about uh, equilibrium positions and uh, we can see observed uh, first and second natural frequencies and now for larger uh, distance between fixed magnets where uh, natural frequencies are lower. And next step, we uh, estimate uh, damping forces. Uh, we assumed model uh, uh, which consists of uh, linear and non-linear terms, quadratic, uh, both first and second terms uh, this, uh, correspond to higher resistance and uh, last terms uh, is uh, dry friction and this term is very important in this model uh, because uh, for uh, larger distance, uh, for smaller distance between two magnets uh, we observe uh, magnetic moment and uh, normal force depend of distance between magnets. Finally, we uh, die frictions uh, depends of uh, magnetic force. And uh, all uh, damping parameters will estimate uh, and we compared uh, numerical results and experiment and uh, this side present used uh, criterion. And next side, um, okay, now we, we uh, now it's problem with film because I think in, in view I can run this film, but uh, uh, experiment doing uh, experiment. Uh, uh, our system uh, was estimated kinematically using electrodynamic shaker, and doing test frequency sweep uh, from six to fifteen hertz, up or down, and uh, acceleration uh, was constant about zero point six g. And in this system, okay, uh, test uh, was uh, uh, we uh, uh, responses of the system uh, was uh, recorded using uh, fast cameras. And uh, you can see uh, parameters of the film, which is resolution, speed, uh, the time, 
and uh, size of the file. And the next step, we uh, determine magnets position uh, using uh, uh, software. And generally, we search uh, dark region and uh, we can uh, find uh, position of both movable magnets. Next slide uh, present uh, comparison obtained experimental data. For example, it is for uh, frequency up and it is for frequency down. And uh, we uh, perform many simulations and from comparison we find uh, damping parameters and we can see uh, numerical uh, result for optimal damping parameters. And now I would like uh, to show a model uh, of uh, energy harvester. Generally, uh, uh, subsystem of harvester consists of uh, coil and resistor, and uh, we applied both identical su uh, harvester subsystems, and uh, we assumed uh, for uh, small scale of inductance, and uh, we obtain a form of electromechanical coupling terms and it is uh, equation and uh, both equation present uh, electrical power of energy recovery. Uh, now uh, C1 and C2 uh, it is uh, parameters so called electrical damping. And next slide uh, present uh, obtained numerical results and uh, we can see uh, characteristics for system without harvester. Uh, top uh, characteristics is for uh, top uh, movable magnets and the second characteristic to bottom movable magnet. And next, uh, we can see uh, responses for system with harvester for two different uh, value of resistances and uh, for uh, larger resistance, we obtain small electrical uh, damping Maybe I come back. For example, in this case, it is uh, ectica damping, and it, it depends on uh, electromechanical uh, positions and of resistance. And for larger uh, resistances, we obtain small ectica damping, and for smaller resistance, we can see uh, larger electrical damping. Now, uh, hardening effect was reduced. Next, we uh, try to find level of uh, energy recovery. And uh, now I present uh, characteristics uh, for both uh, variant of resistances, and we can see it is uh, electrical power for top magnets, top movable magnets and bottom movable magnets. And uh, now uh, better uh, energy cover was for uh, uh, lower resistances. And now we will try to find optimal value of uh, resistances and we
made many simulations and now it is a maximum of uh, electrical power of energy recovery versus resistance. And we can find uh, optimal value of resistances. It is about 1.5 kilo ohm. And now I would like to show uh, conclusions. And then, uh, firstly, uh, we obtain, uh, we uh, describe uh, magnetic forces and damping forces. Uh, generally, uh, description of magnetic forces is very easy because uh, we have a uh, relation between uh, experimental relation between magnetic force and uh, mag magnet distance. Uh, damping forces uh, are described from comparison experiment and numerical simulation. Uh, it is uh, important because in this system we have a dry friction and it is important because it can uh, limit motion. Uh, next, uh, we observed a uh, strong nonlinear effect hardening and uh, we observed also influence of resistance on dynamics and energy recovery, and we can find uh, optimal resistance and uh, maximum level of energy recovery. Uh, this presentation was uh, supported from presented project. Thank you for your attention. Okay, Andre, thank you very much for a nice presentation. So there are a few minutes or maybe one only for a question if there are. Maybe I have one comment uh, mm -hmm. because uh, if, if, if you compare the, the present uh, you know, model uh, with uh, levitation, uh, with magnet levitations, uh, then you can also find that in, in this model there is such a flat, uh, it's a flat uh, um, uh, potential, um, uh, maybe due to the, uh, due to the, uh, to the gravitation it is a, a little bit uh, changed, uh, but, uh, but it could be that if you have horizontal levitating magnets you, you would have uh, quasi zero stiffness uh, in the uh, in the middle of a, or, of a, um, or maybe in the uh, in the equilibrium uh, uh, points, uh, you you would have a very flat potential. So this is this could be linked to the to the previous. But I, I, I agree that if if the, the if the magnets are um, uh, if if this tube is oriented uh, vertically, then it is different situation. Yeah. Okay. So this was uh, my my comment. Just okay, to, thank just you. To the, uh, to the connection to the previous speaker. Yeah. Okay, thank you for your comments. Any comments? Okay. Okay, so I've got a short question at Not in Queering. Uh, you have shown us uh, on slide number six the length uh, of the arc. Oh, I can see here. Oh, okay, so what's the previous slide was also fine. Let me know. Uh, what was the restriction in length estimation? Is it limited by the experimental setup or you verify it by some other way? OK, uh, OK, I have problem with uh, technical problem with presentation that maybe uh, several information I lost, but generally uh, this slide present uh, responses for uh, in our model. I, uh, because generally model is strong in linear, but uh, we can find equilibrium positions yeah. uh, for different uh, distance between fixed magnets. Mm -hmm. Because uh, nonlinearity's properties of the system depend on this distance. And uh, 
uh, we, uh, we can uh, find different equilibrium positions. And next step, we in a Zeit system uh, be around uh, these equilibrium positions. And uh, now uh, we can find uh, stiffness for linear model and natural frequencies. Mm -hmm. And uh, OK, but it is general uh, dependencies. In this case, we tested system uh, for L about 0 0.15 meters. Mm -hmm. And next is that for presented for this phase. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Andrzej. I'm happy for seeing the uh, answer. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Uh, maybe comment for request of Grzegorz. I show you where the system in the vertical position is a problem with the friction. We have in this model, in this system is problem with the friction. Is much stronger because we have two magnets. The displacement are small, and the magnetic moment, magnetic torque, is much higher in, for this system. So for the friction, uh, uh, strong influence on the on, on, on the on the results. I uh, I think that in this position, the problem is how to reduce the friction. So far, uh, we chose now this po position. And the second uh, motivation why we chose the, the, uh, the vertical position, uh, this system is uh, generally planned to uh, use as per neuron damper. We have special system which uh, we call it harvested absorber, and we want to uh, reduce the vibration and also uh, recover energy. The problem is how to increase effectiveness of energy harvesting without loss of effectiveness of mitigation effect. So far, we choose the vertical position of the, of the system. It is comment for the presentation of the okay. Okay, thank, thank you very much. Yeah. OK, thank you again. I think we can go to the third presentation from the Brno University of Technology. The author is Zdenek Hadash. Zdenek, it's your time. Go ahead. Good morning. Uh, thank you, Marek. And I try to share my screen. Yeah, can you see my screen? Yes, we, we can. OK. Uh, okay. I I would like to present uh, our concept of autonomous uh, wireless uh, monitoring system for railways. Probably you know that I'm dealing with uh, railways for the last four or five years. And, uh, uh, and uh, I'm happy that the railways are open uh, for the energy harvesting application, mainly in uh, maintenance issues, uh, mainly in maintenance due to uh, due to uh, uh, due to some uh, cost saving uh, about the maintenance, but uh, it's uh, it's not use, uh, suitable for application like uh, like Excel counters or another another critical application. But for maintenance, it's uh, it's uh, it could be very interesting. Uh, we develop energy harvesting system from the passing trains in in, uh, in the last project, and we have the source of energy. Also, we develop some uh, IoT monitoring system uh, when uh, when uh, uh, Internet of Things is used for uh, for piezoelectric monitoring of the trains and and the track. And for this reason, uh, I would like to present some concept of predicting maintenance uh, devices, and these devices will be. Uh, will be is developed uh, for 10 rounds. Uh, 10 rounds and switch system. It's uh, it's very uh, uh, it's very important to to monitor these uh, these uh, these devices due to uh, due to wear of these de of these devices. Um, uh, this year we we uh, published a very interesting paper about uh, autonomous system in, uh, in lab conditions, and this autonomous system um, uh, 
is based on the kinetic energy harvesting system. This kinetic energy harvesting system it's it's placed under some structure uh, under the vibration, and also this vibration it's uh, it's uh, monitored by piezoelectric uh, piezoelectric patch. We are using microfiber composite, and the kinetic energy harvesting system provide enough energy for uh, microprocessor unit and communication unit and we can uh, we can uh, send and trans uh, transmit information uh, about the vibration uh, outside from the system and uh, uh, this concept could be also very interesting for for the, for the track you can see here uh, the lab uh, uh, our lab devices and uh, the structure under vibration it's simple uh, simple cantilever uh, you can see here the harvester and uh, several several patches and and we can transfer uh, transfer uh, data from the vibration and, and or vibration signal uh, for for 20 uh, 30, 30 meters we are using uh, some uh, 2.4 gigahertz uh, communication protocol and an adjusting system could provide enough energy for this uh, wireless uh, sensing uh, as I mentioned, we developed uh, energy harvesting system under a project Etalon, and this harvesting system could be placed somewhere in a, in 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 a top of the sleepers, and the passing train provide uh, enough energy. Uh, you can see in this video. I'm not sure uh, it's. The test of the passing train, two passing train, and you can see the rotting movement is quite high, and also the uh, the, the power is quite high. And uh, we tested with two different trains. Uh, uh, the first train provide enough energy, uh, very uh, huge displacement of the of the of the sleepers. Uh, this this train it's uh, it's a little bit better. Uh, for for the smooth smooth passing, but also it provide very interesting uh, voltage and and the power. You can see here that the power uh, average power uh, for this train it's around nine nine milliwatts. Uh, in this case, around thirty milliwatts. And uh, also, as I mentioned, we developed under a Talon project, and also we used in our published uh, published uh, paper uh, some communications. And uh, this is uh, this is uh, diagram of the communications, and uh, you you can see that the, the yeah the the first train provide a lot of energy for long time uh, or longer time uh, communication. Uh, the train is passing in uh, seven seven seconds, and we can use the communication in next fifteen seconds. Uh, the this, this train local 150 provides uh, uh, provides uh, lower vibrations and but uh, it's enough also for providing uh, on, uh, some data signal and uh, communication uh, during the passing train and yeah it could be interesting for the some monitoring issues also, we are testing uh, piezoelectric uh, energy harvesting on the rail, and uh, the passing train provide very interesting, uh, very interesting signal. But uh, the energy is quite low. But uh, this uh, active signal could provide uh, a lot of information about uh, the deformation and ob about the vibration uh, on the track. And we are using uh, this system in our IoT application. And uh, we are using microfibers composites for sensing what's happened on the track, what's happened with the passing train, and what's happened uh, with, with the track, for example, for my tenants. And uh, we, bu we built uh, IoT solution, and now we are, uh, we are testing this solution in, in, um, in the real application. Uh, uh, this uh, IoT solution of, um, uh, of piezoelectric system uh, it's connected here uh, to to Raspberry Pi, and uh, Raspberry Pi send us, uh, provide uh, data directly. You can see here L LTI modem directly to the cloud solution. And now uh, this autonomous uh, this sensing system, not autonomous because we need a power source. 
pr provide information about uh, the passing train. Uh, it's in operation for the last two months, and I guess more than 700 uh, trains uh, are uh, uh, are uh, was uh, were, were measured, and we are analyzing uh, the data. And uh, what is interesting uh, from the signal, we can detect, for example, the overload of the uh, of the trains. Uh, it could be used, it could be caused by some wear of the wheels or another another problems. And also we can uh, we can detect some problems with the track, for example, the gap uh, below the the sleeper or another another issues. And it's uh, very interesting maintenance. Uh, it's very interesting for the maintenance. For the maintenance on the on 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 uh, trains and also for maintenance on, on on the track, and it could be very interesting and could be used uh, in the future. And in the future, we have very interesting uh, application for turnout. Uh, it's project uh, with with the title Turnout 4.0. Uh, the, uh, there is uh, idea something like uh, industry 4.0. It means new generation of the turnouts, and uh, the problem of the turnouts is, is the wear of this part. And wear of this part provide a lot of vibration, and a lot of vibration also provide an, enough energy for uh, for energy harvesting system. We are developing a piezoelectric sensing system uh, below this part and on on the on the side of this part. And uh, it's a little bit problem that uh, with, with the source of energy for for these uh, for these sensors, uh, you cannot use the physical connection, and usually uh, th these uh, turnouts are removed. And yeah, it's should sometimes it's problem with the maintenance of, of the turnout and uh, physical connection of of the wires and and power grid. It's, it's a problem, and we need some uh, autonomous source of energy for this reason. Because this uh, this sensing system is very uh, very uh, very similar like uh, our uh, sensing system in IoT uh, application of the regular track. Uh, we are developing uh, we are developing energy harvesting system, and uh, now you can see the first uh, first uh, devices which could be used uh, uh, inside. Inside this structure, there is a quite big gap, and uh, we could uh, we could embed the energy harvesting system inside this structure. Also, we can use uh, piezo, uh, we can use electromagnetic energy harvesting system from the Atalon project on, on the, for example, on this barrier or, or on this barrier. But uh, it's very interesting to uh, to uh, embed it uh, of the embedded uh, 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 energy harvesting system. And we are developing this system. It's uh, uh, electromagnetic energy harvesting system. It's very similar like uh, system which was uh, presented in in the paper. And uh, uh, with our uh, British uh, British partner, uh, we uh, we we uh, our British partner provide provide me a vibration of, of more than 600 passing trains. And we can simulate the, the 600 passing train uh, on the model. And uh, here in uh, in this uh, in this first picture, you can see the average energy uh, for the different uh, uh, frequency of the energy harvesting system, and also for different uh, uh, resistive load. And you can see that uh, the average uh, energy per uh, per train it, it's uh, higher. It's usually higher than than 10 millijoules, and it's uh, it's could be interesting for the uh, for the communication. Also, the second picture uh, we we simulated uh, we simulated the the maximal power uh, and maximal energy uh, for the tuning frequency and uh, resistive load, and you can see that uh, more than uh, 50, 60 trains uh, from this uh, six, 600 uh, could uh, are similar for these uh, for these uh, parameters. The, the nature frequency around 18, uh, 18 hertz, and the load uh, around uh, 400 uh, uh, ohms. And uh, these conditions are very very uh, similar like conditions. In our uh, first, uh, in my first slide, 
of my of our presented uh, presented approach for autonomous wireless sensing system. Okay, and uh, uh, some uh, yeah. Uh, also, we tested we tested the turnout in in the um, in the lab or in the, uh, not not directly in lab. Um, uh, we tested in a manufacture manufacture uh, company, and uh, yeah, this signal could be very useful for for the maintenance. And for this reason, uh, I would like to present you concept of our autonomous system for turning uh, turn out 4.0, and uh, we can use. Uh, energy harvesting system from the bear or directly from the turnout, and this energy harvesting system could provide uh, could provide energy for some data acquisition unit or some IoT devices. And also, we are using piezo piezo sensing for for providing the uh, the signal voltage signal which is proportional with the with the velocity of the vibration to to this IoT, and uh, uh, we can. Uh, this concept and this uh, this uh, autonomous source of an uh, autonomous sensing system with auto, uh, with source of energy and piezo uh, sensing uh, could provide uh, a very interesting uh, solution for uh, IoT devices, and we can send directly data to the cloud and on the cloud, uh, very similar like in Industry 4.0 application, uh, we can analyze the data. We can use the uh, artificial intelligent method for for the predict, uh, predictive maintenance and this issue. And this is main aim of our future research. Uh, in the in this presentation, uh, my main aim was to 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 um, to present this cell power application and uh, which was tested in lab condition. And I hope that this. Uh, uh, this uh, system could be also very useful in a railway uh, in a railway application, mainly for uh, for monitoring of turn turnout conditions. And yeah, I I hope that the presented concept provide um, some opportunity for for the predictive maintenance issues in the railways because the railways uh, provide a lot of vibration and. For the energy harvesting system from the vibration, it's uh, it's, it's the, I guess it's the best it's the best application because a lot of vibration and uh, usually a lot of plays for for quite big uh, energy harvesting system. Okay, it's from my side. It's all. Thank you for your attention, and I'm open for question. Thank you, Professor. We have the time for one question. Uh, I would I would have a question um, about these um, uh, systems. Where, uh, so actually, you are working on some uh, some modifications, uh, which you mentioned about some some magnets, additional magnets, and some uh, some additional moving parts. Uh, but um, it seems to be that your your devices are working out of uh, resonance. Um, so this is uh, so the resonance is not important uh, issue for the for that system. Yeah. Yeah. Is it true? Uh, we are using the uh, energy harvester uh, in um, uh, in resonant resonant mechanism of energy harvester, but not in the resonance because the uh, the frequency per uh, or uh, the Period of the of the wheel passing, it's uh, it's changed because it depends on the on the geometry of the of the train, and we are using the response uh, for the for the impact. Okay. Yeah, and and we, we harvesting we harvesting electrical power from the from the individual responses. Thank you, Professor. Again. And now we have the last presentation, uh, energy harvesting for uh, hybrid excitation, now with Bartomir Ambreskevich with Professor Litak. Professor Grzegorz, voice is your.
I hope that you can see the presentation now. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, so I I I would be uh, I'm presenter for this uh, for this presentation. However, originally Bartłomiej Ambrzkiewicz, who is my PhD student, uh, uh, he 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 agreed to present this, but uh, he is not feeling well today. So so I I uh, suggested some kind of a kind of substitution of presenter because I am still a co-author of this uh, work. So. Uh, I would like to tell you about uh, energy harvesting using hybrid excitation and the hybrid excitation means that uh, there would be wind excitation and also vi uh, vibration uh, um, movement. Uh, so uh, so uh, two of um, sources. Um, so uh, so uh, we we wanted to uh, to check what is the response of the system. Uh, if you change the frequency of excitation and also the wind of uh, the, the, the uh, wind speed, yeah. So, uh, so in fact, uh, you can uh, you can find um, if you look for the uh, for the uh, airflow um, excitation, you can uh, you can find some some uh, phenomena uh, phenomena which uh, which could be called vortex induced vibration and also galloping effect so so vortex induced um, vibration uh, it is uh, it is rather um, uh, related to some uh, uh, to some uh, you know uh, cylindrical shapes uh, it, it is more effective for cylindrical shapes and you have some uh, von karman um, uh, for Karman vortices, and they, the vortices uh, are producing some some uh, <coughs> fluctuation of pressure, uh, which could be used for the uh, for the piezoelectric beam. Uh, in fact, uh, there are some uh, there are some studies, um, and uh, you can you can find that uh, this wind. Um, uh, Vortex-induced uh, vibrations uh, are very limited uh, uh, with respect to the wind speed, and uh, you can also expect some kind of um, galloping or flutter excitation. The flutter excitation it is uh, it is caused by some Bernoulli uh, law. Uh, when uh, you 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 get some uh, some uh, if you have some flat area and um, uh, flat flat shape, then there would be some some additional uh, pressure uh, change, um, uh, uh, and uh, and then you you have some instability which can uh, move the, the oscillator. Uh, so uh, so we we used this effect, uh, and we uh, I I must tell that uh, our studies are very pre preliminary. So uh, for example, we uh, we we have some. Uh, uh, we we have done some experiments, but we haven't studied all the parameters which are important to the system, like uh, stiffness of the beam and uh, and so on. Uh, so uh, so I I would like to to show you some preliminary studies, and uh, and then I I also mm, wanted to mention some paper which was uh, published uh, last year together with uh, Jun Lei Wang. Uh, and this was uh, this was a, a study with different uh, shapes um, of blood body. So so if you have a cylindrical shape, uh, this uh, cylindrical shape w would favor some vortex induced vibration. And if you have flat uh, areas, and the flat area is here, uh, then then um, a galloping effect could appear. But the, but the galloping effect is uh, is different uh, uh, wind speed. Yeah, so it's higher wind speed. Uh, so uh, so it is it is important to have some kind of uh, a hybrid uh, shape. And we in our experiment we used hybrid shape in such way that we uh, we use such a shape of a bluff body. Uh, which was um, changed with uh, with with with, with, um, uh, with variable cross section. Uh, so on the one side you have a square, and on the other side you have uh, you you have a circle. Uh, so so in between you have some mixture of that, and uh, uh, and we we tested some some uh, uh, some uh, uh, wind excitation and also a kind of. Uh, 
a kind of uh, uh, vibration excitation, which was uh, vibration excitation was perpendicular to the to the system um, uh, on, on this uh, graph. Uh, so, so we used also uh, some uh, different uh, masses. We used uh, a fixed shape, but we filled the shape uh, with different masses. Uh, so we printed these uh, samples on uh, 3D printers. Uh, and uh, we we also looked for that. So this was some some uh, kind of uh, regulation of uh, uh, of uh, uh, natural frequency for the system. Uh, so so we we did some uh, some kind of uh, uh, control by the mass of this body, black body, uh, and. Uh, and then uh, we uh, we made some experiments uh, with uh, with a shaker which is uh, which is placed in the bottom and uh, and the wind tunnel uh, so the wind tunnel was here and this was the sample the sample with a, with a um, uh, variable uh, cross section um, so so a variable cross section as I as I uh, as we we thought about uh, some some uh, uh, some um, you know variation of uh, of uh, different shapes like it was studied uh, by Junli Wang uh, but uh, but in in uh, in our case we we had some different uh, uh, you know uh, different idea to make variable uh, shape and uh, and then we we've got some uh, some uh, interesting results but i i told you that preliminary and for example, we uh, we haven't studied uh, enough the, uh, the uh, additional uh, stiffness of the of the body. Uh, so so in uh, in fact, we we haven't observed uh, the uh, uh, we haven't observed uh, vortex induced vibration, but only galloping effect. So we we observed galloping effect very strong, but vortex induced vibration maybe was suppressed by the stiffness, uh, too high stiffness of a, of a, of a, of a beam um, with piezoelectric. Uh, so uh, so uh, you uh, you can see that uh, uh, if uh, external excitation, I mean this uh, shaker um, vibrational uh, excitation was zero, you you could see galloping effect here. And uh, and below some some uh, threshold value, where it was very low, um, so not enough to get uh, to get uh, vortex uh, induced vibration. Uh, but in in uh, in fact, uh, if you have uh, uh, if you switched on the external excitation uh, by shaker, you could observe some some uh, development of a, uh, of a. Uh, a large response uh, of large voltage response, uh, and this was uh, uh, this was in fact some uh, some change to the to the blue line, which was uh, for uh, selected um, mass. Uh, the selected mass because uh, the selected mass was was um, was uh, correlated with some natural frequency. So uh, so if you have some uh, uh, galloping effect, then there is uh, there is a kind of uh, natural frequency which is important uh, in the system and uh, during the uh, additional excitation uh, you you could make a stronger response of this uh, uh, this case uh, 16 uh, 16 grams uh, this is uh, this is the, the mass in grams um, so so uh, in fact uh, we also uh, we also did some some uh, some uh, analysis by uh, by uh, zero uh, speed um, of wind. So so this was only uh, only the the, uh, the shaker excitation, and we we've got that for 16. Uh, the, actually the, the the resonance frequency. Which is matching with uh, natural frequency is, is four. So so this four was also observed here uh, with uh, on this uh, experiment was uh, was uh, um, uh, was very uh, well developed um, uh, for uh, even for lower uh, uh, speed of uh, wind and. Uh, 
And then the Strohel number. Strohel number is uh, is changing. Um, uh, uh, if you if you have different uh, wind uh, uh, wind speed, uh, so uh, it is also uh, what should be added. Uh, the Strohel number is also affected by some kind of excitation. Uh, if you have some additional excitation, Strohel number is uh, is important to to get the frequency of uh, uh, of um, uh, of uh, uh, vortices uh, uh, appearing, uh, and uh, and this frequency can be can be uh, can be also uh, uh, modified by some kind of additional excitation of uh, of a blood body by shaker. So so we 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 start we started uh, analysis on that, but it is not. Uh, it is not finished. Uh, so uh, I would like to uh, summarize that we uh, we designed such a structure for hybrid excitation, and we uh, we studied um, uh, the response, but we observed only galloping effects. And for uh, for some uh, frequencies, we observed uh, uh, we observed resonance effect, uh, and uh, this galloping um, curve was uh, was very. Um, uh, uh, very well developed, uh, and uh, uh, and in in fact we are going to study some uh, some more parameters, um, some more space um, uh, uh, parameter space uh, to to get some uh, some clear uh, answer why we haven't observed um, these vortex induced vibrations uh, for limited uh, uh, speed of wind and. Uh, and we also are planning some some uh, some other blood bodies uh, with uh, with uh, with a uh, complexity uh, with a complex uh, shape. Uh, so so this could be, uh, for example, the blood body with some uh, some additional holes uh, or some some uh, similar effects like attachments uh, and and so on. So. So uh, we we published some papers uh, recently. There was a paper with this uh, hybrid excitation, we, we, which summarized some some uh, preliminary results. Uh, and there are some previous papers um, together with uh, with Chinese group. So uh, I would like uh, to thank you for uh, for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for a very interesting presentation. Now we have time for one or two questions. No question. I have one question. Uh, can you observe the nonlinear resonance? Because uh, you show uh, the resonance curve, uh, which looks like linear. Uh, yeah, this is this is a, a kind of linear. Uh, so this is linear effect. Uh, in fact, this is linear effect. So so we we are planning to uh, to get some uh, some uh, mm, uh, some additional you know effects like uh, magnets, uh, additional magnets or, or something because it is important. Uh, uh, two two points are important. One point is uh, to get some some broadband with respect to the uh, to the uh, to the wind uh, speed uh, but the second is that uh, uh, we this wind speed uh, is also uh, sensitive to the to the frequency uh, so the natural frequency so so uh, I, I i think that if we have uh, the system with broadband uh, frequency maybe we can also enlarge this uh, uh, this uh, region of a, of a, uh, of a wind speed and also uh, this broadband frequency effect is interesting uh, because we have hybrid uh, system so we have uh, uh, we have excitation by by uh, by shaker and also excitation by wind so so I, I should tell that this is uh, frequent it is common situation that uh, if you have such a a coupling to them some different systems maybe um, you uh, if this is only some kind of uh, um, uh, academic uh, case that you uh, eliminate uh, the, the uh, additional vibrations coming from from uh, couplings and you have uh, clear 
wind excitation. So this is like uh, uh, academic case. And in the real situation, you could have uh, two sources or more sources. And, and the second point is that uh, instead of magnets, we can also uh, apply some amplitude limiters uh, to get some uh, some uh, uh, some nonlinear effects. So thank you for, for this question. Thank you. And the questions. Okay, thank you for the question. Yeah. I have a short question because the experimental setup, let us know this is prepared in the Lub University of the Technology in Laboratory or is it outside? No, no, it, it was, it was uh, prepared here in uh, Lublin University uh -huh. of, uh, of Technology. So, so we collaborated with, uh, with colleagues uh, uh, Zbigniew Czysz, Paweł Karpiński uh, and Łukasz Grabowski. So, so, um, uh, so they, they are co-authors of, of this uh, study. Yeah. So, so we, uh, we, we provided some uh, system, but uh, uh, in, in their group they have uh, they have also the wind tunnel, so so we 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 started uh, uh, we we joined our um, uh, efforts to get this uh, experiment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay, so thank you again. I'm sorry, I, I disappeared in a few minutes because I had a technical problem. Yeah, yeah. There is, there is some some uh, official uh, statement maybe by Piot, but uh, I'm not sure if Piot is here um, because uh, the, 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 there would be a presentation by uh, by uh, Daniel Yurchenko, but in in different uh, room. So uh, so I I think that uh, um, yes. maybe, maybe yes, Piot can, can, will, can will be transmitted uh, in our room. I put ah, the information okay. in the chat. Now I uh, sh show the uh, screen about it. Uh, in room one, there is some uh, little delay, and we're waiting for for beginning of this lecture. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, so uh, now we have maybe three five minutes uh, break, and after we we, we transmit, uh, we, we start transmission from room one with lecture of uh, of Professor Yurchenko. After that, it will be next session, session of uh, German group. It will be four, uh, five presentations. But now we wait. For this, is the, this is the same link uh, which we used for that uh, meeting, this one. No, no, you, 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 you can stay here. Because because uh -huh. conference have another room. Of course, I can put uh, the, uh, the the link to another uh -huh. room. I will put an, this room in the chat. Yeah, but, yeah, but, also, but it is also possible, possible that that you we have transmission um, uh, just exactly to this channel. Yeah, yeah. But if, if somebody is interested about room room one, he can uh, log out from our room and and go there. But later you, he have to. Yes, I, I, I will go there. It's Daniel, uh, but I don't think uh, my talk will be interested because it will be overview of what you all know about energy harvesting. So it's just uh, some statistics, and it's a 15 minutes talk. So, but if you are interested, I think you need to yeah. go yeah. to another room. Yes. Hello, Daniel. Okay. Thanks. I'm 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 just connecting from here. <laughs> Cheers. Okay. Okay. Thank Maybe you. I will ask staff for starting transmission now. Uh, uh, instead of of the delay, because I see there is a there is some uh, presentation in Polish about protein and meals. Oh, we have time. Okay, so we can we can make a break, um, a coffee break, uh, and uh, if it is um, uh, starting, we we could be uh, could be back to the, the session. Yeah. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I would like to present my deep thanks for our presenter, uh, presenters, to my uh, co-chairman Marek for this great session conference. Thank you very much.
mam przyjemność przedstawić naszego następnego speakera, Daniela Jurczenko, profesora Daniela Jurczenko z Harriet Watt University. Profesor Jurczenko pracuje nad układami mechanicznymi, w szczególności nad drganiami i układami stochastycznymi. Zrobił dyplom w, w Sankt Petersburgu jeszcze w latach 90. Następnie doktorat zrobił w Bostonie i od 10 lat pracuje w Edynburgu na Uniwersytecie Harriet Watt University. Thank you. Can you see my screen? Anyone? Okay, so um, my talk, thank you very much, Professor Litek. Um, I don't speak Polish, so I, I didn't understand a lot of um, your um, um, two minutes um, presentation, but um, I'm happy to be here. And what I'm going to talk about is um, energy harvesting. So um, what is the energy harvesting? So energy harvesting is the process by which energy is derived from external sources, captured, stored and uh, or used by people. So those are external sources could be solar, wind, waves, tidal and hydra energy, but it could be others. So usually uh, people may um, mix uh, renewable energy and energy harvesting. So if you if we talk about energy harvesting, first of all, energy harvesting uses small scale devices, which could be nanometers to centimeter scale to produce relatively small amounts of power, which could be in picawatts to milliwatts for small autonomous devices like wireless sensors, wearable electronics and uh, wireless sensor networks. Eventually, the idea is uh, to uh, power um, a lot of different uh, electronic gadgets which are connected into the Internet of Things or the industrial Internet of Things. Energy harvesting also uses not only natural but also man-made sources of energy. And this is the big difference between the energy harvesting and renewable energy. So we can use also uh, the vibrations or the uh, any motion created by uh, human activities uh, like when you're jogging or walking or even eating uh, also vibrations from machine and structures and in general energy harvesting scavenges uh, kinetic thermal and radio frequency energies so what is the uh, goal uh, the ultimate goal is for us to try to uh, get rid of uh, dependence on batteries in all those electronic gadgets so in last 20 years, energy harvesting has become a relatively independent branch of science. It's a multidisciplinary branch which combines mechanical, electrical uh, and chemical uh, engineers. It also uses heavily um, experimental um, uh, rigs and uh, experimental methods. It also used mathematical modeling. So that's why it's a very multidisciplinary area where lots of people can contribute to. Uh, so over here on this slide, you can see the proportion of publications made in the last 20, 21 years. And you can see that the, the blue one, first one is uh, related to the energy harvesting publications in uh, journals, academic journals and conferences, uh, according to Scopus. And then the next one is uh, related to the wind and the solar one. You can see that the amount of publications for energy harvesting is almost identical to the amount of publications made in uh, solar energy. Uh, the wind is a little bit lower. Then we go with the tidal and wave energy. Then the light blue part over here between the yellow and the green is related to the geothermal energy. And then we also have a biomass and hydra. Um, the problem with the hydra is that uh, you know a lot, we have a lots of um, hydra power plants, but uh, most of the work uh, has been done on hydra energy back in the 20th century. That's why not many publications you can see nowadays. Now, if you want to know how much exactly energy harvesting publications we have had in the last um, 21 years, you can see that it's over 70,000 publications. 
So you can see that it has started around 2000-2001. Publications and citations. And uh, we have reached our peak in 2019 and 2020. Um, it went a little bit down, so uh, probably the reason is COVID and that some of the labs were closed and no real experiments could uh, so and what thousand uh, review articles mm -hmm. on the uh, topic you can find over 20,000 open access publications, and you can find uh, over 800 um, book chapters. Now, if you look at the uh, uh, research produced by different countries on the left, you can see that um, there are two leaders here, United States and Republic of China. And then the first 20 countries are divided in the following way. There are eight European countries, eight countries uh, from Asia, including China, and then um, North America, which consists of the United States and Canada, and then one uh, country from South America, which is Brazil, which is somewhere over here, you can see. And then it's also Australia contribute. In terms of the journals, so most of the publications go to the proceedings of SPIE and the Nano Energy. And then there are some other journals. You can see the, the first 15 journals, which are uh, heavily published uh, papers in uh, energy harvesting, including the third one, which most of the people in energy harvesting simply know, smart materials and structures. So what is the energy harvesting in terms of the uh, system itself? So basically, uh, typically, energy harvesting system consists of the part, some mechanical system which can absorb the energy from a vibrating uh, part and then the transduction mechanisms which basically converts the uh, mechanical energy into electrical if we talk about specifically vibration energy harvesting. So there are four of those transduction mechanisms, two of them piezoelectric and electromagnetic are well developed and you can see them on the top. So uh, piezoelectric is based on the piezoelectric effect in materials. And basically the characteristics feature of the piezoelectric systems are high voltage output. Uh, they are easy in, imp to, in implementations uh, and they are good to implement at various scales, even the nanoscale. They are relatively um, expensive because of the cost of the materials. And because we want to get energy from vibrations, we are uh, destined to have uh, some fatigue and the wear, which we have to uh, um, think about when we design a system. Uh, there are different types of the systems, uh, definitely for the people who are not in uh, physics or engineering. Um, I, I, I don't want to go into details. You can see that uh, most of the systems in piezoelectric uh, energy harvesting are based on beams. So those beams are either in a bending mode, so you can see different uh, beams on the very left picture, or you can see bendy flexible beams made up out of PVDFs in the middle. And then you can have uh, uh, beams in a uh, um, different types of the, from mechanical point of view systems, you can have a added to the system. And we can have a multi beam arrays, which are basically to either uh, scavenge more energy or to uh, uh, in with the system so that we can harvest energy at different frequencies. Electromagnetic energy harvesting is based on the electromagnetic induction. Uh, the characteristics feature of such systems are high current output. The good thing is that they are contactless, so it's not a big deal with the wear of such systems. And they are robust, they lasting long, uh, but um, they have a poor efficiency in the small scales. If you go down, they are scaled in, uh, in nonlinear fashion. And they require relatively high velocity to get a relatively high uh, power output. 
the relative velocity between the magnet, uh, which, for instance, in the first figure represented by this blue and red uh, square, and the coils, which are represented by the dots. So there are different mechanisms um, for these types of the systems. Typically, you need to provide relative motion between the magnet and the coils, and it can be done in a different way by connecting this to springs or by using the uh, attractive and repulsive forces of the magnets, which are called levitating mechanisms, or we have a different ways of arranging these mechanisms into uh, systems for rotating energy harvesting. The other two methods are less developed. They are electrostatic and triboelectric. They have been basically started uh, more or less recent, recently, and they are uh, basically based on the fact of the static electricity, uh, with slightly different physical laws behind them. Um, they um, have also high voltage output, high power density. Uh, however, they have a low cost, and uh, unfortunately, because of the way they operate, um, they, at least for now, have relatively poor uh, reliability, robustness, and they also face the uh, issue of wear. So if you uh, look at those mechanisms, you can find uh, the number of publications based on those transduction mechanisms. So the first four stands for the piezoelectric, which you can see the uh, uh, portion in uh, dark blue, electromagnetic, which is the orange, and the triboelectric, which is the gray, with the uh, yellow being the electrostatic using the also or adding dielectric elastomers. So you can see that this takes significant portion of the overall uh, circle here. And the other, um, uh, maybe more or less comparable energy harvesting uh, is the thermal approach. Um, so it doesn't have to be vibrational. That's why it stays apart, as well as the pyre, which is very, very little. And finally, the one of the promising um, areas which appearing right now is also based on waves, but not on uh, vibrations um, per se, is the uh, uh, using the radio waves frequency uh, energy harvesting. So we go to the applications and it's all started um, somewhere around 2000, 2001, as you could see based on the number of publications. And it started with the idea proposed in the paper by Schenk and uh, Paradiso about using the uh, the piezoelectric um, energy harvesting mechanisms, which is embedded into the soil of a shoe, so that when you run or walk, you can harvest energy, and then you can use this energy to charge your mobile phone or any other gadgets. And for 20 years, this developed to uh, and covers energy harvesting area covers almost every aspect of the uh, you know our human being lives. Uh, we talk about human activities which takes this um, bigger portion. We talk about flow-induced vibration when something is moving, it could be cars, so it could be just the wind, which is blowing around the buildings. We talk about sector which called the automotive, where we talk about vibrations in the car, and uh, this includes all types of the things, uh, tires, you know, the suspension, uh, the, the, the seats, and, and the engine motion, and so on and so on. And then we talk about railway and roads. Um, that's where we can harvest energy uh, when uh, cars moving on top of the roads and railways. Uh, then we talk about the big portion of the energy harvesting is, may, may come from buildings. It could be vibrations of buildings, uh, could be relative motion of the different floors and so on. And then part of the uh, important part is the bridges because the bridges are um, lots of bridges now needs to be uh, constantly monitored. You remember this tragic event in Italy when the bridge, bridge collapsed. So um, all those uh, areas um, are very heavily uh, uh, using sensors, and uh, these sensors can be powered by energy harvesting mechanisms. So we are now in 2021, and uh, if you go and try to find, it would be very difficult how many concepts we have. It's definitely hundreds of different concepts and ideas. Uh, we cover from nanoscale to the centimeter scale devices, and we basically have proliferated, the ideas at least have proliferated to almost all industrial um, sectors. Well, I'm going to the conclusions and uh, what is the future, what is the current state and the future of this? 
Well, there is a big problem with the commercializations. There is a very limited number of commercially available devices. And basically, there are no companies which are solely based on energy harvesting products. So uh, there are lots of companies which produce, for instance, uh, uh, sensors and actuators. And as a byproduct, they may have a one or two energy harvesting uh, devices which you can buy and use. Or you have to basically talk to a specific company and they will build uh, for your particular application specific uh, uh, energy harvesting device. However, uh, the energy harvesting market is very big. It's estimated to 775 million by 2025. This is according to the energy and power market report. Uh, it may not seem big number because, for instance, the market of sensors is in tens of billions. However, we have to remember that there are very few devices, so and there are very few actually uh, wireless devices and wireless sensors which are now used. Uh, so companies are now trying to get onto this and trying to start building more and more wireless sensors and devices. And for now, they rely purely on um, batteries, which we hope will change soon. So what are the challenges from the uh, from the um, academic or research point of view? Well, um, we have to be looking for developing new for more functional materials and metamaterials. We have to be looking for the new robust and efficient dynamic systems uh, which can harvest more energy, so they should be more efficient. And those systems include nonlinear and non-smooth systems, such systems like uh, vibro impact systems and, and systems like dry friction systems. Then we are looking in the future, I think, to the systems which are distributed energy harvesting systems, which are interconnected to each other, which can basically exchange the energy and talk to different, uh, you know, part of the system and basically transfer energy from building to building or from device to device. We hope that the, uh, the artificial intelligence and machine learning will be useful for us uh, in the future to tune our systems and optimize our systems to perform better. And I think we are looking for the more efficient new transduction mechanisms. Uh, we have to remember that if you look at the scale or range of the frequencies, uh, on the right side, where we have a 10 to power 0, 10 to power 2, that's where we do the vibrational energy harvesting. If you go a little bit to the left, we have a radio frequencies, and you can see that um, along this line going to the left, the energy is increasing. So that's why the solar energy, which is here somewhere where you can see the green and the red color, is the uh, uh, way to um, do the solar energy harvesting. But there are also many, many other ways uh, of going and probably we will be going for smaller systems which will be able to capture higher frequency waves and then transfer them to energy which we're going to utilize for our uh, electronics and gadgets. Thank you very much. Uh, thank, thank you, you thank for you. your presentation. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have much time for uh, any questions, so we will okay. move on to uh, next presentation. And we will start, uh, we start next panel. So, no, we can... hello everyone and welcome. So, my name is uh, Sonia Bradai. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, Sonia, we hear you. Hello. Yeah. Okay, nice. So, welcome to the session. The session is organized by myself, Sonia Bradai, uh, my colleague, uh, Dr. Slim Neifer, and uh, our professor, uh, Professor Olsa Keno from the Chair of Measurement and Sensor Technology from the University of Technology, Chemnitz. And the session will be entitled Advanced Materials and Technologies in Nanogenerators. And we will start as first with uh, uh, our invited speaker is Dr. Aida Bohamed. She is one of my colleagues also. So the title of her presentation will be Advances in Nanostructures for High Performance Nanogenerators. So Dr. Bohamed, she got her doctoral degree from TU Chemnitz in 2018, and she is working as a research assistant at TU Chemnitz. 
her research includes like uh, the development of smart sensors and as well polymer composites for the re realization of nanogenerators for harvest energy harvesters. And Ida, can you hear me? Hello? Aida? Yeah. Okay, good. Now I can hear you. So maybe you can share your screen and start the presentation. I will not. Do you have problem to share the screen? No. Yes, we see. Okay. Okay, good. We don't hear you, Aida. Uh, please try share again and switch on the, uh, the the voice from computer. Please share again and switch on the switcher. Use the computer voice. Please st stop sharing the, the screen, uh, not just the presentation, but stop sharing the screen. Okay, and share again. It, there will be switcher, use computer uh, voice. to be as a guest speaker in this workshop in the direction of advance in energy harvesting. The topic of today it will be about advance in nanostructure for high performance nanogenerators. In this presentation, I will go through a small introduction about energy harvesting. Then I will define what is a nanogenerator and show the different type. After that, I will define and focus on materials for energy harvesting from kinetic energy suitable for wearable application and also material for energy harvesting from thermal energy and also material for energy harvesting from both energy sources which are thermal and kinetic. At the end, a conclusion. So before I begin in this presentation, I will I would like to introduce my group and its main research area. I am Aida Bahamid, working as a senior research assistant at Kimnitz University of Technology in the chair for management and sensor technology headed by Professor Orfe Kerum. Our group involves around 30 scientists working mainly in different disciplines such as ambient spectroscopy, energy autonomous and micro and nano sensor based on the use of smart material. In fact, the sensors developed by our group have outstanding properties such as high sensitivity and reproducibility in addition to their low cost due to the advantage of using nanomaterial in comparison to the conventional sensor. The novel sensor has also interesting property which is low power consumption in microwatt range. Therefore, having safe powering of this sensor is really required in order to ensure continuous monitoring and avoid battery charging. For that reason, energy harvesting is the most convenient solution. So what is energy harvesting? Energy harvesting, known as energy scavenging, is the process by which energy is derived from external source, such as light energy, kinetic energy, in which can be in form of vibration, mechanical uh, stresses and like walking, body motions, thermal energy, magnetic energy, and radio frequency energy. This type, all this energy can be converted to obtain relatively a certain level of power. The level of power is 
variable depending on the energy source. For example, kinetic energy and thermal energy can have uh, lev energy level from microwatt to milliwatt, while light energy can deliver a power in the range of milliwatt to watt range. So, as we want, we would like to power the sensor and to power wearable sensors and low power devices. So, kinetic energy and thermal energy are the most convenient energy source. However, for powering wearable sensors, the energy harvester should be able to convert low frequencies delivered by human body. In fact, the mechanical energy source delivered by human body will not exceed 40 Hz. However, conventional approach for power generation can only effectively harvest high frequency mechanical energy for that and to within the aim to effectively convert low frequency energy into electricity. The group of Professor Wong built the first thermal generator in 2006, which is based on zinc oxide nanowire. So, nano generator is a nanoscale device used to generate power. The power can be derived from mechanical and thermal energy. A nano generator has three typical approaches: triboelectric piezoelectric and pyroelectric nanogenerators. Both the piezoelectric and triboelectric nanogenerator can convert mechanical energy into electricity, while pyroelectric nanogenerator can convert thermal energy into electricity. The working mechanism of triboelectric nanogenerator can be described as the periodic exchange of the potential difference and used by the cyclic separation and recontact and the opposite triboelectric exchange on the inner surface of the two sheets. This kind of nanogenerator can be used to harvest tiny movement like heartbeats. For the piezoelectric effect, it consists of the change of the dipole leading to the formation of electric charge due to the applied stress and this can be used to harvest human body movement. For pyroelectric nanogenerators, they can be used to harvest thermal energy from uh, time-dependent temperature fluctuation, like human body temperature change. Now we will move to define the most used material for the common used nanogenerator, which are the piezoelectric materials. The Venn diagram shows the classification of piezoelectric material or subclass of piezoelectric material. There are 32 class or 32 crystal class of which 20 possess direct piezoelectricity and 10 of these are polar crystal. What does it mean polar crystal? In the absence of the mechanical stress, they exhibit spontaneous polarization. This polar crystal will show pyroelectricity. In the presence of an oscillating thermal gradient, they will generate a charge. So piezoelectric material can be pyroelectric materials. So there are another classification of piezoelectric material. There are the stiff material which contain single crystal like lithium, nipolite and quartz, which, which is a well-known material, and the ceramics material like barium titanate, lead zirconate, and so on. And there are fa another family, which is the flexible material. Flexible material can be as a polymer, so like PVDF and copolymer, cellulose and derivative and like PLA polymer. For polymer piezo ceramic composite, it is combination of ceramics and polymer matrix. So let's start with the first classification, which is piezoelectric single crystal, which is the most known uh, known piezoelectric material, and they have good electromechanical coupling coefficient, good longitudinal piezoelectric strain coefficient, and also coupling factor in addition to the high mechanical quality factor. The drawback of this material is their high cost and reduced toughness and high damping. So piezoelectric ceramic or also named piezoceramic have two families, lead based piezoceramic, lead free based piezoceramic. For lead based piezoceramic, they are polycrystalline materials with perovskite crystal structure. They exhibit high piezoelectric effect and low 
the electric loss. In fact, the piezoelectric coefficient of this material vary from 200 picocoulomb per newton to 600 picocoulomb per newton. However, these materials are highly toxic because of the presence of lead. As an alternative, heat-free bases piezo ceramic are used. They exhibit perfuscite crystal structure with APO3 chemical structure. Some example of lead free based piezo ceramic we can find barium titanate and bismuth ferrite. This material have acceptable piezo electric coefficient ranging to 200 picocoulomb per newton. And they are also environmentally friendly, which widen their use in practical application. However, as the piezoelectric coefficient is limited, efforts are devoted toward the enhancement of the piezoelectric property of these materials. So, how to modify the piezoelectric property of lead-free piezoelectric material? As I have explained it in the last slide, lead-free piezoelectric material exhibit a ABO3 chemical structure. The piezoelectric property of this material can be affected by its own stoichiometry, the microstructure dop and the doping entering into the site A and B. Here in, it's an example for barium titanate, which is a network of a coronal linked oxygen octahedron with titanium and barium. Here also in a table containing some example for Doped uh, barium titanate, and we can see the influence of doping in the site A and B on the piezoelectric property. We can see the big improvement by doping in the site A and B. It's around three times for the piezoelectric coefficient and also for the coupling factor. The piezo ceramics material are hard and brittle, which limit their use in wearable application. For that reason, Piezoelectric polymer are an alternative as they exhibit low density and they are biocompatible and they have good flexibility in addition to good toughness and low manufacturing costs and rapid processing. Here in some example of the most common used piezoelectric polymer like PLA, PVDF and copolymer and cellulose and derivative. And also a table containing a comparison between the property of piezoelectric ceramic and piezoelectric polymers. And we can see here that the main challenge in piezoelectric polymer is their low piezoelectric coefficient. So we need to improve the property of the piezoelectric property with the preservation of the good flexibility. Therefore, property and ensure good flexibility, polymer nanocomposite is a solution, and they offer other benefits such as increased ductility with no decrease on strength, high mechanical resistance, better piezoelectric property. Nevertheless, some issue can be occurred during preparation of the composite, such as sedimentation of the nanoparticle on the bottom of the polymer matrix, and the bonding between the polymer and the particle. We will focus in the next slide on the most used polymer composite for the nanogenerators and the way to improve its performance. The most used polymer for realization of piezoelectric nanogenerator are PVDF and their copolymer. They are semi-crystalline material and they, the piezoelectricity of this material is originated from the dipole moment of fluorocarbon. PVDF show five crystal polymer, which are alpha, beta, gamma, and delta, and epsilon phases, where beta phase show the highest electroactive property among the five polymers. As a result, mesh efforts were devoted toward the enhancement of beta phase transformation. There are many ways to improve beta phase transformation. The most efficient one is polarization at high electrical field. However, this method is unsafe. For that reason, there are other methods and other alternatives like mechanical stretching at elevated temperature. We can get also a good performance, not, but not so much as polarization. We can also use uh, 
piece of ceramic, tonic related material, and also conductive particle. In addition, we can also use uh, the appropriate solvent. Here, it's a diagram summarizing the way to improve the beta phase transformation depending on the crystal state of the PVDF. Move to see some examples done in our laboratory and also from literature. In this example, we have used it for realization of polymer nanocomposite as a material PVDF HFP, which is a copolymer of PVDF, and to nucleate the, the polymer barium titanate and also silver nanoparticle. For the preparation of the nanocomposite, we use it a solvent mixing method, which is a very simple method, and we have used a different solvent. Here is the form of the realized nano generators. In general, the performance of polymer nanocomposite are affected by several things, such as the amount of piezoceramic nanoparticle, the piezoceramic nanoparticle aspect ratio, and the amount of conductive nanoparticles, and also the used solvent, as it can, it can have different evaporation rate and also deep on moment of the solvent. And also from the processing condition, like steering time, the mixing temperature, and so on. So in the next slide, we will see the influence of some factor. We started here with the influence of nanoparticles and concentration and the solvent. Here in, we, we changed the concentration of barium titanate and also the solvent. We used a different solvent like NMP and DMF. We can see that the performance under vibration checker, we can see that the barium titanate with 20% exhibit the highest performance and output voltage which can be around 1 volt for the sample prepared with the DMF. In addition, the nanogenerator containing 20% barium titanate and prepared with DMF so good output power to verify what was occurred, structural measurement using Fourier transfer infrared spectroscopy was conducted, and the relative fraction of beta phase is calculated. We can see here that the fraction of the beta phase was higher for the nanocomposite dispersed image. Thing that we will see after we have studied the effect of piezoceramic concentration and the solvent is the effect of conductive nanoparticle. Here we have fixed the amount of piezoceramic to 10% and we have used a different concentration of sil silver nanoparticle ranging from 0.1 to 1.5%. According to the piezoelectric measurement, composite with 0.75% silver nanoparticle show the best performance with an, out an output voltage of 2.1 volt and a power of 0 0.2 microwatt. So the FTRR was also performant and we can see that the high relative fraction of beta phase is achieved for the nanocomposite with 0.75. This increase is related to the increase of material mechanical property, as well the increase of piezoelectric coefficient. In addition, the presence of the non conductive nanoparticle can boost the self-polarization of the material. Now, now, continuing with the effect of nanoparticles, this slide summarizes the effect of doping within the site A and B on the performance of nanocomposite nanogenerator. The first example show the effect of doping in the site A and doping in the both sides. The measurement illustrates that doping in the two sites can lead to better performance, around four times higher comparing to the normal barium titanate. In addition, the second example supports this fact, and here in a PCCT and ZN doped PCCT, we show that, that ZN PCCT. PCZT have better performance. These two works will be detailed in the next presentation. Move to see another example of a flexible composite nanogenerator. We have studied in particular in the last slides the 
polymer PVDF and their copolymers, and we have studied the effect of nanoceramic particles and also conductive nanoparticle here and we will see another example of polymer which is PDMS which is known by its biocompatibility and their flexibility which can mimic human motion. In addition we will use another conductive particle which is carbon nanotope known by their higher mechanical property and also higher conductivity. We have a prepared uh, nanocomposite on using uh, solution mixing method and in this study we see the effect of addition of CNT and we can see that by adding CNT the performance of the nano generator can be improved and we achieve a higher performance at 0.5 CNTs and we can see the effect of carbon nanotube here is scanning electron microscopic images with and without CNT and we can see that by addition of CNT we improve the distribution of barium titanate nanoparticle within the polymer. We avoid the sedimentation of nanoparticle through the network of the CNT and we also by addition of CNT can improve the mechanical property and also making cell polarization of the material. So no need of post-electrical pooling treatment. Other nanoparticle was also added to PDMS and this are some example from the literature. The first example is by addition of carbon black, some other use of graphene oxide and graphene, some uses also carbon copper nanoparticle and so on. This conductive element is acting as a bridge and facilitate the alignment of dipole and can also enhance the mechanical property. Now we will move to another type of flexible nanogenerator. As we have described it in previous part, some of piezoelectric materials, especially ferroelectric, can exhibit pyroelectric effect. So to achieve better performance of flexible pyroelectric nanogenerator, enhancement of pyroelectric activity of the ceramic particle is also considered. As well, to have an efficient system, the heat transfer should be enhanced to improve the thermal activity and the thermal conductivity and diffusivity. For that reason, and to achieve this aim, micropatterning can be as a solution to ensure direct heating of the pyroelectric material as well increase the surface area and reduce radi radiative reflection. Here an example from the literature illustrating the effect of patterning on PVDF surface on the performance of the nanogenerator. It shows that the voltage output is improved by including more pattern. Also we can increase the performance of the nanocomposite nanogenerator by improving the electrode and here is we use it a carbonaceous electrodes. In fact the carbonaceous electrode can have good mechanical property and can also increase the high radiation can have high radiation absorption with increasing the thickness and increase it ability to strain pyroelectric material caused by lower change in temperature. This is an example with graphene, with micropatternate, and we see that the ones with graphene can have better performance. The good thing is that we can combine piezoelectric and pyroelectric, and we can have a hybrid nanogenerator that can collect energy from both sources, kinetic and thermal energies. Here in examples of hybrid nanogenerators formed with different material here. First example, PVDF and CNTs with also TPO and so on to have a uh, flexible nanogenerator. Here we can see the effect of change of airflow done by the dryer and we can see that 
heating and bending can lead to better performance. Another example, it's with another copolymer, PVDFTRFE, with graphene combined and CNT PDMS, and we can see with and without stretching and with cooling and by the combination, we can achieve higher voltage. We have reached the conclusion. To conclude in this presentation, we have seen that nanogenerators are promising systems that convert not only mechanical energy, but also thermal energy to electricity, useful for low power electronics, such as wearable sensor. In addition, lead free material are very interesting to provide harvester for biomedical application with good performance. Realization of highly flexible performance piezoelectric nanogenerator based on PVD, it's a little bit challenging and require a careful selection of the particle, their concentration, and also the processing conditions and the solvent. Among also piezoelectric material, we find that ferroelectric are promising material to harvest not only mechanical, but also thermal energy owing to the existing of pyro effect. So, in this presentation, we have seen some example of pyroelectric nanogenerator. We have seen that can their performance can be improved by several ways and by enhancement of the material and also by enhancing the heat transfer by using micro patterning or carbonaceous material. So, at the end, we can see that ferroelectric material have the opportunity to hybridize the system and use the surrounding energy efficiently. At the end, praise the time that I have used in this presentation. Thank you for your attention. Please feel free to ask. Thank you, Aida, for the interesting presentation. And I think we have the time for one question if there is someone from the audience who would like to ask a question, you are welcome. Unfortunately, I cannot see the chat, but if someone would like to ask a question, you can directly turn on your mic, please. Okay, so if not, let's move to the next presentation which is uh, which will be by Mrs. Amina Benayed in cooperation between the Faculty of Science Facts Tunisia and the Kent University of Technology and the presentation is on zinc doped BCZT PVDF HFP for improved performance of flexible piezoelectric nanogenerator. So Amina please you can share Hello. your screen. Yeah. Hello. Yes, of course. Okay. Uh, I can't find uh, the slide to share my video. You have a button near to the microphone where you have the screen and you can click on it to share the... Okay. Uh, it's okay. Maybe not yet, but probably it will be coming. Maybe. Yeah. Not for me. No, it's not there. No. Can you do that again, please? Yeah, of course. Yes, now I can see uh, the, your folder where you have the presentation. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, not yet. 
I can see the oh. pointer from where you are sharing the video, but I cannot see the video if it's running. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's the problem. The video is probably in the second window. Please share again. And at the beginning, when you're sharing, switch on the, the switcher, use the voice from computer. Okay. And next one, put the windows. Uh, below the switcher, there is a windows. And try to find where is your... Okay, you find some windows. I'm not sure it would be uh, good. We, we, feel, we, we, we see the uh, library of... Uh, of movies. Mm -hmm. Now is folder. We see there is a small miniature of, of movies. Uh, yes, but uh, it's already in my screen. Mm -hmm. Now we can see the folder. Do you have a second screen? Mm -hmm. Yes. <clears throat> What, you what have a second screen or not? The second window with you? I don't know where's the problem. You have to, you have to choose right window. Yes, yes, I choose the right window. Okay, then can you please send to uh, uh, the team the presentation? Yes, uh, and to can Miss uh, Miss Hyde uh, share the the video? Okay, Aida, if you have the video, please go ahead. Else we move on to Khawla and come back to you. Okay, sorry. It's fine. Khawla? Are you there? Yeah? Yeah, okay. So let's move to your presentation and then we come back to Amina and maybe please send it around Amina, then we can share it, okay? And okay. the presentation of Khaula will be on lead-free nanoceramic for high output piezoelectric nano generator. It's okay. We see, but we are not sure we will hear the voice. Let's start it and then you can see. Yeah, I will. Uh... No, we don't hear. No, no, the voice is not working. It's okay? No, no. When, no. when you share, when you share, you have to switch on the switcher. Use voice from computer. Please share again. Stop sharing. Do you see this switcher? Yeah. Okay. Please switch on Windows. MSC, Measurement and Sensor Technology in TU Chemnitz. So, uh, researchers are concentrating on using advanced energy sources and improving energy efficiency, which will be uh, the challenge for the next 50 years. So, there are two uh, main categories of energy, renewable and uh, non-renewable. Now, renewable energy is uh, uh, only available in limited quantities and is not able to renew itself, like coal, uh, gas, uh, oil, and uh, nuclear power. But renewable energy sources are uh, present on Earth in unlimited uh, quantities. It is renewable, it's natural, fast, and it can be used to generate electricity. Among the renewable energy are uh, solar, uh, hydraulic, wind energy, as well as uh, human activities uh, or human movement. Among them, uh, vibration or mechanical energy is one of the most abundant energy sources and is convertible to other useful uh, energy forms. So, piezoelectric materials are widely used in electromechanical devices because they can convert mechanical uh, energy to electrical energy. Under pressure or uh, generate mechanical motion uh, by electricity, it consists of a piezoelectric material dispersed in a piezoelectric polymer. Lead-based composite uh, piezoelectric 
has exceptional piezoelectric properties and produces maximum voltage. But we know that uh, uh, lead is dangerous for environment. Uh, therefore, the replacement of the material is necessary. Among the lead free piezoelectric materials studied, uh, in uh, recent years, four groups will be analyzed uh, here because their properties are already competitive with the PZA for similar applications. So, uh, KNN and MBT is one of the most likely candidates to replace the lead PZA family of piezoelectric materials, but it also exhibited a high pure temperature. But uh, barium titanate and uh, uh, barium titanate is the, the uh, first lead-free polycrystalline piezoelectric ceramic discovered. Uh, the piezoelectric coefficient D3C of uh, pure uh, barium titanate is about uh, 190 or uh, 200. And uh, uh, the development of uh, lead-free piezoelectric uh, reached the discovery of uh, barium zirconate titanate and uh, barium calcium zirconate titanate. Uh, that is uh, uh, exactly the, do uh, the doping of uh, calcium 2 plus and zirconium 4 plus in barium titanate. So, in my research, I will uh, focus on the synthesis of uh, barium zirconate titanate and barium calcium zirconate titanate BCZT. Uh, and uh, compare them with commerce, commercial uh, barium titanate. Okay? Uh, so to is a flexible uh, piezoelectric nanogenerator, it is uh, necessary to use a piezoelectric polymer. The fabrication of the nanocomposite is done using uh, inorganic materials, uh, especially piezoelectric polymers such as PVDF and its copolymer. Uh, the characteristics of PVDF are good mechanical flexibility, uh, high property, uh, property uh, high uh, piezoelectric coefficient, uh, easy manufacturing processes, uh, which uh, favorite its application for electric fight supply. PVDF HFP uh, was preferred as the better piezoelectric properties. So the fabrication of uh, uh, a piezoelectric nanogenerator requires three steps. The first step is the synthesis of uh, barium zirconate titanate and barium calcium zirconate titanate by uh, surgical method. Uh, we uh, used this method to obtain a small size materials and this will be confirmed by uh, XRG characterization. The second step is uh, uh, the discussion of the synthesis uh, materials in the polymer to have uh, a piezoelectric composite. We use uh, uh, here the method uh, solution casting technique. Uh, as you see here, uh, three polymers such as uh, barium titanate, uh, commercial barium titanate dispersed in PBDF HFP. And uh, also 10% uh, of uh, barium zirconate titanate and barium calcium zirconate titanate synthesized dispersed in a PVDF uh, HFP. And uh, we uh, uh, then finished by the fabrication of uh, this nanogenerator using uh, sandwich structure. Two transparent uh, parts were selected as the film support skeleton. The copper was uh, respectively bonded to the substrate and the sandwich structure uh, was obtained by placing the film between the flexible electrode. Also, this is a real part picture for our fabricated nanogenerator. Uh, we start uh, the characterization of materials by XRD. XRD uh, uh, can assist us to study the effect of uh, calcium 2 plus and zirconium 4 plus depending on the phase formation and the crystal size. Uh, and like barium titanate, uh, we can see that all the powder show a single, uh, single perovskite phase without heterogeneous uh, peak, indicating that the calcium 2 plus and zirconium 4 plus substitution has been doped totally into uh, the perovskite lattice. Barium titanate powder is indexed in the uh, cubic uh, structure. 
but barium zirconate titanate and the barium calcium zirconate titanate have been found in the tetragonal structure. Uh, moreover, with uh, with the increase of the synthesis doping, the intensity of uh, the diffraction peak became progressively uh, stronger and uh, sharper, indicating the increase of the crystallinity of the powder. Uh, about the synthesis uh, composite, the addition of calcium to plus and the zirconium to plus, uh, for plus, sorry, uh, nanoparticle results in the appearance of a characteristic uh, slightly sharp peak and the, the dis, uh, disappearance of the non-polar alpha phase. So, uh, uh, furthermore, the uh, reduced uh, diffraction peak intensity of the non-polar uh, phase and the increased peak intensity of the polar phase suggest the transformation of the non-polar phase into the polar phase with the, the help of in a structure polarization uh, which promotes the piezoelectric behavior of, uh, of the samples. So here I will give you uh, an overview of the phase existing in the polymer. So PVDF uh, HFP mainly has five crystalline phase, which are alpha, beta, uh, gamma, theta, epsilon phase. Uh, among them, uh, the sole electrically inactive non-polar uh, phase is alpha phase. Uh, of the four distinct phase, beta phase is the uh, electroactive uh, phases and the most one exhibit a spontaneous polarization and that has high piezoelectric uh, properties. So now uh, FTR is uh, one of uh, the finest techniques to determine and quantify uh, the different phases of PVDF HFP. It is shown that with the doping of uh, zirconium to plus and calcium uh, to plus, uh, zirconium for plus and uh, calcium to plus side, compared with uh, barium titanic powder, the peak intensity of uh, the beta uh, phase becomes stronger, uh, while those of uh, phase alpha become weak. Uh, moreover, for the sample of uh, BCZT PVGF uh, HFP, Maximum analysis of the characteristic peak related to electroactive uh, beta phase uh, have been observed. So the interaction of the polarity, dipolar uh, groups of the PVDF HFP and BCDT uh, gain can promote the crystalline phase transformation from alpha phase to beta phase uh, in PVDF HFP since uh, BCDT uh, gains process. Uh, further electric phase. And about uh, the uh, electrical uh, measurement, if you look uh, at this, you will see a process to produce the electrical current from the nanogenerator. So the application of a mechanical vibration on the nanogenerator and uses the orientation of uh, the dipole and then the presence of electric current. Uh, here, uh, this is a real video of the rhythms of our uh, piezoelectric nanogenerator. The characteristic of the nanogenerator as a potential power supply were investigated by measuring generated uh, voltage versus strain in the polymer matrix uh, under varying dynamic load frequency uh, and power output versus resistance. So the PVDF HFP and uh, BCZT uh, produce a maximum voltage of 2 volts in comparison with by uh, barium zirconate titanate, the titanate, and uh, the maximum value of uh, the output power reaches 1.9 watt for the CZT, uh, 1.38 uh, uh, microwatt for uh, barium zirconate titanate, and 0 0.57 uh, for uh, barium titanate. Uh, at uh, a loading uh, resistance below uh, 1 mega ohm. So, uh, barium titanate doping uh, has shown good stability by undergoing continuous pressing release cycle. Uh, this could be uh, due to the flexibility natural of PVDF HFP and the high mechanical strength of uh, prepared composite. 
So uh, therefore, the existence of uh, zinc carbon four plus and calcium two plus in uh, nanogenerated by the electric materials uh, is an effect for it increased energy harvesting performance. Of this study, we will concentrate on the electric performance of uh, the CZT PVD at each ST due to the excellent electric performance. So for a practical application, we use the piezoelectric nanogenerator device to harvest the human activities observed in daily life, uh, such as touching with her hand, bumping a finger, and walking. Uh, so an electrical output voltage of 3.04, uh, 3.04 volt was generated when a human touched with the hand and uh, 143 millivolt when uh, moved the, the finger. Uh, but uh, furthermore, the device um, successfully harvested uh, these human activities will, while walking. Uh, so it generated the electrical uh, output voltage value of 4.55 volt. Uh, besides, uh, the above resource in harvesting biomechanical uh, energy indicate that the proposed BCZT PVDF HFP nanogenerator can be utilized, uh, utilized in a uh, lightweight uh, as a variable device for various mechanical energy harvesters and uh, detecting uh, human motion. So now we show uh, the effect of different BCZT PVDF HFP nanogenerator size in the piezoelectric performance. So uh, we uh, revealed that uh, when sizing increased from uh, one uh, centimeter above one centimeter, uh, to two uh, at 2.5 uh, centimeters, the voltage increased from 0, uh, 0 0.08 uh, volt to uh, 1.85 uh, volt. So the increase in the voltage is related to the rapid induction, uh, induction and the transfer of charges, which the shaker contact is adequate with uh, the size of nanogenerator. So why for uh, the system PVDF nanogenerator larger uh, than uh, uh, to uh, add uh, 2.5 uh, centimeter, the produced output voltage out, uh, is uh, less than uh, 1.8 uh, uh, volt, which is uh, attributed to the small size of the uh, region of apply, applied uh, force compared to the size of uh, the nanogenerator. So from uh, uh, the viewpoint of applications, we are most concerned about uh, uh, whether an energy harvester can generate uh, uh, suffi uh, sufficient power under uh, variable excitation. So furthermore, we identify uh, four promoting uh, applications, power shows, power shows, speed bump, biomedical application, tire condition monitoring, and uh, building band and uh, uh, brush oscillation. So in the end, thank you for your attention. So many thanks, Khawla, for the presentation. So now the time for questions. And if one of the audience have a question, please feel free to ask. Maybe I'll start with one first question, Khawla, because I saw that the, the output is around one volt, two volt maximum. Like what are the the potential methods or like or are you planning like to or thinking to improve the performance of this harvesters i know you started with the materials and so on since no one year but do you have some ideas how this can be improved or are you planning to do that uh, yeah, it's uh, our perspective uh, so the nano composite uh, properties uh, can be uh, increased by uh, uh, silver and uh, silver substitution, uh, maybe uh, by CNT. Um, but if we can, uh, uh, we, we, if we can have a nanogenerator like the commercial, uh, commercial nanogenerator, we have to do a polarization. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So many thanks. Good luck for your future. Thank you. And maybe if there is one question from the audience, please feel free to ask.
Okay, then let us move. I hope that Amina, are you ready with your presentation? Or can Ida share the screen, please? Uh, yes. Uh... I think Dr. Ayd or Dr. Slim will share the video. Okay. Sorry for that, but we'll wait one minute or a few minutes. Aida? multifunctional materials and applications in the Faculty of Science of Sfax in Asia. I'm a pleasure to present my work which is entitled Zinc Doped PCDT PVT FHFP for Improved Performance of Flexible Pads of Electric Nano Generator. This work is in collaboration with the Professorship Measurement and Sensor Technology at the University of Technology of Chemnitz, Germany. For the outline, I've divided my presentation into six main parts. I'm going to start with motivation. Second, I will focus on flexible and environmentally friendly uh, piezoelectric energy harvesters, followed by state-of-the-art of, of lead-free materials with high piezoelectric performance. Then I will talk about experimental procedure, accompanied by results and discussions. Finally, I will uh, end with the conclusions. So let's get started with short definition of energy harvesting, which is commonly defined as the conversion of ambient energy into usable electrical energy. For example, solar power, wind energy, thermal energy, and human motions are the external sources for energy harvesting, which can be used in several applications as nanorobots, personal electronics, nanosensors, and biomedicine. Focus on vibrational energy harvesting, which can be accomplished using effects such as electromagnetic, triboelectric, and piezoelectric. Each of these effects has its own uniqueness and applications, but we focus on piezoelectric effects because it has low uh, output, high efficiency, and much impedance, which can play uh, an important role in electronic devices such as actuators, sensors, and accelerators. Focusing on flexible piezoelectric energy harvesting, organic piezoelectric polymers such as PVDF and its copolymers are being intensively explored by various researchers for energy harvesting applications due to its flexibility, biocompatibility, high elasticity, and their effective responses. It shows five different crystalline phases. Among all these phases, beta phase contains the highest dipolar moment and exhibits the best uh, piezoelectric, pyroelectric, and ferroelectric properties. In addition, the beta PVTF has excellent stability to chemicals, mechanical flexibility, and biocompatibility, which excites further interest in uh, its application. Various strategies have been developed to obtain high content beta PVTF, including mechanical stretching, electrical pulling, and nucleating with piezoelectric nanoparticles, which is the main used method. The following table presents some examples of piezoelectric materials with high piezoelectric coefficient. PZT shows interesting overall properties with a large number of applications in uh, commercial devices. However, high lead contained in PZT creates environmental pollution during operation, processing, and even the disposal. Hence, lead-free piezoelectric materials having a piezoelectric coefficient comparable to that of PZT are desired for uh, the development of uh, high-performance nano devices. So it was not until 2009, following previous works, that BT-based materials modified with calcium and zirconium called the attention of the piezoelectrics community. BCT has appeared as promising 
The lead free uh, piezo ceramic having high piezo electric coefficient at the range of uh, 560 to uh, 600 picocoulomb per newton and use it for low temperature devices applications. This diagram presents elements that are doped BCCT using the solid state method and according to the literature, we can notice that BCCT doped with the has an important piezo electric coefficient. This method requires a very high temperature which leads to the formation of high sized structure. In this case, and in order to improve the piezoelectric coefficient, we decide to elaborate BCCT and zinc doped BCCT using the Sargel method. This technique can have a low temperature, also it provides a high uh, homogeneity, purity and good control of uh, grain size. BCCT and zinc doped BCCT were achieved by the conventional Sargel reaction method. In order to form the precursor solution, an amount of barium acetate and calcium acetate were dissolved in acetic acid and ionized water to form the first uh, solution. An appropriate amount of zirconium and titanium betoxide were dissolved separately in ethanol and acetic acid following by the addition of uh, dissolved zinc acetate. It is stirring on a magnetic, on a magnetic stirrer. The three precursors were, were mixed to form the second solution. Secondly, all solutions were mixed into a baker under stirring. Finally, the formed gel was dried at 70 degrees Celsius for 8 hours. The obtained Xero gel was mixed with a mortar and calcium at 900 degrees Celsius for 4 hours. Moving now to the preparation of piezoelectric nanogenerator based on polymer composite. Recently, BVTF HFP is attracting more and more attention due to its interesting properties such as solubility, electromechanical stability, high dielectric constant, and uh, good mechanical strength. The BCT and doped BCT BVTF HFP composites with 10 and 15 uh, percent of weight were prepared through the solution casting method. First, PVDFHRP belts were dissolved in PMF solution and mixed with uh, a magnetic stir at 60 degrees uh, Celsius to complete the solution. Then, powder was added to the polymer solution while stirring continuously. The prepared thick homogeneous mi mixture was then powdered on clean petri dish and kept at 80 degrees Celsius for drying. Finally, the dried film has been peeled off and used for analysis and testing. The film was uh, cut into small pieces and sandwiched uh, between two layers of flexible captain substrate uh, containing a copper, taps, uh, a copper tap. Subsequently, copper wires were uh, fixed on the top and bottom uh, of the small pieces as uh, demonstrated in the figure. In order to investigate the structural behavior and the purity of phases, these are uh, diffraction measurements were performed using the diffractometer for two theta ranges between 15 and 80 degrees. Further profile refinement was carried about using uh, foolproof software, which indicates the coexistence of uh, two phases, tetragonal art and uh, orthorhombic, for uh, BCCT and zinc doped BCCT, as shown in the figure 1. The latest parameters of the calcinate powders are summarized in the table. Figure 2 shows XRD patterns of uh, pure powder and uh, composites. Generally, PDF-HFP is polar polymer, having alpha, beta, and uh, gamma phases. The peak at, uh, the peak at 18 uh, 18.5 corresponds to the alpha phase, while peaks uh, 20.6 and 26.7 correspond to the superposition of beta and gamma phases res respectively. Evaluate the output voltage of flexible composite cycling tapping tests were uh, conducted of uh, generators based on uh, BCCT PVDF HFP and zinc doped BCCT PVDF HFP composites film with different contents of nanoparticles. Mechanical deformation was applied under a cycling tapping system with a tapping frequency of uh, 40 Hz and a voltage of uh, 20 volt. Figure shows typical time depend voltage uh, measured for uh, the different generators uh, during cycling tapping with a distorted harmonic force. The highest peak uh, value of uh, 1.9 uh, volt was recorded for the generator with the 10 uh, percent per per of weight of uh, zinc doped BCT nanoparticles as shown in the figure. 
The second mode, energy harvesting performance of flexible nanogenerator was evaluated by tapping with a human finger and foot, which harvested an open circuit voltage equal to 5 and 9 volts respectively. Output power of the generators under various loading resistance ranged from 56 kilo ohm to 7 mega ohm are characterized as shown in the figure. Generator processed with 10% of zinc viscosity has maximum power of 2.13 microwatt at about 1 mega ohm. The results were attributed to the increase of piezoelectric of the ceramic nanocomposite. Nevertheless, more the amount of zinc viscosity increase, more the agglomeration and the appearance of pores may induce more imperfection in the polymer matrix, which can result in the decrease of the piezoelectric performance. To conclude, I'd like to say that piezoelectric nanoceramics were successfully synthesized using Salgel method, which we can obtain smaller and more uniform particles uh, the, uh, than other methods. Flexible piezoelectric energy harvester was fabricated based on viscosity and zinc viscosity PVDF HFP composite structure. XRD revealed the coexistence of two phases, tetragonal and orthorhombic. XRD pattern of uh, composite films shows the presence of both powder and PVDF HFP diffraction peaks and signifies the retention of the powder st structure in the polymer matrix. Nanocomposite film with 10% of uh, zinc viscosity exhibits the best performance, which generated the maximum open circuit voltage of 1.9 volt. Besides, the zinc viscosity PV DFHFP generators generate the maximum power equal to 2.13 microwatt across a load uh, resistance of 1 mega ohm with 10% of content. All the extracted results in this work of uh, composites suggest that nanogenerators can be promising candidates for several uh, devices as well as self-powering for uh, of biomedical devices applications. Thank you for your attention. So, many thanks, Amina. And if there are questions, please. Feel free to ask. Any question from the audience? Okay, I will proceed with one question. You have shown that you used the captain as substrate. And my question, did you try to use some other substrate or you tried only with the captain? Uh, no, I only use the captain to uh, to protect my uh, my uh, generator. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So many thanks. We move on now to uh, the next presentation. And you have seen presentation dealing with the materials, and now I think it's the other part of energy harvesting, and it's about the energy management. And it would be by uh, Mr. Zmarin Ben Ammar. It would be on synchronized switch on inductor energy harvesting circuits for flexible piezoelectric generators. So, Mariam, please, you can yeah. share your screen. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Sonia. Hello. You can see my screen, right? Okay. Yes, we see the screen. Now we see the presentation. Sorry. Hello everyone, this is Mariam Ben Ammar, PhD student in Chemnitz University of Technology, Germany, in cooperation with Enetcom Tunisia. And here today we are presenting our research about synchronized switch harvesting on inductor SSHE energy extraction circuits for flexible piezoelectric generators. Here is the outline of this presentation. I will begin with the motivation and challenges, then power management techniques for flexible piezoelectric energy harvesting, after that investigation of self-powered parallel synchronized switch harvesting on inductor, finally experimental results and discussion, and a conclusion. 
The human body provides energy mainly by muscle movement and by heat. Even without performing a specific workout, a typical human produces mechanical energy by moving different parts like the elbow, the knee, ankle, and heel also while walking or running. This energy can be harvested and converted to electrical energy using piezoelectric generators, thermoelectric generators, or triboelectric generators, and so on. However, the harnessed energy from flexible harvesters cannot be directly connected to load systems. Energy management interfaces are required to achieve rectified and conditioned signals to enhance the power extraction ability. At the same time, the power conception of wearable devices covers magnitudes from microwatt to watt, so, to, to watt, so the harnessed energy can serve as a power supply for ultra-low power wearables, named also as autonomous wearable sensing application, as seen in the picture, like fitness tracker and trackers, medical emergency devices, or body attached sensors like ECG, EMG, or even for more power hungry application like the thermoelectric powered watches or smartphones, making them independent from the power grid and recharging cycles. In this slide, we are introducing the general structure of the energy management block diagram of a piezoelectric energy harvesting system. It is composed mainly by a piezoelectric element which generates the AC signal, and then to reach the required DC output, our conditioning circuits are extremely needed as seen to allow a voltage compatibility between the piezoelectric element and the electric load. So, the electronic interfaces or power conditioning circuits has a significant influence on the piezoelectric energy harvesting effectiveness. The rectification stage, as seen here, is usually connected to a dc dc converter to scale the rectified voltage according to the application requirements. To conclude, let's say that the state-of-the-art research in both, both low-power electronics and low-banana composite materials could close, close the gap between power production and conception to allow even complex electronics exclusively powered by human body energy. We move now to the resonant power management solutions for flexible piezoelectric generators. As a reference, we are comparing the resonant interfaces to the standard energy harvesting circuit, which is the bridge rectifier. Mainly, we know that some of the advantages of the standard energy harvesting interface is the low complexity. However, it has a highly dependency on the load variation, a low efficiency, and high losses due to the diodes or to the voltage drop of the diodes. So that's why different harvesting interfaces have been proposed to maximize the energy extraction derived from mechanical vibrations. How? By applying resonance into the circuit. Okay, let's explain what we mean by resonance. Actually, the piezoelectric transducers in these interfaces is connected directly to the circuit, and then the resonant effect is introduced by including switched magnetic elements. They can be either inductors or transformers, and they are used to partially match the reactive component of the piezoelectric impedance. So we have two options. The switched elements can be connected directly or just after a rectification stage to the piezoelectric element. So we will see an example of this configuration to, to connect, let's say, the switch after a block of rectification. When the rectifier is connected to the piezoelectric element, the entire system, the entire circuit, will behave like an LC oscillator. So this resonant effect, it influences the amount of charge which is present in the parasitic piezoelectric capacitance, as seen here, CP, and resulting in a maximum generated voltage that exceeds the maximum voltage peak, which is produced by the piezoelectric transducers in an open circuit configuration. So this is how the 
how we are applying a resonance, yeah? And then, here to know more about how it works, we are presenting two interfaces, which are the parallel SHE, let's say parallel synchronized switch harvesting on inductor, and the serial synchronized switch harvesting on inductor. Two interfaces, approximately the same length, but the main difference is in how we are connecting the switch S and the inductor L, either in series, so we are talking about SSHE, which is in the right side of the table in this slide, or in parallel, we are connecting the switch and inductor in parallel with the piezoelectric element, so we are talking about the left side in this, in this table. So this is the main difference, and one is for low power application, and one is for more high power applications. Then, how it works, we say, with simply, the switch S here, it's, it can be opened until or during all the vibration period. That's why the currents allowing the currents to flow this, to flow through through the circuit to the storage element, which is CR here. So then, when the voltage across the piezoelectric element decreases, yeah, the switch S will close directly inverting the voltage across the piezoelectric element and consequently stopping the current flow. Yeah. To summarize, it's like the switch is kept closed until a full voltage inversion of the piezoelectric element is, is achieved. Yeah. So this inversion of the voltage is causing an electrical attenuation that opposes the mechanical vibration of the piezoelectric material. So this effect is named a synchronized switch damping, SSD here. Yeah? It can significantly affect the overall conversion efficiency, especially in some strongly coupled piezoelectric transducers. And so let's say here it's the main limitation of the parallel and serial SSHE, which is the switch damping or the synchronized switch damping effect. We move now to the next resonant interfaces. We begin with the synchronized electrical charge extraction circuit, which is mainly preventing the synchronized switch damping effect, which I explained in the previous slide, and which is also the main problem or limitation of both serial SSHE and parallel SSHE circuits. And this effect is mainly caused by direct connections between the output load and the piezoelectric element during the whole vibration phase. So one limitation of this interface is the high energy consumption. And here one target application is health monitoring or also wearable electronics. To see the architecture here at the right side of the table, top right side of the table, it is simple. Yeah, to, to understand the working principle, it's actually when the piezoelectric harvester is generating the voltage, the switch S will be closed and the energy will be transferred to the inductor, stored in the inductor L. And then when the vibration stops, which means like um, the voltage across the piezoelectric elements goes to zero, the switch S will be immediately opened and the energy stored in the inductor will be transferred to the capacitor, to the storage capacitors via the diode. Okay, so here the magnetic energy accumulated in the inductor is conveyed I'm sorry. Uh, when I'm, Miriam, could you switch on again your microphone? Yeah. Electrical charge extraction techniques. So here, for both of them, the synchronized electrical charge extraction circuit and this double synchronized switch harvesting, we have we have the fact that the harvester power is almost independent of the connected load, and also we have for both of them the switches and the diodes are used to control the energy flowing in the circuit. 
We move now to the design and simulation of self-powered parallel synchronized switch harvesting on inductor interface. As seen in the picture here, it is mainly using the electronic breakers, name it also as complementary transistors topology. So we are actually via this interface automatically performing switching actions without providing any external power. And the working principle of the circuit as same as we explained it in previous slides, it relies on inverting the energy after the extraction process by controlling the switch S1 and the inductor L1. So the switch S1 will be controlled by sensing the maximum and minimum voltage of the piezoelectric element. It is named as envelope voltage detector, composed by the path through R3, D1, and C3. It actually detects the maximum and minimum voltage coming from the piezoelectric element. So here, when the voltage in the piezoelectric transducer decreases from its maximum value, the switch S1 will be closed and immediately inverting the voltage via the inductor. That's why the path through D2, the diode D2, Q2, and L1 name it as digital switch path. Okay, and then here, via this interface, we deliver it or we achieve it an output power of 1152 microwatts and an output voltage of 4.8 volt using some specific parameters in the input of the piezoelectric element. The parameters are from are based on uh, piezoelectric nanogenerators from our lab. And then we simulate the, the circuit based, based on this specification and those param these parameters. And also here we are using less energy consuming uh, the elements, components, to achieve this amount of power and this amount of voltage, which is enough to, to supply some, some wearables and some sensors. This is in terms of simulation only. Let's now investigate more switching techniques in the digital switch path. Here we are using transistors only. Let's investigate more switching techniques and compare them to be able to design more efficient interface and implement them with real piezoelectric transducers. Self-powered realization for synchronous switching circuits is frequently based on two types of switches either realized by bipolar junctions or switches realized by MOSFETs. So here the performance difference between both of them comes mainly from three aspects, the driven mechanism, the turning on threshold voltage, and the gate parasitic capacitance. In this table, we are investigating both of them. And here, based on this study, we can conclude that the preferred switching strategy is MOSFETs in our case. And why here? Because MOSFETs are voltage driven, have a voltage driven mechanism, which means you can just charge their gate once and then you have no more current draw. They will stay on, right? And then, well, comparing to the BGTs, they are current driven components, which means to keep them on, you need to have, you need to keep sourcing for MPN junction, for example, or you need to keep syncing for PMP junctions. And also this driven mechanism has an influence on the circuit itself. For example, for MOSFET, we have no requirement on the capacitor of the piezoelectric elements, but for BGTs, we have some minimum requirements. Also, the voltage driven mechanism of the MOSFETs, it can not highly affect the energy transfer efficiency, but for the BGT, it, it has an influence on the efficiency in the amplification region of the BGTs. In our work, we are mainly investigating three scenarios by varying the switching technique and the rectification block. First scenario is the circuit one displayed in the picture. Parallel SSHE with BGT based switching and a diet rectifier in the rectification stage. Second scenario is shown by circuit two, which is a parallel SSHE with BGT based switching and short key based diode rectifi rectifier.
The third scenario is to use a parallel SSHE with a MOSFET-based switching and a MOSFET-also-based rectification stage. So here, the circuit consists of mainly three parts, the triggering circuit, which will turn on and off the switch in the parallel SSHE circuit. Then we have the parallel SSHE block to extract the piezoelectric voltage and then flips the voltage. And finally, the negative voltage converter circuit, which is the rectification stage here, composed of a full bridge rectifier based on MOSFET, a semi-active one. And then it allows the inversion of the negative part of the voltage to be finally supplied to the load. If we go back to the previous slide, where we simulated the self-powered parallel SHE solution based on BGT-based switching, we found that we are including two main resistance, as seen in the picture here in red color. These resistance are providing a drop voltage into BGTs Q1 and Q4 to be able to detect leaving the maximum and minimum voltage respectively. However, the voltage drop across the diodes D1 and D6, the storage voltage in C3 and C4 are enough and sufficient to detect the envelope. So here we investigate the effect of removing, removing this resistance into the circuit on the power dissipation and on the switching efficiency. We here achieve achieved an increase of approximately 7% in efficiency while removing the, uh, the resistance, and we found a switching efficiency equal to 54.62%. In this slide, the effect of load resistance changes on the output power and the efficiency was examined. We investigated four main interfaces. The first one is BGT-based switch parallel SHE solution with a simple full-wave rectifier based on diodes. The second one is this, the same interface but with removed resistance, which are R1 and 2. The third one is BGT-based switch parallel SHE solution with the full-wave rectifier based on Schatzky diodes. And the final one is the MOSFET-based switching parallel SHE solution with an negative voltage converter. So here as shown in the figures, here we have the loading resistance, function of the output power and the loading resistance also, function of the efficiency. As a conclusion, we found that the parallel SHE solution efficiency is highly dependent on load variations. Also, the parallel SHE has better performance under low loading conditions. In summary, under low loading conditions, which mean less or equal than 1 mega ohm, the MOSFET based switch parallel SHE solution performs the best compared to the, all the other interfaces. And the high loading conditions, which are more than 1 mega ohm, BGT based switch parallel SHE solution with short key diode based rectifier performs the best compared to to all the other interfaces. In this slide, we are displaying the experimental setup used in our work. In the left side, we have a designed insole containing three piezoelectric transducers, which will be explained in the next slide. At the right side, we have the two proposed interface, the BGT-based switch parallel SHE solution with Schatzky diodes and the MOSFET-based switch parallel SHE solution with negative voltage converter designed on breadboards. We have also the shaker with the shaker control to provide the mechanical vibration to the circuits with a fixed frequency. And here also we have a voltage generator to test the performance of all the circuits, also with a fixed frequency and peak-to-peak -peak voltage. And then finally, we have the digital oscilloscope to display the output signals and here to, to be able to examine and determine the output performance of all the interfaces. Next is a comparative table of the different commercial piezoceramics. In this table, we are presenting different piezoelectric transducers. We are mentioning the type, the resonant frequency, the related capacitance, 
the relative resonant impedance, the maximum input voltage peak to peak, and finally the thickness. So this table is like a comparative study to be able to decide which one we will choose. And based on this investigation, we are choosing AB411 3B piezoelectric elements since it operates at the lowest frequency of all available in market piezoelectric transducers. We come now to the experimental results and discussion. So all the investigated and proposed circuits were tested and validated using a, using a signal generator, as seen here. We are displaying the performance evaluation of the circuit with a signal generator and under one mega ohm loading condition. And also the real implementation of the synchronized switch on inductor energy harvesting circuits were performance from the piezoelectric source to the load. So we, we make a real implementation of all the circuits from the source till the load. And here we are showing the performance, the output performance of the circuits. We conclude that there is a high accordance between simulation results and experimental results, as seen. And then for loads less than one mega ohm, the MOSFET-based switch parallel SHE solution interface with MOSFET-based rectification performs the best, and it delivers an output power of 28 microwatts and a 470 kilo ohm when running motion is applied to the insole. And for load higher than 1 mega ohm, the use of BGT based switch parallel SHE with Schottky diode interface <coughs> shows an enhanced performance over other solutions. And it achieves 86 microwatt and a 3 mega ohm resistance load when running motion is also applied. Finally, the proposed MOSFET based switching parallel SHE interface is a promising self-powered energy harvesting interface for flexible piezoelectric energy harvesting, low power applications, and delivers 14.5 microwatt of power and 3.8 volt when applying a normal human walking motion, which can be a sustainable power supply for wearable sensors. Here we are displaying an example of an application. We are lighting some LEDs with the human walking and the demonstration, the demonstration video will be shown in the next slide. Coming to the conclusions of our work, two power management solutions were designed and implemented based on different load conditions. The MOSFET based parallel SHE interface with MVC rectifier is suitable for small loads, and with the BGT based parallel SHE interface with full wave rectifier based on short key dives is suitable for large loads. A self powered insole was designed with three parallel piezoelectric ceramics of type AB411 3B to validate the performance and output power of the proposed solutions. The effect of load resistance change on the per cycle energy output was examined. Finally, the proposed MOSFET-based switching parallel SHE interface with MVC is a promising self-powered energy harvesting interface 
suitable for flexible piezoelectric energy harvesting, low power applications. It can deliver 14.5 microwatt of power and 3.8 volt when applying a normal human working motions. And we can also reach 28 or we reach it 28 microwatt and a 470 kilo ohm of load when a running motion is applying to the zone and we can reach more by having harder motions. So which is which can be a sustainable power supply for wearable sensors. The, pres <coughs> the presented work offers design insights and trade-offs for flexible piezoelectric generators, energy management circuits. Finally, here are some references of this work are presented. And thank you for your attention. Thank you, Miriam, for the presentation. Thank you. So, let's see if there is some questions from the audience. We are already off the off time, but yeah. Hopefully, if there is questions. I have one question uh, because uh, uh, the, the presentation was about this uh, switching effect and uh, the problem is that uh, if you have really uh, periodic, uh, you, you have periodic uh, <coughs> input uh, of vibration, so then, then it, is, uh, it is worth to apply such switching uh, method, but, uh, but is it, uh, what is the situation if you have stochastic excitation? Stochastic excitation. Uh, is it also possible to to apply such a, uh, such method, or maybe it is not uh, it is not a good solution? Yes, thank you for for the question. Actually, it's a good question. Maybe as a extension for the work, it it is like to to have to keep in mind this condition of vibration because for the moment we are like considering the human vibration and we are implementing the circuit for only human randomly vibrations. But I think to, to extend and to have more challenges and application for the circuits, we can like consider this effect of vibration. Yeah. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you. So, thank you again. I think uh, we can close the session right now here. So I would like to thank you all participants and the audience. Thank you, Sim. Thank you, Sonia. Thank you, all of the uh, all of your team. Now we start the next session. Is Indian group? Welcome, Pradeep. Are you here? Yeah, uh, I'll start. Okay. Now. Voice I'll is here. Thank you. Uh, so uh, we start with a keynote from uh, Professor Bisak Bhattacharya. Let me have a short introduction of uh, Professor Bisak Bhattacharya. Uh, professor is currently chair professor uh, at the Department of Mechanical Engineering at Indian Institute of Technology, Kanpur, India. He is also heading the Cognitive Science program at IIT Kanpur. He was visiting professor at University of Sheffield and IPS Basar University, Japan. His research interest includes vibration control, structural length monitoring, energy harvesting, robotics, and intelligent systems. He has developed various web courses at NPTEL. He has more than 80 publications, more than 25 research projects, and seven patents to his credit. So with this introduction, uh, I hand over the session to Professor Bisak Bhattacharya. Thank you. I will start my presentation. I hope that is visible. The title of my presentation is Energy Harvesting by Smart and Meta Materials Feasibility and Application Potential. Dear now, you, you should share your screen, please. Yes, please. There is the button uh, uh, where, you, where you see the camera, microphone, and next one is share, share screen. Uh, I have shared the screen through this. You can choose all of the, the desktop or some window. Oh, yes. Is it visible now? You waiting? 
now we see the, the desktop. Oh, thank you so much. So I hope that the presentation will now be visible. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And so the title of the talk is the energy harvesting by smart and meta materials. Uh, this is what our group is working for last 15 to 16 years. And we'll talk about the feasibility and application potential of some of the concepts due to the brevity of time. We'll consider some of the concepts here. Um, so my outline would be that I will focus on, first of all, feasibilities of energy harvesting from vibrations like vortex induced energy harvesting. And then I will talk about mechanical metamaterials, negative stiffness and mass metamaterials, piezo embedding of such metamaterials, band gap formation and energy harvesting from meta beams, topological metamaterials and energy harvesting from such systems, and some of the references that I have used in this one. Now, this is very, very well known to you that there are plenty of green energy resources around us among which there is of course the solar energy which is having the highest power density but the mechanical vibration and the airflow uh, related power density is also quite significant where these energy harvesting is possible from uh, water energy wind energy etc now our journey begins with some of our devices that we have developed our patents on green energy harvesting devices. So these are a group of uh, energy harvesting devices that we have developed in the smart materials laboratory for low power electronic systems. The key features of these systems are that they are in having three energy sources, that is the wind, the solar and the vibration. And uh, incidentally, you will find many energy harvesting devices where one or two of these concepts will be. But in this particular case, it's a unique uh, combination that the device consists of all the three modes of energy transformation. There is a solar cell to convert the solar energy, a micro turbine to convert the wind energy, and a piezoelectric device to convert the vibration energy to electricity. So the system in fact was uh, Power Pro was very popular among the students here at India Institute of Technology Kanpur. And you can see here the solar cell, the piezoelectric uh, vibration, uh, you know, energy harvester. And uh, of course we have the micro wind turbine. Now uh, the technical specifications uh, are that uh, the output is up to one watt for the wind turbine and the voltage it can generate is 2.5 to 3.5 volts. Solar is about 50 milliampere at 4.2 volts and open circuit voltage close to 5.9 volt. However, from the vibration, uh, maximum voltage out is 5 volt and by using a capacitor, a super capacitive circuit, uh, we can have a power output up to one watt. So that is the kind of a device that we have been able to develop. And what we felt while devising this particular system is that we need to definitely harvest larger amount of energy for, you know, not just for a single source uh, of uh, uh, energy output, but for a, a kind of a sensory network and things like that. And that brings us uh, to the picture, the flow induced vibration of structural and fluid coupling, which has a large power, we know something which can collapse even a breeze like Takuma Narrows Breeze, we know the example. And here the coupling can be between the structural and the piezoelectric material. The, for a vortex induced vibration, there will be three way coupling. One is the fluid, which can be air or the water, and the structure, and the structure, the passive structure, and the piezoelectric material. So all these three elements will be actually linked with each other. And through a macrofiber composite, it's like an MFC patch, 
one can actually link this and one can generate power from the system. Now you have uh, must have faced uh, the vortex induced vibration in many uh, cases where the flow actually faces a blood body and you can see the trail of permanent vortices which is a good source of vibration. There are different types of such flow induced vibrations like galloping, like weight galloping, turbulence induced vibrations. So the one that we have concentrated is the vortex induced vibration. Now in such vortex induced vibrations, there is a phenomenon of locking or synchronization where the variable force, lift force, uh, that the frequency of the excitation of that actually matches with the natural frequency of the uh, uh, blood body. So creating the synchronization. Now uh, in civil engineering, uh, there are many such examples of actually minimizing the harmful effect of such vortex induced vibration uh, by providing helical strikes uh, in chimneys or in mechanical applications for drill uh, risers, etc. But in this case, we want to actually harvest the energy. So a typical configuration is where we have a base beam and we have on top and bottom in a bimorph configuration piezoelectric materials and at the end we have a black body. So this kind of a situation we uh, have actually uh, generated. I will show you in the form of a small uh, laboratory demonstrations that when a flow is happening in the pipe and the blood body is stopping this, uh, creating the vortex trail and that is creating the vibration uh, in the system and that in turn is generating the mechanical transfer to electrical energy. And it is uh, there is this basic beam vibration equation, and then there is the axial force that is coming because of the hydrodynamic drag force and also there is this uh, end mass uh, that is the blood body which is uh, generating its own inertia force. So all these three things together are actually contributing to the governing equation of the system. And uh, if you look at the boundary condition for a cantilever beam condition, we have the deformation and the slope uh, zero at the fixed end. And at the free end, we have the bending moment in which there is a contribution of bending moment from uh, the moment generated by the blood body and uh, also the rotary moment of inertia and the shear force uh, that is uh, coming because of the lift force and because of uh, uh, a component of the uh, you know, force uh, that is coming into the system. So we have uh, the governing equations with all the boundary conditions available for us which can help us in terms of finding out through a modal analysis. This is the modal representation of the same equation and from a modal analysis we can actually find out the characteristic uh, you know, roots of the system uh, and then uh, through that we will be able to find out that what are the eigen frequencies and what are the eigen values of the system. So uh, all we need to do is that we need to solve uh, some certain, uh, you know, transcendental equations uh, in order to solve the boundary conditions totally and then we can get the characteristic equation and solve it for getting the modal frequencies and the uh, motion. And then we can use the energy formulation by first uh, obtaining the kinetic energy of the system which is kinetic energy of the beam, the kinetic energy of uh, the piezoelectric material uh, that is from the bimorph side and also because of uh, the body. Uh, so the kinetic energy of all these things together adds in 
and then the potential energy once again because of the beam and because of the piezoelectric material comes into picture and then we have uh, the internal electrical energy in this system because of the piezoelectric material where we have the electric field intensity and the electric displacement so we can integrate that and find out the internal electrical energy in the system so thus we have the kinetic energy the potential energy and the internal electrical energy in the system and finally the non conservative part of the work that means work done uh, by the lift force and then the work done by the uh, axial force then the charge dissipation and the damping in the system so all these things we can consider them under non conservative virtual work and we can insert the already known modal shapes and modal parameters into these expressions so that finally when we apply an extended hamilton principle we get the governing equation of motion and uh, we are going to get uh, three such equations which are highly coupled with each other so the first equation is related to the vibration of the base beam and the second equation is the electrical equation related uh, to the electrical field dynamics and the third equation is related to the fluid mechanics contribution in terms of the van der Waals oscillator so these three equations uh, together when we solve then we will be able to know about the response of the system and the voltage that it produces so some of the properties and parameters that we have considered the length the thickness and the density uh, of the piezoelectric material uh, which is essentially mfc as i told you uh, 2807p2 and which has a capacitance of about 15 nanofarad and the beam material it is considered to be polymethyl methacrylate and uh, the properties of the same and also the tip mass properties the length the diameter and mass which is about 30 g and the fluid property in this case is water so the fluid property of it the scaling parameter the van der Waals parameter and the other parameters along with this true hull number which we have considered around 0.2 so that uh, all these input values together and the governing equation will help us to find out the response of the system so here are some sample responses pre synchronization phase when the velocity uh, of the fluid is about 0.2 meter per second we see these uh, you know expected uh, sinusoidal variation of the lift coefficient and we will see that uh, during synchronization at 0.307 meter per second it slightly increases from its uh, value and again post synchronization it comes down now what is interesting is because of the uh, coupling this uh, gentle effect so to say of the lift force has an enormous effect during synchronization you can see that the displacement changes from 0.12 to about 1.2 mm so there is a 10 times shifting of the displacement and it uh, comes down a little bit but it still remains uh, higher than the pre synchronization period so that is what is the response of the system now uh, we, if we try to find out the voltage there also we see that there is a huge jump voltage from 0.3 volt to pre synchronization Uh, with an oscillatory system we get it up to 4 volt or higher about 5 volts or so uh, you know during the synchronization phase and at the end of synchronization during the post synchronization phase it will still be considerably higher than the pre synchronization phase if we look at uh, that what is this uh, Uh, velocity versus the uh, excited force and also the structural frequency we see the locking point here the two where it is actually crossing each other now the excitation uh, the maximum displacement of course is slightly higher uh, uh, and you know at is velocity is slightly higher than the velocity Uh, at which this uh, maximum tip displacement occurs that is slightly higher 
then the velocity at which the vortex shading frequency becomes equal to the natural frequency of the system. So slightly higher velocity, we will see that the uh, tip displacement uh, uh, is occurring uh, to the system. Now, if we vary the length of the beam, interestingly, we will see that as the length is increasing, the velocity at which the synchronization is occurring is going to decrease. Okay, we know that there is a direct linear relationship uh, between the excitation frequency and the velocity we have seen. So, uh, with the reduction, with, with the increase of length, this velocity is decreasing. And along with that, of course, the power generation is also decreasing with the increasing length. So, increasing length, even though it's reducing the frequency, but the power generation is decreasing due to the increasing length. So, one has to choose the length of the, uh, these beams properly in such cases. Now, with respect to the tip mass, again, with the increase in the tip mass, the velocity at which synchronization occurs, that will actually decrease. It will go towards the left hand side. And with increasing tip mass, the power generation also is decreasing. So, there has to be some kind of a um, nominal tip mass in the system, which is good, which is just good in terms of uh, developing enough voltage into the system. Now, with the increase of load resistance, on the other hand, what we see is that the velocity at which synchronization occurs, that does not get affected. That almost remains the same. You can see that it does not change. And with the increase in load resistance, the power generated is maximum at a certain range of resistance. So, there is a certain peak period where the power generation will be maximum. So, we can find out that what is the load resistance range where we are getting maximum power out of this situation, even though the velocity at which synchronization occurs will not change. With respect to the variation of the diameter of the tip mass, that is very interesting. One would see that with the increase in the diameter of the tip mass, the velocity at which synchronization occurs, that actually increases. And so there is a continuous shift. With increasing the diameter, the power generation first increases and then starts to decrease. So what it means is that there is clearly an optimal diameter of the tip mass system. Now, uh, there are some observations uh, that I will sum up from this, that power generated is highly dependent on the natural frequency of the system. It increases with increase in natural frequency of the system. Excitation of rigid systems is limited by the velocity of the flow. And it is better to find the parameters which tend to maximize the power for a given flow velocity. For a given flow velocity, we can always find many combinations of length, magnitude of mass at the tip, width of the beam, or diameter of tip mass for which the synchronization occurs. And that's where the, the real optimization comes into picture. By varying the resistance using a feedback control, maximum power can be extracted. And there is a plateau region that we have seen which can be exposed. By varying the diameter of the tip mass, also power output can be optimized. And we have seen that there is clearly a region where you get the maximum power. And beyond that, the diameter will increase. The power extraction will once again come down. And uh, interestingly, power generated in vortex induced vibration in water is comparatively less when, uh, comp uh, you know, compared to that in air. So, wind power, uh, you know, it's uh, much better in this way to harvest. Now, the second uh, point that I would like to attack is that is there something that can do? on the base beam in terms of uh, reducing the attenuation or the damping energy dissipation in the base beam so that we can get a much better extraction of energy. And that's where the concept of mechanical metamaterials plays a very important role. And as you all know that these metamaterials are engineered media with periodic units comprised of unique tailor-made geometry and pattern and that accomplishes exceptional 
and certain unusual physical properties like negative stiffness, negative mass, uh, negative portions ratio, etc. So, the, by the design of these mechanical beta materials, the periodicity uh, and the the unit uh, system, the structural design of the unit system, one can actually uh, design the bandwidth, for example, and uh, the transmission band and the power and the attenuation band effectively. So our motivation in this particular case is that one dimensional periodic chain of coupled mass spring system is known to be useful for modeling diverse physical systems. Okay, it, it has use in terms of phononics, composites, condensed matter physics, engineering mechanics, and certain aerospace structures. Now the beta material during attenuation, uh, you know, the energy cannot transmit along the chain. However, because the energy is not able to transmit, so there is a local resonance that is happening in the structure. That is the right place for us. And we can develop applications based on which we can actually extract the energy. So our idea here is that as the vibration is passing through a system, we would like to localize that vibration. We would like to you know, find out that how we can tune the band such that uh, from the uh, sort of transmission band, pass band, it should come into the uh, attenuation band. And the moment it is coming to the attenuation band, the, the periodic systems and the secondary structures will have the local resonance. And that local resonance has enormous impact in terms of energy. Say for example, here we have an example of a negative stiffness. And, uh, and, and also in the right hand side, we have an example of a negative mass. In the negative stiffness, we have seen that along with the main chain, we have these mechanisms here and the side chain secondary masses are attached to the system, which is somewhat similar or analogous like an array of Helmholtz resonator. In the negative mass system, we have uh, basically a kind of a silicon coated steel balls uh, which act as an internal resonating unit in a massive mass beta material in which the steel wall contributes to mass and silicon coating for stiffness of the system. Now, the concept of negative stiffness and mass in a beam is such that if you check this negative stiffness effect, if you find out the effective stiffness, you will see that it depends on the ratio of the springs, uh, the main uh, chain and uh, transverse uh, elements, the ratio and the L by D ratio and also these uh, frequency ratios. And you will see that at a particular frequency ratio, the stiffness actually behaves as if it is a negative stiffness. Similar thing you will see once you have a mass in mass system, that means you have an internal mass which is being attached to the system. You will see that at a particular critical frequency, the, the effective mass of the system will become negative. So that is the effective stiffness and the effective mass in a traditional beta material system. We can also extract these uh, in terms of integrating, coupling it with piezoelectric material. So this is where we have coupled it with the piezoelectric material. And once we do that, then we are going to have three equations in the system. The first equation related to the main period chain direction, the periodic elements, that's the first equation. The second equation for all these transverse masses. And the third equation, and then we also, of course, have the basic kinematics, uh, kinematic conditions, which relates the displacement uh, in the y direction and the x direction. And, the, and then the next fourth equation is the voltage equation, that is the, in the system. Uh, in which the piezoelectric materials coupling is actually uh, contributing to the voltage equation. Now, all these four equations together, we can actually uh, form the dispersion relationship with the help of the block formulation, which you are familiar with. I'm not going into the description of the block formulation uh, because of the brevity of time, but you can follow that uh, if you apply the block formulation on these equations, you get uh, the transcendental uh, equation. 
and from which you can actually uh, find out that what is the voltage that is generated in, uh, in, in one such unit uh, of a system. And uh, in such a system, then you will be able to analyze the bands and you will see that it has a transmission band, then a fast attenuation band, we call it LA1, then it has second transmission band, T2 and T1 and T2, and then a second attenuation band. So that is for a negative stiffness system. So for certain parameters here, you can see the bandedness that is present in the system. And uh, similarly, we can actually form formulate these negative mass uh, metamaterial, and they are also we will be getting the governing equations uh, uh, for the primary mass and then the secondary mass inside. And then because of the piezoelectric coupling present here, we can find out the voltage equation. And using all these three, along with the block formulation, we will get the dispersion relationship from which we can once again find out that what is the transmission bandwidth, attenuation bandwidth, second transmission and second attenuation bandwidth in the system. Now what one would see is that the top, or the top one is related to negative stiffness and the bottom one is related to negative mass. Now what one would see is that uh, the HA1, the higher attenuation region HA1, is almost constant with the increase in the primary mass in case of negative stiffness. But in case of the negative mass, which is slightly more big advantage here, that the HA1 is not at all constant, okay? It is actually significantly changing. So the width of the fast attenuation band is actually increasing due to the inclusion of the piezoelectric material. So that is a, a good part that there is a good energy harvesting capacity uh, in terms of uh, exploiting this attenuation band. I will now report some of the experiments that we have carried out in this direction. So uh, this is a laser Doppler vibrometer and we have the primary beam system and uh, you can see that how in the whole system with the help of Doppler vibrometer we can pick up the displacements and uh, we can see the secondary beams here uh, and the tip masses in the secondary beams. And if you compare the responses of the base beam versus the secondary beam, you will be able to see clearly the presence of the band gaps here, okay, at certain frequencies of around 500 hertz or so. Now, this is a system which is having actually 11 resonators in it, okay. So, that is the experimental band gap that we have observed in the system. Now, if we actually consider uh, double the mass versus uh, single mass element, uh, we can see that there is an appreciable change. So this is the band gap uh, in the system having 11 resonators, plus uniformly with tip mass of 2M. And this is the band gap we can see uh, a much uh, wider range of band gaps uh, for uh, these, uh, you know, tip mass of N and but it's 20 resonators placed uniformly in the system. So this is experimentally observed band gap in the system. And uh, this is the response uh, uh, of the secondary and the primary system. And we can see that there is more amplitude in the band gap that is observed uh, in the secondary beam. So, Wherever we have the attenuation band in the primary beam system, we have excitation of the secondary beam. And that's the spot that we aim to use in terms of energy harvesting. So we have uh, applied here the MFC, uh, you know, macrofiber composite. And uh, with this system, we have excited the system with the base excitation, as you can see. And at the 11th uh, location, we have applied the, uh, this particular thing and uh, we can see that at about 796 hertz, there is an ext extraction of about uh, 0.216, nearly about 216 microvolt. That is possible at location 6 with 11 resonators. So by uh, suitably changing the position, 
we can then actually find out that where we are extracting maximum voltage out of the system. Now, I will show you one interesting applications uh, in the similar direction in which we have used a different meta material. We have our own lattice here, which is based on a hour class structure. And this hour class structure can have three different types of lattice system. One is homogeneous, fully homogeneous. Another is a honeycomb, uh, you know, uh, lattice structure. Uh, in a single unit and another is offsetting. Now we can place the, that in this uh, topological uh, condition and this is the point where there is a breaking symmetry and if we apply this topological condition in a way that we have the same stiffness spring K1 then K2 and repeated K1 and again this way it is repeated K1 alternate we can see that in this, uh, you know, attenuation band, we can clearly see that there is one possible area where there is a very large response in the system. And by applying a secondary beam here, we can actually extract a lot of energy from the primary system. So that is something that we can generate in a topological metamaterial. And by varying a parameter called gamma in the structural parameter, we can essentially change the stiffness of the structure and it has two extremes the gamma value about minus one is a fully oxidic gamma value plus one is a fully honeycomb structure so between fully honeycomb and fully oxidic we can actually see what is the nature of this position of uh, this particular peak inside the attenuation band you can, you can see that this is for a fully uh, in the honeycomb structure, perfectly symmetric and a large excitation, uh, nearly about you know four orders of magnitude higher, sitting inside the attenuation band. And if you go for fully oxidic, you can actually shift it from that symmetrical location. By varying this parameter, you can shift it at different locations. So this is where you can essentially tune uh, this position of it, and accordingly you can actually extract the energy in the system. So this is corresponding to a fully oxidic case. And you can see here that what is the extraction of the voltage from the FRF that by using piezoelectric material around 187 and, and 1 kilo hertz, 1171 hertz, you are getting two peaks where you will be able to extract the voltage of the order of about 0.5 volt for the past case and about uh, 0.06 uh, 07 volt in the second frequency maximum uh, voltage and the power in the low frequency so uh, this uh, you know the interface mode can thus be used in terms of the maximum energy exploitation from the system now another concept i will just give you the concept here today uh, because of the paucity of time is that uh, you can actually create a voltage programmable honeycomb structure uh, so that you can control the shape of the beam and thus you can control the natural frequency and then you can actually harvest the energy at different frequency level. This is still at conceptual level and we have not actually experimented on this system. So the general observations from my talk is that Vortex induced vibration is an alternate source of green energy generation indeed, which is suitable for a wide velocity range and can be used both in air and water, although in air it is having better performance. And uh, the another thing is that this performance can be enhanced with the application of metamaterial concept by suitably create, creating the transmission bands. And the transmission band also can be controlled through the topological uh, pattern of the meta -meter. Another option for controlling the transmission band is to programmable honeycomb structure, which needs to be further explored. In future, our work will be directed towards experimental validation of this concept. Also, we will investigate the energy harvesting at a micro scale level for memes. For example, energy harvesting from the human body, blood flows, etc., so that certain sensors can be powered through this. So, this is where. I will end my talk and these are some of the references based on which uh, this current uh, talk has been constructed uh, from our different papers where we have published the ideas. 
and thank you very much and i can take up questions thank you any questions from audience Uh, yes, yeah, I, I have a question um, related to the to these meta materials um, uh, because in uh, in fact uh, what you presented it is probably linear system and uh, have you thought about some nonlinear properties? Which oh could yes, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, one of the system that I have talked about uh, is highly nonlinear. That is this system, this hourglass ah, structure. System. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. I have one question, Pradeep. Can I go for? Yes, please. Uh, Professor, you said that uh, in the last few slides that between two plates you can have meta materials that can adapt. You know, the frequencies can be adapted. Yes. Right? So for adapting, you need to provide some uh, external source of energy. Right? Yeah, here. Right. Um, so uh, has there? You know, have you tried to do some? Uh, audit on the energy side means how much you can get and how much in energy will be needed to adapt their frequencies. That's precisely the point. Yes. No, we have not carried out the experiment still, but the energy audit has to be done on this. Okay. I have tried it in a different context. I have not discussed here. I, instead of using a voltage programmable piezoelectric material, I have used shape memory alloy. Value. And there yeah. I have seen a very good uh, energy balance is possible. So you can basically, you know, you are applying these change for a long time. You just change the shape and lock it so that you are not constantly applying energy. OK, so it's kind of energy input at once. That's all. Yes, yes. It's kind of switching at different configurations and uh, so that you can keep yourself tuned with the ambient uh, excitation. Great. OK, thank you. Sir. OK. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, any questions? Any, any more questions? Okay, then. Uh, so I, I'd like to thank uh, Professor Bizak Bhattacharya for his presentation. It was uh, very informative. So we'll go for uh, next session. I think uh, Professor Ali will go uh, take over from here. Thank you very much, Professor Bhattacharya. Thanks, Pradeep. Thank you, Professor Vishak. Uh, our next presentation is a student presentation by uh, Mr. Ravindra Kondaguli. Ravindra, are you ready? Uh, Ravindra? So by the time he take up, you know, his presentation is on geometric design and performance optimization of thermoelectric generator. He is uh, working as a research scholar in... Uh, I, am I B audible, sir? Yes, you are audible. So he is a PhD from BLDA ESET Bijapur, India, where Pradeep is also working. And he did it masters from Visvasira Technological University. Let us hear uh, to him. So Ravindra, you can take over. Okay, sir. I am oh I have one net one second. I want to connect this. Uh Am I audible, sir? Yeah, you, you yes, Ravindra, you're audible. Can you share your slides? Okay, I will share my slides. I am Ravinder Kundgule. Uh, I will be giving a presentation on design and performance evaluation of thermoelectric generator. Uh, 
uh, a thermoelectric generator is a solid state device that converts heat into electricity directly uh, if we take electricity uh, about 90% of the electricity in the world is produced by the heat and heat is a low grade energy about 60% of the heat that is utilized will be lost in the form of waste heat means about 60% of the heat is lost in the form of waste heat in the different form like in the thermal power plant nuclear power plant or vehicles or a factory and uh, it can be directly converted to electricity by using thermoelectric generator a thermoelectric generator is a solid state device that converts heat into electricity directly it has no moving parts it is silent in operation it is environmental friendly and no maintenance it basically operates on a seaback coefficient it is it can be utilized in automotive exhaust in industries and in power plant but the pro problem with the thermoelectric generator is it is very less efficient a thermoelectric generator will be like this uh, there will be a semiconductor p and n type of semiconductors will be there as heat flows from hot side to cold side it carries electrons along with it due to that electricity is produced the maximum amount of electricity that can be produced by it can be uh, get from the uh, uh, carnot efficiency or carzon alborn efficiency carnot efficiency gives when it is a reversible cycle all the processes are reversible but we can take carzon alborn efficiency to get the maximum amount of electricity that can be produced from the thermoelectric generator and a parameter called as figure of merit ZT or figure of merit uh, which gives us a sense of how good the thermoelectric material is suppose if the figure of merit is uh, if the figure of merit is high then it is a good thermoelectric generator and if uh, a figure of merit is low it is a uh, not a good thermoelectric material actually a thermoelectric uh, generator should have good electrical conductivity but it should have low thermal conductivity but all the good uh, electrical conductical material are good thermal conducting material also therefore the materials are being engineered to reduce the electro uh, lattice part of thermal conductivity the practically now the available today ZT or the figure of merit of the presently available thermoelectric material is about 0 0.7 if it is reached to 4 then we can replace or 4 or uh, about 5 we can replace the present Rankine cycle or whatever the cycles it can be replaced by the uh, at that positions but if the ZT of the thermoelectric material reaches infinity then it will reach the Carnot cycle. Uh, these, are, these are the equations uh, that are utilized in a thermoelectric generator. Mainly a thermoelectric generator, if we take three types of heat will be there. One is Fourier heat, that is conduction heat. It transfers from high temperature to low temperature. Second one is Peltier heat. It, uh, it is due to the uh, effect Peltier effect heat will transfer from uh, one side to other side third part is due to the ohmic resistance Joule heat is produced that is dissipated on the both side and we can calculate the electrical power as I square RL and these are the equations that can be utilized in the thermal equation. my present talk is about uh, actually it is about simulating a thermoelectric generator using effective material properties and these are the highlights of my talk and performance evaluation of it and doing a performance evaluation of it that is uh, doing uh, calculating the power produced and uh, simulating a unicouple means uh, 
a single p n junction thermoelectric generator and study the effect of cross section area hot side temperature effect of leg length and other things uh, effective material if we take a thermoelectric module commercial thermoelectric module actually uh, the manufacturer will not produce give the they will provide some parameter maximum pra parameters but they will not provide the material properties because they they will not provide what is the exact material inside that but by some formulas we can calculate its effective material property actually effective material property includes the material property of the p type n type the contact resistance and all the uh, all the factors it includes by using this formula we can calculate uh, these transport coefficients like seebeck coefficient and uh, uh, these are the thermal conductivity we can calculate figure of merit we can calculate electrical resistivity also and if we take thermo dynamic analysis of a thermoelectric generator if heat enters heat enters it will be of three parts that is one is uh, ohmic heat ohmic heat will uh, move away from both side one is the conduction heat second one is the peltier heat and the q out here it gives the heat that is dissipated uh, or heat that is moving from the cold side and the difference between the heat entering minus heat leaving will give the power produced and open circuit voltage can be calculated and here the maximum power that is produced by the thermoelectric generator will be at a condition when the load resistance is equal to internal resistance that is when the electrical impedance matching takes place but maximum efficiency of the thermoelectric generator will be at a different uh, point that is when uh, m that is the ratio of load resistance to the internal resistance is equal to square root of 1 plus z tm these are the effective material properties that are the properties of the thermoelectric module which have been taken and it that has been simulated these are we have uh, taken from the uh, literature and we have simulated this is a actual commercial thermoelectric module which we have simulated in a commercially available software using those uh, using those effective material properties actually this is a uh, there will be if we take a thermoelectric generator it will be having uh, several legs several p and n type of semiconductors connected by metal electrodes and sandwiched in between ceramic substrate and we have this is the thermoelectric module with load resistance which has been designed and this is a model of the thermoelectric generator that we have developed in ansys with the same dimensions and this is a 97 pair pn pair 97 pn pair thermoelectric generator this is a commercially available thermoelectric generator we have modeled and this is a thermal actually if we take all the commercially available thermoelectric generator they are square shaped we want to optimize the dimensions therefore we we converted that shape of uh, we changed that into circular and we analyzed what is the power produced by that thermoelectric generator this is with the simulation of a high jet thermoelectric generator high jet two thermoelectric generator it is a commercially available thermoelectric generator and right side is uh, we have shaped with the same cross section we have kept the same cross section area of the leg and we have calculated and we have cal cal simulated the results using effective material properties and we compared our simulation results and uh, the results of uh, analytical solution with the experimental uh, results which are available in the literature and we got from this graph we can see we have got they are almost comparable they are comparable and uh, this graph shows power versus current and uh, power versus current it shows uh, parabolic and uh, power versus it is linear now this is a comparison of square 
legged square legged thermoelectric generator and circular legged gen thermoelectric generator with the uh, available commercial commercially available thermoelectric generator is square shaped we have compared uh, square circular and uh, hydrated whatever the commercially available thermoelectric generator we uh, here we go what we got is if we change the shape from the square to circular change it to the shape from the square to circular we got more power at the larger load resistance we got more power at the larger load resistance further we simulated a single actually if we take a thermoelectric generator it will be having more number of uh, thermoelectric pn pairs we we made only one pn pairs and we changed its shape this is a commercially available square shaped thermoelectric generator we changed its shape to circular we made it pyramid up and we made it cone also and we tried other shapes also like this one uh, uh, one p type of uh, semiconductor as larger and n as smaller and we also made a hole in uh, a hole in the thermoelectric generator so that we can maintain the it is this whole type of a square thermoelectric generator is easier uh, it will be useful to maintain the temperatures on the both side because the heat transfer will reduce and these are the different shapes we have studied and this is a cascaded thermoelectric generator one uh, these are the difference for a unicouple or single pn pair thermoelectric generator we have simulated and these are the results of power versus load resistance from this we have kept here we have kept the cross section area constant we got if we change the cross section area from square to circular there is no change in the power produced the power produced remains same but uh, if we change it to other shaped the power produced has decreased the power produced has decreased and we have calculated efficiency also we have plotted a graph of efficiency versus load resistance efficiency versus load resistance we have plotted here we got more efficiency for a trapezoid shaped thermoelectric generator compared to the square or circular shaped thermoelectric generator though the power produced is less but its conversion efficiency conversion efficiency we calculate what is the power produced by the what is the amount of heat that is supplied that conversion efficiency of a trapezoid shaped thermoelectric generator is more and we have calculated we have did one more analysis we changed cone up or cone down and pyramid up and pyramid down then there is uh, no uh, change in the power produced and we have calculated uh, a cone up type of a thermoelectric generator whose uh, one with top surface of 0.6 mm another with top surface of 0.8 mm as the cross section top surf, uh, top surface cross section increases the power produced has increased the power produce, produced has increases means it is uh, directly proportional cross section area and uh, we have discussed we have studied also leg length as the leg length of the thermoelectric generator decreases the power produced has increased but uh, it is difficult to maintain temperature difference for a small leg length that is one of the constraint here and this is the thermal stress analysis for circular pyramid and square shaped what we got is uh, for a circular shaped thermoelectric generator maximum one mass stress developed is less compared to the square or pyramid square is having more highest one mass stress compared to others and we did analysis of the effect of hot junction temperature that is hot side temperature and cold side temperature we kept a constant temperature difference of 630 degrees celsius we varied the cold side temperature if we varied the cold side temperature there was a lot of uh, there was a change in 
power produced is more means cold junction temperature is having uh, more effect on the it will produce more effect on the performance of the thermoelectric generator compared to the hot side temperature or sink sink temperature is having more effect on the performance compared to the source temperature yeah, that we have got and this is a grid independence test for the answers we have <coughs> done the analysis after certain number of elements that we have created uh, there is no change in the power output means the results have almost remained same after certain number of elements that has been powered produced okay uh, these are the some references which i have referred thank you sir thank you any, any questions thanks ravindra uh, is there any question from the audience so i don't see any question coming from the audience um i have a small question ravindra okay so you have tested all this different kind of uh, you know geometrical cross sections right yes sir uh, so all these studies were experimental or only numerical uh, these are uh, uh, simulation in co uh, commercial software answers as well as i have compared the results with uh, uh, some of the is not all the results some results i have compared with the uh, experimental data which is available in the literature okay and you wh what did you keep constant there you have kept constant the area for all of them same uh for square and circular i kept the area same cross section area same okay for squ square and circular i kept the cross section area same sir but for pyramid and cone i kept only bottom cross section area same because okay. they were varying therefore i could not keep all i kept only bottom cross section okay okay right thank you so thank is, you. is there any more question from the audience side Okay, if there are no questions, I will request uh, Srimanth to you know, take over. Thank you, Ravindra. Thank you for the talk. Thank you, sir. Uh, Srimanth, are you there? Uh, am I audible, sir? Yes, you are audible. Uh, Ravindra, if you can unshare yes. your slides. Yeah. Ah, sir. Okay, Srimanth. Applied Mechanics Department of Indian Institute of Technology, Madras. He did a master from the same university. He is going to give his talk on enhanced energy using time delay feedback control of pi stable systems. So, Simanto, you can start. Is my screen visible? Yes, Simanto, go to the first slide. In the yeah. oh. so I am uh, I am Simantalal De and I am a PhD scholar in Applied Mechanics Department in IIT Madras. Uh, I I would like to thank everybody for giving me the chance to present my topic of research. Today I will present enhanced energy harvesting from bistable structure. Uh, after applying delayed feedback control to it. My contents of the slide will be as follows. First, I will try to motivate the problem. Then I will uh, represent the analysis of the system plus controller setup. Then I will demonstrate, I will show the harvested power, uh, enhancement of the harvested power with change in control parameter, then, it, then I will conclude this um, presentation. So in remote application of the sensor, a major problem is to replace the batteries. So modern electronic sensor needs very low power to operate. So if so scientists try to harvest ambient vibration, to convert the vibrational energy into the electrical energy and power the sensors. 
here we have used piezoelectric material to generate voltage from the bending strain of a beam. So this system is previously used for energy harvesting in the chaotic and different periodic region. The figure one gives the system setup and it is a cantilever inverted cantilever beam which is loaded with a tip mass and the vibration is given uh, excitation is given by base vibration and it is harmonic vibration if we see figure 2 figure 2 gives two e static equilibrium position of the of the beam so here when the tip mass is low when the tip mass is low the uh, beam remain vertical and there is only one equilibrium position but when the tip mass is increased the beam buckles it can buckle either to the left or to the right and ultimately the, that single equilibrium position bifurcates into the two equilibrium and under vibration the beam can vibrate about one of the two equilibrium position but if the base excitation is increased further it may happen the beam is vibrating spanning both the equilibrium point and sometimes it also happens this this vibration as you see, see in figure 3 switches between small vibration a small amplitude vibration and large amplitude vibration uh, and this switching is random and system behaves chaotically in the figure 4 in the bifurcation is a bifurcation diagram of the system attractor with change in tip mass. We see for a large amount for a large amount of uh, region the system behaves chaotically. From this study it is also found that uh, energy is harvested is higher when the amplitude of the vibration is higher that is the beam is vibrating in the bo both the equilibrium position than only the single one. So we want to design a chaotic controller because we know inside inside chaotic attractor there lies infinitely many uh, unstable periodic orbits. And if we can stabilize the controller inside these periodic orbits of higher amp for of large amplitude, then we can consistently hire more energy from it. Uh, previously, a, a, a discrete type controller, OGI controller, is has been used in this in the similar system to uh, gain the same objective. Here we have used a a continuous control which has been developed by Pyragas it, and this this control apply uh, apply feedback signal to stabilize the system inside selected unstable periodic orbits lie, lied inside chaotic attractors. If we see the uh, equation one there is two term one is k that is controller gain and another term in the in the bracket gives the difference between the current state and a delayed state up when the system stabilized in orbit of time period tau this difference between the current state and the delayed state becomes zero and the control signal becomes zero but when this is not so, uh, this control signal is non-zero and system uh, and the controller try to perturb the system towards the periodic orbit. Here, k is the adjustable parameter that need to be determined. Also, tau also need to be determined for successful control application. For our investigation in the simulation, we have taken the parameters of the system from the table one block two gives the dynamical equation of the of the system plus controller setup and we can see we have applied the control only on the displacement portion of the equation 
the excitation is given the base excitation is given with time period of 2 second and excitation amplitude is taken as 16 mm so we are interested in interested in calculating calculating two quantity one is dt this this dt gives di difference between current state and the delayed state and if the or if the system gets stabilized in a tau periodic orbit then the dt becomes zero for all t and we are also interested in finding out this variance of dt if the variance of is dt is zero then the system must must have been stabilized in in a tau periodic orbit so to find out the optimum value of tau uh, we study figure 1 and 2 in the figure 1 we have plotted variance of dt with different values of tau we find and we have done it for uh, multiple controller gain we we see when the control gain is low the system does not get stabilized in for any value of tau but when the control gain is high the system when the control gain is above some threshold value the system gets stabilized in the second figure we have done the same but in this case we have taken the control gain k as 1 and we have done this for nine different initial condition we see for this control gain at the at point 2 second for in the both cases all the initial conditions get stabilized for this reason we have taken this 2 second as the controller delay time simanto can i request you to be quick okay sir so hmm. in the figure 1 and figure 2 uh, we have studied the different regions of periodicity occurs if we take controller delay as tau and we vary k in the range 0 to 0.6 first diagram is variance versus k and the second diagram gives bifurcation of the system attractor with change in parameter k we see that the total total regions are divided into eight broad region the first region gives chaotic behavior second region from a1 to a2 the system behaves in a multiple large periodic orbit from a2 to a3 it's to, it's 12 periodic orbit and from a3 to a4 it's six periodic orbit of uh, six periodic orbit and in this way uh, with change in k different periodic and multi stable behavior has been observed and and these behaviors are recorded uh, in the in this figure 1 to 9 here first four figure 1 2 3 4 shows the large amplitude vibration and the last four figure are for small small amplitude vibration and there is special case point p1 where chaotic uh, attractor suddenly suddenly turns periodic and it is very dependent on initial condition uh, this situation amplitude is the highest and we we expect the power harvested is to be har to be highest from this situation this in this plot we have shown the power harvested at different values of k we see in the chaotic region that is from 0 to a1 the power harvested is average and it varies uh, parabolically in the region a1 to a2 system exhibit large amplitude vibration and in this region power harvested increases linearly and after that the system gets trapped into single potential oil and the power harvested is much lower and we also find a point that point here written as max at this point amplitude is significantly higher and the power harvested is much more than the average scen scenarios but it, it is very difficult to control the system in at this point to conclude my uh, uh, my presentation i would like to say that we have seen by taking different control parameters different dynamical behavior can be created uh, can be created 
we we have found a ranges of k at which we can increase we can har consistently harvest higher uh, higher energy by generating a large amplitude periodic vibration we also found a special case where the chaotic uh, chaotic attractor suddenly turns periodic and and the vibration amplitude is much higher in this case um, power harvested is much more um, as a future scope of this current work we want to study multiple connected connecting multiple such beams in a array and using controller uh, if there is possible to gain any uh, gain in harvested energy and to generate generate the different kind of dynamics these are the some references thank you thank you simanto uh, is there any question from the audience Yes, I, I just want to ask one question, uh, which could be related to the to the chaotic uh, um, solutions, um, because uh, uh, sometimes chaotic solutions are not so bad. Um, if you uh, if we look to the one of the uh, last figure, um, you you presented yeah no 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 the, the previous one yeah it's a previous one uh, with a. Uh, but uh, oh, oh, okay. slide number eleven, Simanto. Uh, I, I mean that uh, the solution here, yeah, power, uh, because um, uh, you know uh, the problem is that we have multiple solutions in the system, and uh, uh, maybe a chaotic solution is not the worst um, of the, uh, of, of them. Uh, so so uh, sometimes it is important to switch between uh, two periodic solutions, uh, or uh, maybe. Uh, we can, uh, but but what, what do you think about this uh, the switching between two, um, uh, controlling the, the periodic solution which has more uh, larger or, or maybe larger amplitude? Yeah. So if we have two solutions, periodic solutions, but we want to choose the, the other one, how we we can switch uh, this uh, response? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Have you so, studied this? Uh, this effect? Yes. So here, this figure is with controller gain K. Uh, and for different controller gain K, the power is plotted. So if we keep the controller gain in the range of A1 to A2, the system will behave in a large periodic manner. If we increase the controller gain further, then it will the system dynamics will be trapped into single potential oil. And if we decrease in decrease it lower than A1, then the system behavior will be chaotic. So chaotic in chaotic region, energy harvesting is sometimes very high, sometimes average. Uh, but it is not consistently higher as we, we do not know how, how the behavior will be with time. But for large amplitude behavior, it is consistently higher, so it is favorable to control, take the con. Uh, okay, okay, thank you very much. Uh, so so this, this, there, there is another question, uh, but it could be related to some, uh, <clears throat> some more extended uh, electronics, um, because uh, uh, some previous uh, speakers from Germany, they, they, mm, uh, they talk about this synchronized switch, uh, synchronized switch, and uh, I, in, in my opinion, synchronized switch is, is working if we have a periodic uh, response. Uh, so, so the problem could be that uh, we, uh, we stabilize uh, periodic, uh, periodic uh, solution just to apply uh, synchronized switch, but but I, I'm not sure if it is a good combination. Uh, so uh, it could be that uh, uh, that chaotic uh, mm, uh, response is not suitable to use a synchronized switch. Uh, and then uh, if we have a system which is stabilized, uh, we uh, and we have periodic. A solution. Then we can increase the power by synchronize uh, switch uh, method. Yeah, but this is my my speculation. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's a good yes. suggestion, Professor uh, Litak. Uh, uh, since time is less, we will go to the next speaker uh, with your permission. Okay. Uh, okay, so, thank you. Thank you, you Simonto. Uh, Ms. Rajanya, can you please uh, uh, start your presentation? Simonto, you have to on share your presentation. Okay. Yeah, so Rajan is an integrated PhD, so it's a dual master's and PhD scholar in our department, Applied Mechanics. Uh, she is working with fluid structure interactions and energy harvesting. So her presentation will be on dynamic analysis of FSI based harvesters. Hello everyone. Uh, thank you, Professor, for the introduction. I work with Professor Sain Gupta and Professor Sunitra Sarkar from Applied Mechanics Department and Aerospace Engineering Department of IIT Madras India itself. Um, so today my talk is on dynamic analysis of an FSI or fluid structure interaction based energy harvester. And uh, I think it is uh, quite evident from my uh, title slide that uh, this work is uh, kind of somewhat motivated from the propulsion ability or the propulsive strategy of the fish movement or the fish motion. In my next few slides, I'll go through the motivation for a bit and uh, then I'll uh, go through my solver part and uh, then I'll present some of my results. So as for motivation, uh, I'd like to draw your attention to the uh, propulsive ability of fishes that I mentioned just earlier. And fishes are considered to be uh, some incredible swimmers. They swim through a viscous fluid uh, water which is far more viscous than the fluid that we live in, which is air. So the viscous friction that they have to endure, the fluid disturbance that they have to endure in form of uh, ocean waves or uh, vertical structures, whenever the fish is in vicinity of some other obstruction, it may be uh, some kind of a coral reef like the one I have shown in this picture, or it can be another fish itself, whenever the fishes are moving in a kind of school formation or in a flock, uh, in other words. So the upstream fish will always generate some kind of um, vertical, disturb uh, vertical disturbance, which will impart on the uh, downstream fishes. Uh, so all these disturbances uh, are expected to uh, harm the fish's uh, propulsion, uh, propulsive ability. And uh, yet the fishes are seen to undergo long uh, duration as well as long distance troubles. Uh, uh, like, uh, which has which has sparked a lot of interest between uh, among uh, various uh, kinds of researchers like from the biological community as well as the mechanical engineering community or the robotics community and even the energy harvesting community like ourselves so this uh, video i have presented from mit lab which uh, is basically a self activated bio robot that they have uh, they they had uh, developed from a Fish mimetic, uh, fish mimicking idea, and uh, there has been lots of researches on uh, parts of fish bodies, the fish fin structures, the fish tails, and uh, etc. And uh, it was concluded that the thing that I just told earlier, the flow disturbances that are expected to disturb the fish movement, the fishes are actually uh, designed in such a way, their body flexibility is designed in such a way that they can synchronize their body movement with the oncoming vertical flow with the oncoming flow disturbance so as to decrease the muscle uh, actuation that they need in order to propel through. So basically, in other words, the fishes are actually expert in exploiting the flow energy that is already present in the are able to convert the flow energy to a mechanical uh, energy of their own uh, strain energy in their own body as the vibration energy harvesting perspective we already know that the strain energy can be converted to electrical energy like from the previous all the previous talks so this uh, gives us uh, motivates our idea to uh, develop a fish inspired uh, vibration energy harvester basically the fish body being modeled as a cantilever beam or a plate uh, flexible one of course um, and which is patched with a piezoelectric uh, material or layered with a piezoelectric material in unimorph or bimorph uh, uh, formation. But uh, here comes the main uh, motive, main motive, extra motivation that is like uh, 
like the ones uh, that was presented just before by Srimanto, that uh, these piezoelectric materials or the piezoelectric beams, they need some kind of input actuation, some kind of base actuation in order to vibrate. And from that, we will uh, generate some kind of energy, some kind of voltage, and we will see what is the efficiency, etc. Now, what if uh, these fishes who are already um, ex uh, they are already experiencing some kind of uh, fluid loading? So this should act as a passive loading where we don't need to give any kind of extra input actuation to it. So you, from this passive vibration, there should be some kind of voltage generation. Um, we don't know at how small scale or high scale that could be, but that is the basic idea of this work. Uh, so this is the model that uh, I just talked about, our numerical model. And uh, this green part is nothing but the uh, piezoelectric material that I uh, was talking about. And the blue lines are the uh, upstream velocity of the uh, fluid that it is exposed to. It can be in a wind tunnel or water tunnel. Or in a physical perspective, it can be just nature, natural waves or something. So this is the uh, equivalent of that uh, model, which was done. This study was done in our uh, group in DML lab. Uh, so this is a piezoelectric beam, and uh, which is exposed to a uh, wind tunnel, uh, wind vibration. And we can see that these uh, so basically interact with this beam to deform it. And depending on the parametric condition of the beam and the surrounding fluid, there will be some kind of vortex generations which will lead the beam to either die down in its uh, uh, deformation, uh, die down its displacement, and or the displacement can go to some certain kind of LTOs and uh, form some kind of uh, sustained oscillation, which we call flutter. So these are, this is the particular parametric regime that we are interested in, the sustained oscillation case, where we can get sustained uh, voltage from, the, uh, from this kind of models. And for this perspective, you can uh, see that uh, we need three different solvers. One is a fluid, one is solid, and one is energy harness, uh, energy solver. So this is our overall solver outline, where there is a fluid structure interaction solver. There is one flow solver and a solid solver, which exchanges the uh, F fluid, which is basically the uh, forcing that is generated by these cortical structures, as well as the surrounding fluid. And uh, the solid solver gives out the uh, deformation profile of the solid in the next iteration, in next time step to the fluid solver. However, before going marching on to the next time step, this energy solver is then coupled with the solid solver. And as usual, from the solid solver, we take in the strain and give to the solid solver the voltage, which adds on to the solid solver as an end moment. Um, so these three are the main equations that are uh, used uh, in our solvers to uh, simulate all the results. The first one is, of course, the navier stokes equation. The second one is uh, the euler bernoulli beam equation, where you can see the inertia term and the uh, thickness term with an extra tension term, which is added for to satisfy the inextensibility condition, so that for higher vibration, the uh, x direction deformation is not ignored. And uh, this, this term is uh, basically the end moment that is generated from the voltage. And the voltage is generated from uh, the strain rate when uh, added with certain uh, resistance to the circuit. So this uh, solid and uh, piezo uh, coupled solver, the two-way coupled solver is first validated with uh, Ertut and Inman's uh, paper. Uh, yeah, so because of the end moment, the uh, boundary condition changes here. And uh, next uh, part is the fluid solver. The fluid solver is then, uh, uh, the first part is the general navier stokes equation, as you can see. And uh, it has been disputized by uh, inverse boundary method and solved by inverse boundary method, which has been developed by Majumdar et al. You can find all the details of the solver in uh, Majumdar's paper. And uh, to be uh, to uh, tell briefly, this F is the uh, momentum forcing term that is needed uh, to satisfy the boundary condition near the inverse boundary method. Since the immersed boundary cannot differentiate between the solid and the fluid uh, meshes unless it, uh, we tell it to do so, since it is uh, it, uh, it is not conformed to the geometry of the solid. And uh, the Q is the sourcing term that will eventually need because of the uh, momentum forcing term to satisfy the uh, continuity equation in the solid. So uh, this is the fluid equation now. 
which has been coupled with the structural part already that exercise validation i have not shown since it is already present in the other papers this fluid solver and the uh, FSI solver and the structure piezo equation solver that we have developed has been coupled together to form our three-way coupled fluid structure in NC equation solver. And uh, this is the validation of that. Uh, we have so shown the uh, displacement validation as well as the voltage validation with two different existing literature. So I'll move on to my results part. Uh, so this is the uh, so first, we have varied our uh, stiffness uh, to, uh, to identify the regimes where it goes on to the gutter condition. And for gamma equals 20 power minus 1 and above, we saw that our uh, our uh, response died down, which is obviously not useful for voltage uh, generation. And for 20 power minus 3 and below, we saw that the deformation was too high and very unphysical uh, for the piezoelectric health, of course. So we discarded that part of value also. And for 10 to the power minus 2 around, we, uh, for 10 to the power minus 2 only, we have varied our mass ratio next. That is our inertia effect uh, after this thickness effect to understand uh, how the sustained oscillations, uh, amplitude, and uh, voltage uh, changes when the mass ratio is changed. Um, yeah, so the mass ratio is now changed from n equals to 10 to 1. And uh, we see that uh, there is a quasi-periodic uh, characteristic in case of n equals to 10, which changes to an n equals to 1, uh, it changes to a period 1 characteristic. We can see a band formation in case of the quasi-period one and uh, a clean figure 8 uh, curve in case of n equals to 1. When this, uh, and when this is changed to n equals to 0.1 and 0 0.05, we see that the period 1 characteristic now changes to period 2 characteristic, and we see uh, double figure eight in case of the locus of the uh, tip. And also we observe that when n is decreased even further to 0 0.05, the minor peaks of the uh, period two vibration becomes even lesser. So as it was just discussed uh, in my uh, previous uh, presentation that about the importance of the uh, identification of the chaotic regimes and the uh, Periodic regimes, I will not uh, obviously tell, uh, go through that uh, again, that's why it is important to analyze it dynamically. However, I will just uh, like to give an example that uh, this is evident from this uh, slide only that uh, for in case of the period two vibrations, alternatively at alternate cycle, we will get some uh, lower voltage than uh, we will get in case of period one. So of course, this will be uh, of less importance in case of uh, uh, energy harvesting study. Uh, these two are uh, just the uh, wavelet figures I have presented to confirm the quasi periodic uh, dynamics and the period two dynamics. Where in this case, there is no harmonic present uh, in it, and here we see the exact uh, second harmonic in case of the period two uh, characteristic. So, these are the mode shapes, and uh, these mode shapes are important to uh, show uh, to understand how the uh, why the deformation, the displacement uh, in case of m equals to 10 a bit, uh, is a bit lower than uh, in case of m equals to 1. And we see that there is a huge deformation over the whole uh, beam, but the strain might be getting cancelled due to its uh, uh, shape, which leads to a low, lesser voltage that we will see in the next, the next slide. The voltage becomes a little lesser because of that. And in case of m equals to 1, we get the highest uh, peak displacement as well as highest voltage peak. In between, I'd like to show this uh, flow figures uh, where we see a uh, very strong uh, vortex uh, shedding strain in case of m equals to 10 and 1, which contributes uh, to the high uh, amplitude of deformation in case of these two. However, for point 0.1 and point 0.05, we see a very mild uh, vortex shedding uh, strain. In case of m equals to 10, we see a repetition of this vortex shedding. However, that are not exactly similar, which is because of the quasi-periodicity present here. And in case of m equals to 1, we see that the vortex shedding is exactly similar because of the period 1 characteristics in this. So, um, yeah, so this is about uh, the voltage. And uh, it, just as I said, the dynamic follows exactly the same pattern as the uh, uh, displacement characteristics, which changes from a quasi periodic to period 1, then period 2 dynamic. And uh, in case of m equals to 1, we observe there is a little bit. Uh, Increase in voltage, which again starts decreasing in case of 0.1 and 0.05. So, obvious for obvious reasons, we can conclude that for the parameters that we have used for Reynolds number equals to 200, this n equals to one should be the parameter that we should uh, 
it to uh, so here i would like to conclude uh, with this so this in house three way coupled fluid structure energy solver is capable of uh, simulating all the uh, uh, models that we are interested in for further investigations also for uh, we are now working on the multi body uh, structure of the same and uh, the parametric cases uh, showed that uh, it uh, the dynamics changes from a quasi periodicity to period 1 to period 2 and uh, with decreasing uh, sorry and uh, with m equals to 1 and tend to minus 2 gamma Fitness for Reynolds number equals to two hundred. We can uh, say that we get the highest uh, voltage, and we can uh, say that this is our uh, ideal parametric building for energy harvesting study for this case. So I'd like to acknowledge uh, the hypothesis completing resources of IIT Madras, where all of our cases are done, uh, and the GPU, of course. Uh, this study is a part of the DST funded project of uh, Bladeless Energy Harvesters. Uh, so from the Department of Applied Mechanics and the Department of Aerospace Engineering, I'd like to. Uh, Thank you all. Uh, you can reach me out at uh, rajana zero two at the rate gmail dot com. So thank you for your kind attention. Uh, thank Thanks, Rajanya. Uh, I, we can take if there is only one question, not more than that, because of the time constraint. Is there any question? Okay. If there is no question, then I will thank uh, you know, Rajanya for her nice presentation. Um, we also thank here. Uh, Uh, Professor Peter and Professor Lita for giving us an opportunity to go for a session here, and we conclude the session and also thank EH Dialogue for all the funding that we have. Thank you all for attending, and thanks all the presenters and the keynote speaker. Thank you. We, we'll, you know, Peter, you can take over from here. Thanks, Peter. Thank you, Professor Farooq. Thank you, Pradeep. Here we have the next point point of our, our workshops. Um, Here we are here. Ah, now uh, we have technical break, so we have time for 3:30 p.m. It's it's 20 minutes. May I ask, is everything all right for our guests, our participants? Uh, I, I want to say just just one thing. Uh, we will send the uh, pattern for abstracts and ask the uh, presenters for sending the the abstracts uh, because it will be uh, prepare some book from this conference thank you oh and during the the technical break we will transmit some movie uh, what what we record during uh, another Uh, energy harvesting session in uh, during conference in Lublin. The, it was interesting conference about the recurrence plots and application of that. And uh, be because we started beginning the cooperation with some painters from uh, from Lublin, we we prepared some movie about it. Please enjoy.
Hello. Hi, how are you? How are you? Hello. Hi, Piot. How are you doing? Thank you. How are you? Okay. Hey, Peter. Okay, so Sheng Zhu, Zhu, you are here. Am I right? <laughs> okay. So you can no. you can share your screen. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yeah, yeah, you can make it full screen. Yeah. So I will I will introduce you today. Okay. Okay. So I think we will wait another minute. Okay, so 7:30. Uh, I mean 7:30 my time. It is 3:30 uh, in uh, uh, Poland. Okay. What time yeah. is it in China now? Yeah, it is uh, uh, 9.30 p.m. Okay, okay, almost, uh, I mean, 14 hours difference. Okay, so, yeah, we'll start. I mean, uh, today our first, I mean, uh, keynote speaker is uh, Dr. Uh, Sheng Zizu. So he uh, received his uh, bachelor degree in mechanical design, manufacturing, and automation from Southwest University, China in 2010, his master and PhD degrees in mechanical engineering from Xi'an Jiaotong uh, University in, uh, from China uh, in 2013 and 2016. Uh, also from 2014, 2016, he was a visiting PhD student at University of Michigan, Ann Arbor, and he finished his postdoctoral research at Virginia Tech in 2017. So he has been with the Northwestern Polytechnical University, China since 2018, and is a professor. His main research interests include energy harvesting, nonlinear vibration, and structural health monitoring. He has published more than 100 public, uh, I mean, papers with total citations more than 3,000, and presented, uh, presented more more than 30 invited talks about energy harvesting at academic conferences and universities. You are welcome, Dr. Okay. Zhu. Please go ahead and start. Thank you very much, the audio, for your introduction. Uh, okay, so I think the time in Poland is this afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for Professor Li Teg's invitation, gave me this opportunity to present uh, uh, my research work. Okay, so my research, uh, my presentation is uh, high performance nonlinear vibration energy harvesters in the Tesla motion. Okay. Uh, so traditionally, the output power is in large scale, uh, such as the uh, windmill generator, hydro power station, solar power station, and so on. So large scale power generation is, uh, is sometimes expensive, also the size is very large, which is unsuitable for some low powered electronics. So I think here, everyone is very, very familiar with energy hurting. Okay, so small scale energy hurting can solve the problem of powering wireless, uh, wireless sensor nodes and uh, particle device. And also, we may care about uh, mechanical energy harvesting. Uh, I mean, so such as vibration energy harvesting is also uh, one kind of mechanical energy harvesting technology. So we can use the piezo electric effect, uh, electromagnetic induction electrostatic effect to harvest the mechanical energy. So it can be used to uh, power some uh, small scale uh, sensors or device. Okay, so mechanical energy hurting is mainly used, uh, using the movement of the base structure or an input, input force to make the relative motion that lead to the energy converter to generate electric energy. So here is a picture. So uh, the rectilinear motion and the rotational motion, they also can convert to each other, but how, how to say in some uh, very specific uh, uh, 
uh, environment, uh, we can use them in, uh, directly. So first, uh, I will review my past research about uh, rotational magnetic coupled nonlinear anti-harvester. So which is also my main research area. Uh, so if, if we care about the base uh, energy hurting from the basic excitation, so to achieve broadband energy hurting from basic excitation, we designed the rotational magnetic coupled nonlinear energy heart, such as this, uh, this, uh, this finger to so. A pair of external magnets can rotate, and uh, we can change the dynamic characteristics of the nonlinear energy heart by changing the angle of inclination. I mean, such as this angle alpha. So this is uh, so the modeling process I didn't uh, introduce here. This is uh, a device. Okay, so by changing by changing the angle of inclination, we can we can find the nonlinear force. Uh, the nonlinear the nonlinear force will change. So from zero degree to ninety degree. So this lead to the harvest explain uh inhibit uh, the different uh, response response characteristics for example if if alpha is zero degree so we can get a bistable configuration so the first picture so the the effective frequency range in experiment uh, we can find it can start from about four hertz to uh, larger than 50, uh, 15, 15 hertz. That means it can harvest the energy from a large, uh, a large frequency range. So as we, as we increase the, uh, the angle of inclination, so we can find the effect of frequency range moon to the right, to the right side. That means the uh the effective uh effective uh frequent rings that that moon that moon to large area so when it is 90 degree we can get uh uh from zero degree to 90 degree we can get about uh, 18 hertz frequency frequency rings uh so here based on this design i mean based on the first design if we if we change the relative positions of the magnetic mag magnets, we can get the traceable configurations. So, uh, the red picture we get from experiment. This is the three uh, stable equilibrium positions. And the uh, so the left picture, so two and four, the point two and four are unstable, unstable equilibrium positions. And uh, and so there are five zero points in the equivalent restoring force. So here, so A, B, C, D, E, that corresponds to one, two, three, five. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. So, uh, they are so they are five electron points in the potential energy curve. So here in the in the bottom picture, and while the stable equilibrium position correspond to the local minimum. So in in simulation and the experiment, so the vibration center may change subject, subject to uh, suitable excitations. If we design, if we design a tri-stable harvester with solar potential while, then a bi-stable one. So here we can see if we, uh, if the potential while of the tri-stable harvester uh, is slower, then the bi-stable harvester in the 
uh, in the same physical phase. I mean, you can see the uh, the physical phase. So from the view of energy, the former can more easily cross all the potential energy wires to realize global interval oscillations and the low level excitations, which will benefit for energy hurting because of large amplitude output voltage. This is also verified by simulate numer numerical simulation and uh, uh, impairment. So the first, uh, the top, the top pictures. Uh, this is a, this is the result of tristable harvesters. We can see when the excitation level is low, so the tristable heart may uh, overcome the potential barrier to realize a global interval oscillations, while the bistable one uh, can get, uh, can realize interval oscillation in a larger uh, in a larger uh, excitation level, such as uh, the right picture. So in impairments, also we verify this. Okay, so later we we consider a very general tristable energy harvesters. That means the potential while may be asymmetrical. So the left, the left the potential while is totally different with the, the right one. So in order to uh, in order to get uh, get its analytical uh, solutions, uh, we assume response displacement and the output voltage have have slowly varying coefficient so we can get the harmonic balance solutions of the heart and then we use Jacobian uh, Jacobian metric to determine the stability of the solutions so in uh, we can get as many as seven solutions while four of them are stable which can be verified by numerical result uh, so the blue star uh, means stable, stable one. So if we use the Rung Kuta algorithm, uh, we can verify the excitance, uh, uh, the stable, the stable solutions. And also as the in as the excitance amplitude increase, so the uh, more essential conditions can lead to interval oscillations. So after this research, we we also consider the real application. So take the tire as an example. They are where they are where sensors used. Uh, to highest mountain. So if we uh, if we can design a device to effectively harvest the mechanical energy from the rotation, we can design the self power sensors used in airplane and vehicles in the future. That is also so. This is uh, uh, this is uh, take the picture shows how the tricycle energy harvesters installed on a vehicle wheel. Okay, so I mean the energy hurting from the tensional uh, motion. Uh, it it was uh, it was employed many years ago. I mean at least ten years ago. Uh, some scholars also do some research, but uh, our research have uh, some difference with them. So we use the uh, tricycle energy harvester to installed on the uh, vehicle well to employ the uh, performance. And so, okay, this is a regular rectangular linear motion. I mean, the PZU beam, the PZU electric, uh, PZU electric beam, uh, it works in uh, Rectilinear motion. However, uh, 
the weak wheel or the rotational rotational plate they work in the rotational motion so also the rotational motion can uh, can bring the central figure force uh, this uh, it will change the stiffness of the beam okay this is a uh, past research uh, the bicycle uh, piezo electric uh, and the heart they use the central figure force uh, this work done by Zhang and here 2010 uh, Gu, uh, Gu and the other scholars they also use they also designed the safe tuning and the hardness by using the uh, central figure force so small deformation assumption was used to calculate the trace worth uh, component of the central uh, uh, Central figure force, thus accurate model should be established. Okay, this is a central figure stiffening, uh, stiffening effect. So as the rotational, as the uh, rotational speed or frequency increase, uh, the beam, the the, uh, the stiffness of the beam will become larger. That this is a central figure stiffening effect so if it can match well with the rotational frequency so a very a very effective safe tuning and the heart can can be designed and also the perfect mark the perfect mark region of the safe safe tuning effect is sensitive to the system parameter especially for the type of mass of the tri-stable and the hardest. According to the potential application, so one of parameters can be harmonized to achieve uh, the safe tuning effect, such as uh, the beam length or the type of mass. Uh, this is, uh, this is uh, an experiment set up in my, in my uh, lab. I mean, in MPU, my university. So this work was done by Doctor uh, Xu Taomei. So now he he work in the University of Tokyo, Japan, as a postdoc, uh, postdoc research fellow. Okay, so here this is a tri-stable harvester. Uh, the left, the left one, and uh, the right one is a bi-stable harvester. So here is uh, three uh, three equilibrium positions of the uh, tri-stable harvesters we get from the experiment. And okay, so for this, so this is just one result from the experiments. So uh, from this result, we can find that the bi-stable harvester works, works well in the relative low uh, rotational speed range and uh, the tri-stable one they works in the uh, the high uh, high rotational speed that means the uh, high rotational frequency okay so this is a uh, uh, time demand result okay so if we get uh, if we get the optimal parameters of the uh, harvester so you can see as a right picture it can match with the rotational frequency uh, in uh, in a range so if you if you are interested in this research uh, you may uh, you may write for this uh, this paper published in smart materials and uh, structures uh, last year okay so next, I want to introduce the rotational impact energy heart with uh, this uh, central figure softening effect. So this work was done by Doctor uh, Doctor Si Tongfang. So now she is uh, she is working as a postdoc fellow uh, in the Chinese University of Hong Kong now. So in the past two years, uh, she was a uh, 
visiting PhD students in my group. OK, so the, cent uh, the central stiffening effect, uh, so its advantage is that uh, it can be utilized to achieve safe tuning effect that is beneficial for broadband and the hurting. So the challenge is that the mounting radio of a P0 electric beam should be accurately determined to achieve safe tuning condition. If without the safe tuning condition, the output voltage will relatively small at low uh, rotational frequencies. So for the central figure uh, softening, uh, softening effect, uh, its advantage is that the vibration amplitude of the P0 electric beam can be increased with, uh, with the uh, uh, central figure softening effect lead to high energy output at a usual low frequency, uh, rotational frequency range. So when the rotational frequency is increased to a certain value, so the P0 electric beam may fall into the deflect, deflect model with the vibration instability and the mechanical filter. So such as this, such as this picture. So the def, uh, the def, uh, deflect mode in uh, in central figure softening indeed indeed have been reported in the investigation of a flow induced in, inverted flag or hurting the flowing chaotic energy. So with the increasing of the flow velocity the consequently increasing of the preload uh, magnitude lead, leads to three modes of including straight mode, flapping mode, and uh, deflect mode. So such as this picture shows. OK, so the deflect mode in, in central figure softening beam or inverted fly, flight result from its negative equality uh, equivalent stiffness. Though including, uh, though incru uh, introducing the positive, positive stiff stiffness, uh, stiffness to the system, so the negative equal equivalent stiffness can be tuned to be positive to prevent the uh, deflect mode from uh, arcing. So here is uh, a model for uh, uh, I mean, in the uh, flow, in, uh, flow, uh, flow induced vibration field. So this is a negative stiffness. It, it, it sometimes, if it is uh, smaller than zero, it, it will be uh, diverging. So for, uh, for supremely large one, we can get the positive stiffness so in this case, the system may be stable or unstable. So here, when none is, is negative or positive. OK, so if we, combine, if we make a combination of impact and central, uh, central figure softening, we can, we can get the, their both advantages. For example, the impact force can introduce the large stiffness at the impact instant to drag the inverted beam from the deflected mode. The prior uh, the prior uh, simplified uh, piecewise linear model neglected uh, neglected the deformation inter interaction between conduct beams. So this is a prior research. So current issues may be so how to increase in uh, improve improve you to low uh, the rotational frequency and the hurting performance. This is still a difficult research issue. How to prevent a uh, rotational inverted beam from falling to the deflected mode is also unsolved.
and the previous piece uh, piecewise linear model has uh, has has some limitations. So for this research, I mean in this section, we propose a central figure softening impact and inheritors uh, to solve two difficult uh, issues of low frequency and the output and uh, the deflect mode of uh, an inverted P0 electric beam. So and also examples the dynamic model and the impact force model based on Hamidens, for example, and uh, Hertz con contact theory. Okay, so this is a designed uh, the rotational uh, rotational impact and the characters. So we can see uh, this this beam with uh, with the type uh, with the type mass. Uh, it has a driving beam and uh, two generating beam. I mean the upper general beam and the lower general beam on the two side of the driving beam. So there are PCU electric material attached attached on the on the upper and the lower beam. And uh, when the when the driving beam vibrate and it will impact to generating beams to generate the electric energy. And also as the rotational frequency is increased, the, uh, the central figure's softening effect will apply the, uh, amplify the relative motion between the driving beam and the two generating beam respectively and increase the impact force and the in turn output power. Okay, so this uh, is simulate uh, the vehicle well also. Okay, this is a uh, velocity uh, vector and the uh, chaotic energy, uh, electric strain energy. And here is the uh, central vehicle uh, solving effect here. And the uh, uh, external work by impact force, we can assume like this. Okay, so based on Hamidens, uh, Hamidens mod, uh, for example, and also in order to obtain the uh, dynamic impact force, analysis of the impact force and the since include the, the first way that uh, the energy loss done by fraction force or other impact uh, displacement are not considered. Secondly, the contact region remain, uh, remains small compared to the size of each contact subject. And certainly, the contact between, between the impact mass and uh, two generating uh, two generating beam is, is, is assumed to be uniform along the at the length of the contact line. So here is a Hertz, a Hertz contact theory here. Okay. So it, it, so this is uh, uh, so this is two experiments uh, under impact force. So the the picture the the finger B. I mean the the right one. This is a with a central softening effect. So we can see uh, the beam. The beam is here, is on the top. So for for comparison, we also designed uh, an experiment without the central softening effect. So we know the uh, the central figure force it, it is from the rotational motion. So the left picture, the left finger, it is on the uh, on a sucker, this is sucker. That means it is uh, not rotated, just in uh, uh, direct linear, direct linear motion. And uh, to compare the two case, okay. So uh, we with uh, with central figure softening effect, uh, we call it RCS, and without. Uh, Central figure uh, softening effect, uh, we can call it a 
NRCIs to make a comparison. Okay, so this is a experimental setup. So in the simulation, I mean, when the when the rotational frequency is eight point five hertz, so the RCIs is better. I mean, the output the output voltage is larger than the late one, and also when the it is twenty uh it is twelve point five hertz. The RCIs is sometimes uh larger than the late one. Okay. So here, maybe from this picture, we can clearly see uh, in, a, in a neutral low frequency range, uh, if we use uh, uh, central figure, figure softening effect, so the output power is larger than, than that one without a central, uh, central figure softening effect. OK, so RCS means, OK, uh, central figure uh, softening effect. So here, experimental result also verifies that uh, the average output power of the RCIs is uh, is larger than the NRCIs. And the maximum power is increased by more than 100%. So this is uh, under different impact gap. So with the increase of impact gap, the peak power of RCIs will absolutely shift to the lower rotational frequency. And the power enhancement of RCIs is more obvious at a larger impact gap, which, uh, which however, has narrower operation frequency uh, bandwidths. So without impact force, once the structural stiffness dropped uh, to be negative, uh, I mean higher, higher than uh, 7.5 hertz, the driving beam fall into the uh, deflect mode immediately and uh, suffers from static uh, deworkings. Uh, input force can successfully drag the inverted, inverted beam from the Deflect mode. Okay, this is the buff casing and the fins portraits. At a certain rotational frequency with uh, with the increasing of impact stiffness, uh, the driving beam appears periodic, quasi uh, periodic and chaotic vibrations, and with the increasing of frequency uh, range. Uh, frequency, uh, frequency, the impact uh, stiffness uh, needed to drag the driving beam in RCS from the uh, deflect mode is increased. So this increase uh, necessity to find uh, the analytical critical impact uh, stiffness. So based on price research, an inverted beam can drag from uh, the deflect uh, mode, if its negative stiffness can be tuned to be positive at the impact instant, the critical the critical impact stiffness is KIMC. I, uh, KIMC. So uh, in in practice, it it need to exact uh, is larger than this correct value. Okay, also we we compared we compared the different materials uh, to find if it can uh, can larger than the critical value. Okay, so the in the simulation it can it can get this result. Okay, so this is also the uh, buff case and the fins parts of the driving beam. So if you if you are interested in this research, you may uh, you may check this paper, uh, comprehensive surgical and uh, experimental investigation of rotational impact and heart with a central figure softening effect published in in a journal nonlinear dynamics. Also, uh, the first the first research was published in 
applied physical letters with a, is a feasible article and uh, reported by AIP uh, client. So the last the, the last kind of uh, the Tesla harvester in my group is electromagnetic and the harvesters using a resetting effect. So this work done is by uh, Gang Miao. So he is a senior, senior, uh, senior master degree student. So we want to realize the contact, contactless broadband and uh, easy to apply. So for this purpose, I mean, such as for a bicycle, for, uh, for a vehicle wheel, if we want to save this course, we can design, we can design a totally different uh, working, uh, totally different uh, energy harvesters. So this is not uh, based on the vibration of the beam, it is based on the relative, uh, relative uh, motion of the magnet. So a driving magnet, we call it DM. It is attached to the vehicle wheel in the, I mean, in the, uh, it can be in the practical, uh, pra practical engineer and a generating magnet, GM. So here, the picture B, the GM, it can rotate. It was in, uh, installed on a, a base plate with, uh, so here it, there is a resetting magnet. So after each period, after each period, so the resetting magnet can make the generating magnet uh, to return a face uh, a fixed position and thus to stimulate the output voltage. So here the uh, the picture, this is the output voltage. And also we make the analysis use the finite element method. So here is a radio. Okay, I'm sorry. So it cannot work. It did not work here. Okay. So in the simulation, we can get a response like the, uh, the left picture. When the driving, with the driving magnet, uh, pass by, pass by from the generating magnet. So the generating magnet rotate, rotate and then generate electric energy. And then next period it can rotate again and repeat. Here it is the experimental setup. Uh, we want to simulate a vehicle well, a vehicle, vehicle tire with a diameter of uh, 0 0.6 meter rotating at uh, prox uh, approximate 20 uh, kilometer per hour. So that means the rotational frequency is determined to be 2.5 hertz in impairment. And uh, as for a vehicle with a uh, uh, diameter of 0. Uh, uh, 0 0.6 meter, it is worth mounting that uh, the rotational frequency of 0 0.5 to 5 hertz means the vehicle speed being 3.38 to uh, 33.8 kilometer per hour. That means the, the vehicle uh, driving in a low speed. And also in experiment, we get, we get the maximum average output uh, output power reached more uh, larger than 10 uh, microwatt. So it can it can power some sensors. So this power is larger than the piezo electric beam. The resetting effect significantly increased the hurting and the performance at a low rotational frequency range and uh, okay and uh, and this work was published in the journal applied energy so last month uh, the title is a low frequency rotational electro uh, electromagnetic energy harvesters using a magnetic plunking 
magnesium. If you if you are interested in to this work, you may check uh, you may check this paper uh, in uh, in a journal Applied Energy. Okay, so at last uh, I want to make uh, some conclusion. So uh, the Tesno the Tesno excitations uh, widely exist in urban the environment such as uh, vehicle wheel, rotor, uh, gearbox, and uh, also the other the other part of the uh, environment. And uh, the Tesno energy hurting have a very large potential application market, such as the mechanical uh, mechanical watts. So if you if you get uh, if you use uh, if you uh, have a mechanical uh, watts, you can see there is a special device. It can it can get the elastic energy when when you uh, when you have uh, some motion of your arm, and then it can it can uh, drive the the world's work in several days, and also uh, for the human human portable equipment. So our human motion sometimes also have the rotational motion, but it's not where in a in a total cycle. It uh, it just part of the the Tesla uh, motion. Okay, and uh, and uh, also we finished uh, uh, a review paper, the title of the Tesla energy hurting for self-powered sensor sensing published in the journal JOR. And uh, the uh, professor Yu Tinko, uh, Dr. Dr. Fu, uh, Dr. Mei, and, uh, and the professor Itman, so we together published this, this paper. If you want to, if you have interest to, uh, to the rotational and hurting, maybe uh, this review paper uh, uh, can help. And also I want to take this opportunity to make an acknowledgement uh, for the main collaborators about uh, this work. I mean, in this presentation, so, uh, my supervisor, Professor Daniel Yimen, Professor Lei Zuo, Professor Jun Yi Cao. So they gave the supervisor during my uh, PhD study and the postdoc fellow research period. And also Professor Li Teik, uh, we have the cooperation in the nonlinear energy heart, especially for the mountain stable energy heart and the Professor Yu uh, and the Professor Ertuk, Professor Liao, uh, so and Doctor Xu Taomei, Doctor Si Tongfang, and uh, Mr. Gang Miao. Okay, so thank you uh, for your listening. Thank you, Doctor Zhu, for your presentation. So, any questions from the audience? I have actually one question, um, uh, and this this is uh, related to this uh, uh, the coupled uh, oscillators um, in some in some part of of the presentation. Um, uh, so, uh, Sheng Sizu, you you had such a, a situation where uh, where you uh, have uh, uh, the the. Uh, beams um, oriented to the center, uh, and uh, there were four beams with uh, with some tip magnets. Um, and my my question is: uh, Have you analyzed some uh, some um, synchronization effect? Um, because it could be important, uh, uh, because synchronization could uh, make uh, could be uh, for 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 coupled system could be like. Uh, mm, uh, Resonance, um, because this would be very uh, could make uh, the higher uh, amplitude. So, so my question is: uh, Have you studied uh, synchronization effect for for the uh, few beams coupled in in uh, in rotational motion? Yeah. Uh, 
Okay, so Professor, so thank you very much, Professor Leitik. This is a very professional question. So by far, uh, so I didn't uh, make the analysis for the coupled coupled beam, such as several beam coupled with each other. So I, I didn't uh, do this work. So by far, okay, thank you. <laughs> so I think it's maybe very very interesting because the coupled. Uh, uh, the the, cup, um, the coupling may bring some interesting phenomena. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? So I have one question, Dr. Zhu. I mean, when you have the contact force, how you are modeling the contact between the beam and the uh, and the uh, stopper? I mean, that, that is the first one. The second question is, what about the lifetime or fatigue in the piezoelectric, I mean, materials? Okay, so the, the first question, so we, we just, uh, how to say, uh, I think, uh, so, uh, so Audi, you, you, you ask two very professional questions, so thank you. Okay, so first question is we in the modeling we just uh, we just assume so when when it impact we just for example when the driving beam uh, impact with the upper generating beam we just assume they work with each other together and then uh, in a period and then when they leave each other so they just uh, how to separate. So that means when they uh, contact with, uh, with each other, uh, the stiffness will be the sum of the two beams. Uh, so the second question, I, I, I didn't get it clearly. Yeah, the second question is about, I mean, when you have these contact forces, so the cycles of the piezoelectric and the, and the uh, substrate Okay, will be, we. I mean, its lifetime will be uh, destroyed. Okay, in um, in uh, in a faster way. So, did you have any study about the lifetime or fatigue of the beam, or or your energy harvester after after the contact force? Okay, so thank you, thank you very much for 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 your good question. Okay, so here, uh, I mean the generating beam. Uh, the surface, the surface it uh, uh, contact with the driving beam. There is a, there is a, a substrate. It made from the steel and the uh, the piezo electric uh, piezo electric material. It touched on another side of the generating beam. But how how to say? Like you said, when it impact. Uh, the generating beam, it may have a life. So by far, we didn't uh, do this, uh, we, we have not do this work. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, so uh, any other questions from the audience? If not, I mean, I think Dr. Lightek and uh, Piotr will go to the next, I mean, keynote speaker, Dr. Adhikari. Yes. Yes, we are, but uh, due to the absence of the speaker who is moving these days to Glasgow, we have a longer break now. And uh, we want to invite you for the next point at 5 p.m. Uh, Europe time, after one hour, for some panel discussion with a group of industry uh, represent people. Uh, it's uh, the meeting is open for for uh, for question uh, is it will be just short one one hour meeting we it, this is the proposal uh, of some question for for discuss with them <clears throat> of course we invite all of you uh, for for this uh, for this meet, meeting and after it will be uh, uh, meeting with with some uh, ladies from Foundation from USA. Uh, it, it it could be interesting meeting too. But tomorrow, tomorrow we start at 11 a.m. We have the 
session, uh, first session uh, of group of, uh, of China. Next one is group from Poland. Two keynote lectures, uh, Chris Bowen and Professor Alley. Uh, and, uh, and after the last session, it will be Brazil uh, session. So, want to add something, Grzegorz? Uh, okay, so, so I, I think that uh, Sondipon informed us that uh, he could have some problem, and I, I was hoping that he, he could overcome the problems because he has, he has sent the bio, but uh, the, the, it is actually uh, the problem was not solved by him, uh, so he was. Uh, uh, he, he, he has to move from one uh, place, working place, to another, and uh, he still have uh, some problems uh, uh, because of his uh, uh, transformation. Yeah, so, so um, uh, I'm sorry for that. Uh, so, um, we, we invite you um, for, for in, in just uh, 40 minutes uh, back to the, to the computer, and there would be a session for for industrial uh, partners um, and uh, researchers and uh, and we we continue next day yeah with uh, with our uh, sessions um, so thank you very much for for um, attending all, all the I I just want to thank all the speakers and audience for for interesting questions and the presentations yeah thank you.
powiedzieć tym, że jednak zostaliśmy tutaj? Można. Można? So, uh, hello. O, to do widzenia panu. Do widzenia panu. Nie widzę. Dobra. Oh, hello, Karla. How are you? I'm not here. You, you are muted. I'm sorry. I just say thank you. Good. Okay. It's fine, Piotr. And you? Yes. Okay. I'm going to have to have a quick talk. Okay. Oh, okay. Today's session was very interesting. Now we start the meeting. We we waiting from group of uh, people from uh, industry and other interested uh, researcher. So, hello. Hello. Nice to nice to see you. <laughs> Yeah, Gregor, are you okay? <laughs> yes, yes, we're fine. Okay, do you suggest to wait a little bit? It's just we can we can quite slow start our our, our meeting. We, it's, uh, it, it, the form is open, we, we like, like uh, everyone, so we prepare some question for, for beginning, but we, uh, we can talk uh, for, on, on another questions, another topics. Uh, at first, we, we propose to ask uh, what can, what kind of obstacles uh, can, can find systems with energy harvesting during implementation. Uh, maybe, maybe there are some experience in industry is similar like other innovations or, or special uh, obstacles due to uh, energy harvesting elements. What is your opinion? I've invited you people, Tomasz Szewczyk, Przemysław Kowalski, Ravindan Ramalingam i Sławomir Budzki, um, most from Poland. Uh, not all of, all of that, all of them uh, are online, but maybe, maybe they come in here. If you think, uh, if you like, we can we can wait for five minutes. What do you think? Yeah, I think so. Uh, okay. Better, if you agree, we can wait just five minutes and then we can start. Okay.
One of our guests, Tomasz Szewczyk, uh, he's coming, but another Przemek Łagut, we, it, it's news for us because he's ill and can't, can't join to, to us. Uh, but he cooperate with Tomasz Szewczyk, they, they are like one group. Uh, do you remember Karlo uh, Przemys Przemysława? Przem yeah. Yes, yes, because we, we met, met with them. <coughs> So it's funny that after uh, a lot of years on this activity on energy harvesting, because from my personal point of view, I started this uh, research activity in uh, 2007-8, and uh, we worked a lot on energy harvesting, uh, mainly based on the vibrations. And uh, after uh, a lot of years, because now is uh, uh, something like uh, um, now we after 12 more 13 years, uh, there is uh, still a strong activity of energy harvesting also from vibrations, but in general. And uh, now the the idea is uh, much more to focus the attention on the uh, industry because. Uh, Energy harvesting is not only research activity, so uh, Piotr and Gregor work a lot on modeling also. In, in our case in Catania, we work a lot on uh, experimental part and characterization on energy harvesting. There are a lot of people uh, here in the group, uh, in, in this meeting, but, not, but also in general, which work a lot on several parts of energy harvesting. And after 12, 13 years that uh, I'm uh, quite active in this uh, field, uh, I'm very happy to see that uh, there is uh, uh, a lot to do. There is still a lot to do on that, also in, uh, in terms of application uh, for industry. Uh, so uh, I'm uh, I'm very happy for that. So it means that uh, for the next uh, 10 or 20 years, uh, energy harvesting will be still active also for uh, applications and uh, industrialization for sure. Because at the moment I cannot see. A strong industrialization in terms of uh, MEMS, for example, energy harvest, uh, or uh, more focused on applications. So I think that uh, the industrial part, the industrial contribution, uh, uh, can uh, give us uh, a stronger motivation to increase the research activity. This is uh, my personal opinion, uh, Piot. You are mute. Yep. Yep. Yes, uh, thank you for your opinion. Uh, and Tomasz Szewczyk and Arvind uh, are coming here, maybe. Yeah, uh, Piotr, uh, uh, yeah, uh, good evening. Uh, this is Arvind. Um, actually, like, uh, <laughs> it's the, the topic is a very nice topic uh, because uh, this is also one of the reasons why energy harvesting is, um, um, I'm, I'm not saying that it is a suffering, but uh, the way it started, uh, those initial days, and the way it has progressed, uh, there are a lot of uh, question mark. So today, if you see the current uh, market uh, for a portable battery, it is uh, close to $10 billion. Uh, like last uh, 2020, if you see the market. But if you see the energy harvested today, uh, even for uh, 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 like a low power or maybe ultra low power devices, 
it's still not crossed like maybe 400 million dollars uh, why there is a huge difference that see um, uh, if if in, in i'm not talking about the um, uh, the the adaptability uh, basically uh, the main point here is if you have seen if you have closely watched um, battery uh, the handheld devices with the battery and the solar uh, power still so solar today it is cheaper but um, um, uh, it is uh, it's not widely adaptable um, maybe it's uh, still the battery technology is so cheap and people not bothered about much so this kind of uh, uh, scenario is uh, following with the energy harvester this is my personal view based on my uh, thought process uh, in the industry for so long um, there are a lot of scope for energy harvester especially for the low power and the uh, ultra low power areas but still the industry requirements is um, uh, even though there are a lot of requirements are there but still not many companies are entering into it other than the big players uh, if you see the big players like there are a lot of uh, uh, people are uh, getting into it but not many small players in this particular market so this it's basically like a kind of an adaptability is one of the factors which is lagging in terms of energy harvester i don't know whether the approach should be from the top down or bottom up uh, approach uh, there are a lot of scope but uh, top down should work much better uh, because even without even knowing in some of the devices we are using energy harvesters so maybe that is the only way where the uh, market would uh, grow in a much fa faster pace uh, this is my thought process uh, piot okay this means the market obstacles are more important than some technical uh, uh, Technically, there are a lot of uh, um, uh, obstacles. One of the things like which we uh, usually thought through when we were working on energy harvesters is the reliability aspect. Um, even with uh, 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 low power devices, the reliability aspect of energy harvester is a key factor because um, um, if maybe the industry where we are using it's um, uh, where the chances of getting failure is acceptable that is where still we are using energy harvester but if you see uh, in the other areas where the failure is more sensitive still we don't uh, have a guts to use the energy harvester in in that perspective reliability is one of the important factor as a technical uh, 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 candidate okay so this is uh, one of the problem which i see in terms of uh, why the Uh, energy harvester market is not spreading as if you even if you see the market scenario today it's primarily driven by iot especially for home automation and industrial iot's this is where the energy harvester is majority of the market is driven um, but not much in the other market segment even though there are a lot of scope where people believe more batteries than uh, energy harvester uh, maybe the, one of the factor is also the adaptability yeah this is my view piot thank you thank you very much uh, maybe we we should uh, at, at the beginning uh, uh, welcome you and welcome thomas shevchik and uh, other people yeah. uh, what is your opinion uh, some of the others from audience or maybe i will ask uh, thomas shevchik are you here us Do you hear us? Okay, maybe not yet. Yes, I hear, I hear you, of course. Uh, but uh, maybe later I will uh, uh, just now. I, I must uh, wait for a few minutes. I'm sorry. I, I will hear you on later. Yes, 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 yes. Right, right. So, so I. I I would like to uh, to ask about some, uh, for example, some problems like miniaturization. So the miniaturization is probably 
uh, it's a good uh, point because it gives some uh, some new perspectives um, for uh, for electronics. But uh, in uh, in our field, miniaturization, it's uh, it's giving smaller and smaller power, and we need some. Uh, some maybe some change in design uh, because we we don't need uh, actually uh, isolated uh, MEMS, uh, but we need the whole system. So this is like a, a new uh, uh, a new concept of design because uh, if we have such a small uh, small parts, uh, we need to co build uh, like a final product from from the small parts um, uh, and I, I think that this is this, uh, this is not uh, probably not uh, uh, finished uh, we need to design some uh, device uh, energy harvesting device which could uh, have a lot of small uh, parts uh, so th this is uh, this could be a problem for me but th this is for from uh, uh, from from one point of view, miniaturization is good because you have a uh, higher density of energy, but uh, for some other reason, it is difficult maybe to connect all, all of these uh, small uh, to large uh, <coughs> to, to, to larger size uh, because you need uh, more power. Yeah, I have uh, just a, a comment because I uh, fully agree with the Gregor um, comment because basically MEMS, NANS, edge harvester in general, not only vibrations but also some other mechanism like thermal or gradient or pyro or whatever. But in general, if we decrease uh, the dimension of the transducer, uh, for sure uh, is good because you can uh, Thing to implement a, a small scale energy harvester, but unfortunately, the density of energy typically decreases. So, from uh, our point of view, in terms of uh, design of transducer, this is uh, uh, something interesting to improve the performance, which could be the shape, which could be um, the system, which could be the dynamic to increase the performance. But, about my opinion, um, in parallel, the colleague from electronic part and microelectronic part should find some solution to um, to work at lower uh, power budget in general, so that uh, together uh, transducer and uh, conditioning circuit could find a solution, so we can implement a really a micro nano system which could be fully autonomous. So at the moment, uh, what uh, I'm looking is that uh, there are a lot of transducer several optimization strategy from modeling to dynamic to materials to shape to geometry or layers but in parallel the electronic give uh, 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 an important limit and constraint so in parallel also the colleague from electronic and not uh, really an electronic uh, um, engineer but uh, I think that uh, also the electronic part and the conditioning part of the harvester could help to create uh, really a small scale energy harvester, where energy harvester for me is not only the transducer, but at the moment uh, really the power inside the capacitor. Okay, and wh wh what is the opinion of uh, our audience participants? Others? Okay. Um, Peter, this is Farouk. Uh, can I comment on your first point that uh, you know we, the the implementation of EH systems? It, am I audible, Peter? Yes, of course. Yes, of course. Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, I, I think you know uh, uh, as Arvin said, uh, you know, th there are a lot of challenges that we are not versatile and uh, adaptability challenge from the industry side. Yeah, these these are real challenges, and probably here we both industry and academia has to come together. Uh, the same, I think, the similar challenges were faced by battery also. You know, batteries had been there for us, you know, for hundred of years. So if yeah. I go back hundred years, I don't think the so battery was that reliable. Yes. Right. So we need to walk. We need to walk a long way. Maybe in another 20, 30 years, we can get into a position where uh, energy harvesters are used 
may not be the critical zones because critical zones it will take little bit more time reliability will take a lot of time even you know even in cars batteries were used long time before and then came to gas right and then finally again we are looking into electrical vehicles so probably you know a, a, a position will come when energy harvesting will reach matured and industry would be like to accept it for critical infrastructure so it's not disappointing you know uh, i think we have to walk a long way and we have to walk together of course and then probably in you know in, in 10 years for energy harvesting is very very nascent very small amount of time for an industry to grow to a scale of billions of dollars All right so uh, i think there are opportunities for scope for research scope for you know making real devices which can be applied for many many applications yes so probably we can go there that's my comment on the first point okay, thank you mm. Maybe do you think the uh, the obstacles is lack of the standard product uh, on the market, like you said about the batteries. Uh, batteries are standard product, uh, and uh, uh, anybody can apply everywhere. <clears throat> Energy harvesting uh, generators are implemented in some special uh, applications. Do you think the the, the problem is? Is lack of the standard standardization of the pro, of the energy harvesting systems. Yeah, that's what I meant. You know, with time, probably the applications will grow, and once application grows, industrial reliability or industrial acceptance of the products will grow. And right now, we are looking for specific applications for spe with specific energy harvesters. With time, probably a single harvester can be used for many applications. Uh, when I say many, I don't see more than three, four, or five. Then probably we can slowly, slowly grow and have uh, various varieties. Like batteries have a lot of variety, right? From different sizes to different power uh, ability, and with different shapes also. And devices are made to take care of those shapes, those power requirements. So the standard in battery has grown, and devices are made based on the standard that are available in batteries. Probably one day we can reach to a standard of energy harvesters. Right now we are looking at the device and developing energy harvester. Probably a time will come when devices will be made for standard harvesters that are available, with the power rating, with the size rating, you know, miniature, maybe you know, not very small, in in mm size. Some will be in you know, 10 to the minus one of mm size. Some will be in 10 to the minus one of mm size. So based on those products will be made so that we can use those products. So that's that's actually my comment here. Some someone others, what do you think the, about the standardization and what is the point? Uh, main point for standardization, the, like like in second question, it's, it's miniaturization on the uh, amount of power generated. May I? Yes, yes, welcome, Tomasz. Oh, thank you. Uh, because, uh, in my opinion, uh, most important is, uh, of course, uh, standardization of uh, every uh, units and devices. Because in a commercial um, projects, uh, we need to use a standard product uh, to to scale uh, energy to to uh, design. Uh, very specific but typical for us uh, solution and uh, this is uh, one of most important uh, problems for us and of course second one it's a problem with uh, density of energy uh, every people needs uh, uh, small uh, devices well, we are users of uh, cell phones and we need of course uh, phones with a huge uh, screen, but uh, it must be very light. Uh, in, in my opinion, the density of energy is a second uh, stone miles, uh, very important to, to design 
uh, energy harvesting solutions. And of course, if we can choose a uh, good standard product, we can uh, design a uh, new, new type of devices uh, powered from energy harvest harvesting systems. But first of all, uh, you must uh, uh, design a good, typical and scalable uh, product to implement in uh, commercial uh, de devices. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, what, I, what I mean, that's, that's mean uh, we need to design, maybe, maybe we need to design uh, some special engine actuators uh, prepared for uh, for joint uh, with with energy harvesting <coughs> elements. Of course, uh, George, uh, I know your, your uh, point of view is uh, some different uh, uh, than mine. But uh, I need a good uh, um, type of, of uh, uh, energy harvesting devices. And of course, uh, we together we can design a commercial type of, of, of device. But uh, methods uh, will be uh, implemented uh, in your uh, laboratory. Thinking about the, uh, the obstacles, uh, we think maybe it's uh, like Arvind said, the, the the market is part, is full of the uh, uh, common batteries. <clears throat> maybe we need some another uh, way to to finding the uh, interest in, in the market. The last question is is maybe we need some new type of promotion, for example, humanitarian projects. Uh, for, for popularization of this kind of uh, energy. Yes, maybe. And that's uh, marketing. It's uh, very important. But first, we need a good uh, solution. Of course, uh, do, do you remember a uh, typical uh, clock for a hand, mechanical? Uh, with uh, self, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, mechanism, mechanism uh, without additional. Yes. Uh, but but I can say Powering by hands. Yes, and it was the typical uh, solution, typical product, and a lot of people. Uh, uh, about this type of uh, clock and everything uh, important. So today we haven't uh, an, uh, another type of electronic devices uh, with energy harvesting, it, like a, a clock for, for a hand, uh, but in my opinion, it will be very uh, good idea to popular popularization of this type of, of uh, product of energy. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, and I welcome uh, Ms. Uh, Eva Bleistel uh, from Foundation uh, of Lady Racket, who joined to us. Uh, <coughs> Hello, Professor Piot. Uh, hello, everybody. I am also a CEO of California Space Center, and I welcome you to my compound in California, in Los Angeles. I just wanted to share with you some uh, beautiful uh, views of our astronaut swimming pool. Uh, I am also a founder of very prominent space and financial startup called Copernic Space that is being also partially developed in Poland. And um, in the past, if I may, Professor Piotr, very quickly introduce my relevance to your uh, very important event, your very important participants. Uh, I used to be a general manager, CEO of HP Compact in Poland for several years. 
And I would like to think that I have contributed uh, greatly to creation of several uh, Polish IT companies. While I talk, I will take you for a quick walk with me to my California Space Center Lady Rocket Foundation uh, compound. It's very early in, uh, in Los Angeles, so I still haven't had enough coffee, but I am very excited to be with you. And I am here to support initiatives of uh, academia, universities, and especially Piot to bring us together from Poland and from faraway places like California, Los Angeles, for the purpose of taking results of your research uh, many steps forward and find the most effective, uh, innovative, empowered way to transform your very meaningful innovation into startups, companies, commercially funded projects, Hold on, I am walking into my office. So welcome, welcome again to my California Space Center uh, for the purpose of doing something that is very important, accelerating rapid adoption of innovation, especially in Poland, to markets like United States or even California. And very quickly, uh, I had an opportunity to visit Politechnica Lubelska, uh, and a fantastic department where actually I had an opportunity to see uh, the kinetic energy project that is being developed there. And in a California style uh, and an investor style, we like to walk in with the marketplace in mind with marketplace in mind, because if there is something that in most of the cases, university projects uh, lack is funds, experience, bandwidth to while you develop your projects, your innovation to start poking around and finding the marketplace for what you are doing. So I walked into Politechnica uh, Lubelska with a couple of marketplaces already predefined, already very important, evaluated from the standpoint of not only funding, sources of funding, but also its size. And again, something very important that I would like to share with you. Visibility, attractiveness, relevance to social, geopolitical uh, priorities. Bottom line, it is really good if projects can inspire media, can inspire investors, not only because it has a great technology, but this technology has a great purpose. And I appreciate that Piot created this opportunity for me to, to uh, speak with you from, from, uh, from my location. And uh, I look at it as a beginning of uh, potential uh, communication because I was in Poland for the purpose of non-standard investment support for the Polish science, which I continue to believe is uh, the world-class capabilities. But just like when I was meeting with uh, uh, Vice Premier and, uh, 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 and other members responsible for Polish science, in a Polish government, uh, Eva, there is no uh, you know, plan to connect you to the big global marketplaces and new sources of funding. I'm in the process of organizing $100 million funds for California Space Center and for Copernic Space. And something that I would like to add, it's not only technology that needs to innovate. Sources of funding, methods of funding need to innovate as well, especially now in Corona times. So the moon landing and moon rover project yes we are going to the moon copernic space with our partner spacex and lunar outpost which developed beautiful lunar uh, rover uh, we plan to land on the moon q4 2022 copernic space is innovating funding using cryptocurrency tokens and nfts 
And I think Professor Piotr is very forward looking and perhaps you saw the art that was shown here. Well, this art issued as NFT with the Lady Rocket Foundation rich marketing support position in the United States space industry and outside can become, surprise, surprise, a method of funding innovation uh, under the roofs of your university and others. So maybe uh, I can answer some questions and thank you for allowing me to be here earlier because I have some other uh, uh, conflict schedule. Actually, what I will be talking about at nine o'clock with media and on the clubhouse is about my philanthropic initiative, Lady Racket Foundation, open spectacular program for a young generation called Mars Inspiration, Mars Innovation. We did it in Zagreb, Croatia for 150 students. It is all financed by uh, my foundation for the purpose of bringing to countries like Croatia, and I hope we'll find partners in Poland, uh, something very important, awareness that space industry is probably the most innovative one and needs to be active uh, and inspire young generations in countries like Poland. Croatia, we launched in Lithuania. Uh, Poland is going the slowest. I don't know why, but that's the case. And um, so anyway, here I am. Uh, thank you again. Uh, it's wonderful to be with you again after our visit. And very quickly, I am passionate about kin kinetic energy solutions. And I am passionate about working with Piot and his team because not only the fact that I am space entrepreneur, because it's obvious that kinetic energy can be a moonshot and spectacular development for us Americans who are getting ready to go to the moon as one of the sources of energy. But also, Piotr, if I may, and I would love for you to talk more about it, very quickly introduce our satellite Rhino project, where my foundation is already working with the most prominent wildlife rescue organization, South Africa, where using satellites, we want to help uh, Dr. Johan, who will be joining us at the you know next follow-up sessions, locate wounded rhinos and kinetic energy that I saw at Politechnica Lubelska. We are considering transforming it, it into a source of energy that could be uh, perpetuum mobile because it would be connected to Rhino and would feed GPS and other devices that would allow us to keep track of the location. The biggest problem that we have had was a battery life. So here we are obsoleting battery life. We are jumping into the new form of energy. Energy. So I want to continue supporting your activities in Lublin. Uh, I am available to explore potential the partnerships relationship that would further and accelerate commercialization and promotion and visibility of what you are developing. And uh, let me finish here. And uh, yes, Eva Blaisdell, but also Lady Racket, because you know we live in the world where being a celebrity recognized different is very, very important. Plus I, am, I have a TV and media programs. And so Lady Racket is kind of California, uh, identity of uh, otherwise very, very serious uh, lady uh, Eva Blaisdell. And I have my T-shirt here with Lady Rocket Foundation logo, and I am showing it because it was developed by Polish artist whom I want to support as much as I can, Julia Curyło. And of course, I am fan supporter of Lydia Gajek, whose art was introduced through me to NASA, to the astronauts and showcased as digital art here in Los Angeles. So Piotr, thank you very much for everything that you are doing to bring all of us together. And I am available for next, I think like five to 10 minutes to answer any questions if you have it. Thank you, dear Eva. I, I want to say to you that we have the guests from all of the world, from uh, Singapore, from India, from uh, US, of course, too, from uh, Italy, not just from Poland. And the oh, wonderful, thank, thank wonderful, you. congratulations, that's fantastic. 
is, is, f thank you for uh, introduction about the new uh, kind of new possibilities for uh, for financial uh, some innovation. Uh, f for audience, I, I want to uh, say because we usually we think about the industry or or some uh, social uh, application of energy harvesting. Maybe like this project, some humanitarian or some space uh, way is, is good. Uh, Good, uh, good way for promotion. This this area. What what audience think about? Exactly, because projects like this will bring attention, will increase financial value of your project, will increase uh, demonstration ah. that you are an active Fine. participant in a crisis of planet Earth, climate, wildlife. And, you know, I'm in California, so we always try to do concurrently, you know, technology, startup, funding, but also trying to find a way to to make a contribution to the perils of our Earth. And of course, space. And again, uh, and I know that Singapore, I, I know that Italy, uh, I know that Italian astronauts are going to, to be science scientists, astronauts are going to be the first one going as a private crew on international space station to perform private private uh, research uh, we had yesterday jeff bezos uh, taking slant more like a lady rocket personality because he didn't go for science he went for bringing celebrity actor uh, on on his uh, space flight but what i am saying now we have to do more than just innovate science. We have to be superstars. We have to connect with the partners who can bring visibility, increase uh, financial value and social value of your innovation. And as a very experienced uh, California investor, entrepreneur, who goes like all of you through ups and downs, but always forward, uh, I feel this is such an exciting time to build new things. And just very quickly, take a look at Copernic Space because it is a company developed to find a new way to present IP technology innovation using blockchain, using smart contracts and opening up token, cryptocurrency, Bitcoin and NFT type of funding which is dynamic, growing, and most important in the hands of the people who, like you, like to take risk and build new reality. Kinetic energy, I believe, is wonderful. Hello, this is, uh, this is Abdu uh, from New Mexico State University. So I am one of the organizers of this workshop with, uh, with oh, Dr. Lightak cool. and the Piotr. And I am excited, I mean, to hear that uh, Lady Rocket, I mean, I have just seen your website that you have uh, educational, I mean, opportunities. I don't know what kinds of opportunities, I mean, for graduate students or undergraduate students, for example, from New Mexico or any other school in the U.S. Also, what, I mean, how, I mean, can we, uh, because of this great collaboration we have with Lublin, I mean, uh, University of Technology, and some universities in the U.S., including New Mexico State University, is there any opportunity to develop, for example, centers between the uh, academia side or academic, I mean, institutions, as well as the, uh, the uh, for example, here we have National Labs, Sandy and Los Alamos. We already, I collaborate with them very well on energy harvesting topics and others. But with 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 companies, okay. For example, Lady Rocket. I mean, how how can we ameliorate this? How can we make it happen, okay, in the U.S. and we integrate? We go from, I mean, now I see it maybe ninety five percent more academic efforts and the publications and the innovations, yes. which is a great, okay. How we move to another stage and we go to the commercialization. Okay, and and this uh, kind of, for example, joint funding or joint opportunities, um, STTR, SBIR, I mean, these things, I mean, I'm sure that you know all of them, um, to encourage startup funding and to encourage, I mean, uh, universities and pipelines from, from universities to uh, companies in the U.S. and so on. So this is my, yes. my point, and maybe I can talk to you over the phone another time. 
okay it is maybe easier even or i invite you here to visit new mexico state uh, i i don't know i mean anyway go ahead thank you wonderful and i am waving to you with a big california hug <laughs> because what you ask is absolutely fantastic because i think conference like this should leave us with important action items and i am very pleased to meet you uh, mexico new mexico have incredible potentiality that you highlighted which stays untapped my california space center and i am in a temporary location here uh, has been designed and i created a consortium of a real estate company, media company, technology company, to create what you just so well highlighted, innovation center that would step outside existing forms of collaboration, which are too slow, too dependent on a, you know, a sluggish sources of funding without enough connectivity to the real marketplace. So Lady Rocket Foundation has, and on my website, you don't have, uh, a lot about it because we are focusing more on the outreach to the young people but here are a couple of things i lead a lady racket entrepreneurship programs that bring innovation of a new form of being entrepreneur to the students i share with them my experience from silicon valley from los angeles from hollywood from poland from italy and i share with them how to think and how to be uh, an entrepreneur and how to go and get funded. So there is this educational part and I have led with a big success uh, this type of mentoring program actually in Poland with, and here I want to highlight a very interesting area. I work with students from a Polish mining uh, uh, university in Krakow, one of the oldest in the world, uh, because I want to pave a road for those students to learn about moon mining. Okay, because right now moon mining projects are in the hands of lawyers and investors and opportunistic, you know, temporary sponsors. I think moon mining is fantastic. Allow me to use a word sexy subject to focus on and bring old expertise. So going back, I think we should take it offline because unfortunately I will have to go, but I greatly welcome. Um, and speaking of Mexico, I made a lot of efforts to bring, uh, to find collaboration with New Mexico and also Mexico as a fabulous country with very impressive state of science and innovation, but our countries at the level of embassies, at the level of governments are focusing a discussion on, you know, challenges of immigration, etc. Let's bring new subjects. Let's show Mexico as a source of partnership for incredible opportunities. And let's go space to shock everybody. But what does it mean space? It means application of different technologies like kin kinetic energy like projects that you might be working on space is not only rockets it's not only satellites it's so yeah. much more so i'm very happy to explore how we can collaborate and um, i have also presence at vandenberg space base location uh, which is spectacular very unknown place from which uh, spacex united launch alliance and firefly uh, launch the rockets so and by the way, very quickly, I just reached preliminary agreement with Ukrainian startup who developed a rocket, which, you know, Ukrainians are great when it comes to rocket, a rocket that in the hands of Lady Rocket, it can find its marketplace, uh, innovation, new revenue streams here in California. And otherwise they are sitting in Ukraine with uh, lack of funding and lack of market. So, you know, I am going out of my way to do those things. So stay tuned, follow me on Lady, Ra uh, Lady Rocket Eva Blaisdell Twitter, uh, join my Clubhouse events. I will have LinkedIn events to talk about kinetic energy and others. So let's be in touch. Thank you. So please connect with me and it's a big, big pleasure to Thank meet you. you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. 
maybe, maybe we can uh, we can involve also some uh, some uh, uh, some some other audience to the discussion because I, I think maybe from Singapore uh, Ravindan uh, maybe you can uh, you can comment uh, something. Uh, um about this uh, hu humanitarian problems and promotions yeah in space how how, how do you think about uh, yeah actually ne yeah ne necessity is the mother of mother of the invention uh, hello you yes. Yes. yes yeah so necessity is the mother of invention so uh, uh, what she had spoke about the right application and the right way to project the product is also one of the important thing. If you have seen uh, the MEMS applications before uh, um, iPhone and after iPhone, there are a lot of things got changed. People know MEMS because we were working on MEMS for uh, several years, but uh, the way they have marketed the MEMS products to the world, it got it has created its own uh, uh, marketing uh, phase after uh, iPhone, right? So the, it energy harvester also has to go through that. Any, any technology has to go through that. But uh, if um, um, yeah, marketing aspect is one of the important thing where it will reach uh, the product to the right place at the right requirement. Um, yeah, I completely agree with uh, Eva's uh, point. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, since I will be leaving shortly, I want to leave you with the consideration that all of you, each of you, represents incredible source of innovation, energy, commitment, perseverance, that I would like to propose that there is a, an action item, potentially creation of a virtual incubator where, where some of those innovations that you are talking about, especially the one that I'm interested in, could be organized in the form of a, a entity that represents will and way to transform your innovation into the startups. And because of virtuality being accepted form of collaboration, I want to welcome you under my roof here in California as a very, very attractive, I would say, uh, location, even if virtual, uh, because uh, there's no time to waste. Uh, although we have a challenge in, in the United States in many ways, one thing that goes forward absolutely in unprecedented way is availability of funding, okay? Uh, from venture capital, from private funds, from the new funds like I am organizing. So that's the time, ladies and gentlemen. And and then let's carry the message to the young generation uh, because um, they spend their time in the places or with the role models that are not always conducive to challenge, challenging them in a proper way. So anyway, I need to take off for my interview, but I greatly value opportunity given to me to, to be here with you. Uh, I am very excited about finding the way to collaborate uh, on the Kinetic Energy Project, Rhinos, and some others with Politecnica and uh, my new friend uh, from Mexico and New Mexico. I look forward to connecting with you. Uh, Piotr, uh, first of all, thank you for your spirit of entrepreneurship, for your spirit of openness, for your spirit of seeking new ways, and congratulations on organizing this event for all of us. Do you have any, any, anything to ask me or to, and please give my regards to your entire team. No, no. Thank you very much. No, no, we, we have not asked uh, special about it. We Now, to, today we want to discuss about the uh, the future of, uh, of 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 energy harvesting systems and uh, obstacles at, 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 at the way of that. Uh, thank you, Miss Eva. Uh, thank you. We, we so we, feel free to provide a contact to me via my email, Eva at at California Space Center, or through you, uh, whichever way you prefer. And, and thank you for everything and appreciate your questions. 
Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. So this is a kind of inspiration for us. Uh, what, what we we can continue discussion on uh, or finish? What do you think, Carlo? Uh, for today, yeah. Yeah, I think that uh, for sure in one hour we have really a lot of uh, pass <laughs> of uh, uh, innovation and uh, uh, stuff to think. For, uh, for the next uh, days, week, maybe also years. Uh, I don't know if there is some other contribution, question, or just some comment from the audience, because eventually we can close this section. So, there is some question, observation, curiosity? Yeah. Maybe the point, what, what, what we need is just finance not technical <laughs> innovation okay please uh, so, so uh, i just want to point out uh, one uh, problem which was not mentioned but m maybe it is not uh, obstacle but uh, there is a huge uh, activity on these multifunctional materials yeah so mm -hmm. so I, I think that this is this is good for us um, because we can use the same device uh, for in different uh, conditions and uh, this kind of universality uh, so so it is uh, it is probably not uh, not possible for 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 batteries uh, so we could have some advantage that we can uh, use different sources of energy not uh, not only just one uh, yeah, so so could be uh, by by the innovative materials we can unify some uh, some approaches. Yeah. So I, I think that this is this is also um, a good uh, uh, a good way uh, for activity. Um, uh, so, so I mean that this this could be important in future. I think. Yeah, yeah I agree. I agree with you Okay, so 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 Piotr, uh, you you want to show uh, show the program for tomorrow? Yeah. Uh, so yes. This is like, yes. Uh, yeah, we, yeah. I want to say thank you very much for for your uh, attention. Uh, thank you for all of the day and uh, for, for, for participants uh, during all the session uh, listening. Uh, and this is the start, beginning session. On tomorrow, so so we, we start eleven o'clock um, uh, with respect to the European time. Yeah. Thank you, Carla. Thank you, Ravindan. Thank you, Tomas, and our researcher, uh, our guest. Yeah. yeah thanks, Thank Peter. You. Bye, everyone. Bye, Peter. See yeah. you tomorrow for the nice yeah. day. Thank you very bye, much. Bye. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Pia. Thank you. Yes. Good night. Um, Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye. 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 Bye.